Oh my god, I think I'm back. Hey, uh oh. My, my hey. Welcome okay. back. Yeah, well, here, let me. I don't know if it's still streaming. Oh, it is. It's it's been, it's not, it is. Yeah. It's I said you came back. I'm showing you about talking. Hey, so. <laughs> Hazel disconnected my uh, my modem. That was fun. Whoops. Yeah, we're, we're back. We're back. Nobody pancake. I pancake a little. Pancake. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. Yeah, I turn around and she's just like wrestling with my modem. I'm like, what? What did you do? What did you do? No. Okay. <laughs> I'm so glad you find that hilarious. It was, it was pretty funny. No, I just started dying. She died, yeah. <laughs> the only way I knew what was happening was I would look at her screen and see what you sent her, and I'm like, oh, that's hilarious. Great. You couldn't so, speak, though. <laughs> So, where were we? I believe Allison was yelling at you. Me uh, yeah, and then Beepery passed out. Yes, I'm going to... Well, they didn't hear that. Um, so I'm going to turn and look at her. And as I'm I'm looking up at her, um, my hair is now the color of what looks like wilted grass. Uh -huh. And I'm going to say, M-A, hello a you a and I'm just going to collapse. <laughs> Someone help her, heal her. What is wrong with her? What is Why did she just speak something to me? But uh, she's using a ladder and she does stuff like that. But somebody help her. Help As her. Do you don't have healers here. Do you not have healers amongst your crew? Uh, maybe I don't know. Uh, uh, Howard, can you do something? Frank starts Avery. crawling over towards Vivery. Vivery is the healer. Yeah, Frank starts crawling over towards Vivery. She's got a, a good berry that you gave to her in her hand. And she's Friend, eat it in her mouth. What? Eat it down her throat. What? Okay. She stands up and throws it at your face, and it hits your cheek. No, in the mouth. I'm trying. She picks it up and throws it again, hits you in the eyeball. <laughs> and there's just like three more passes where she just like pelts your face with the same good berry over and over again. Over again. Dad, give me that good berry. Uh, yeah, yeah. She sits down and gives it to you. Thank you, friend. Okay, I'm gonna eat it down Beeper's throat. Give me a dex throw. DC 15. DC 15. Six. You missed. You hit her in the <laughs> eyeball. <laughs> so this is funny because at one battle early on, I managed to throw a good berry down uh, uh, Norheon's With throat. a critical. <laughs> a critical 20 from like from... 20 feet away. Yeah. While you guys are nice. doing this, <laughs> hilarious back and forth. <laughs> Uh, Arabelle, uh, this, this short dwarven woman walks up, takes it out of your hand, and says, give me that! And she walks over to, uh, Beaver and goes, here you go, darling, and she just shoves it in your mouth. And she turns around and goes, what is wrong with the lot of you? You're throwing food at people's faces! Don't you know they're starving children? I mean, the, the good berry is intact. It, it did eventually get down her throat. We didn't yeah. waste it. More than anything, she's just so exhausted at mm -hmm. this point. Everything <laughs> everyone that's... is. Like, literally, yeah. you, you survey the area, and, like, everyone, they're all just laying there. They're all fine. Like, they're groaning, but nobody's nobody's making an effort to get up. Like, you see one guy, like, Holler just, like, rolls over, and he starts kissing the ground. He's like, land! Mwah, mwah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Riani, uh, uh, Ellison walks up to you and she's like, uh, she says, we need to start preparation. I mean, whoa, that's not her voice. We need to start <laughs> preparations. Uh, we need to get a medical tent set up immediately. I'm tasking you with this job. Please, uh, start moving some dirt around. Let's get these people taken care of. She turns around to Arabelle. She says, look, they're going to need some spotted tea. They're going to need some water. They're going to need some honey. They're going to need whatever we've got. Bring it. I have all uh, salutes and starts walking off. Uh, you see in the uh, distance, there's a couple of uh, 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 young half elves who are looking at you guys from across the way uh, from their tent, just kind of like gawking. Um, there's also like a moving furnace, question mark, who's like walking, like tracing the path you guys took. So it's like Norheon looking around now. Norheon, what are you doing? You're, you are not coming through. I am looking at this moving furnace, apparently. Okay. Amriani, what? You've been tasked with a, a task. What are you doing about it? 
I'm not happy at the way she spoke to me, but I begrudgingly start to move the earth, um, getting it ready, and I follow her orders. <laughs> yes, I move the earth, uh, mm -hmm. start making room for extra tents to be put up, cool, and clearing out debris. Love it. Hildar. Uh, Hildar, what's going uh, on? Great. Yes. Very fine. <laughs> I get up from from my dirt covered body <laughs> after slamming into the ground and dragging across it. Um, People are scrambling. Like, what's what's your first instinct? I'm just gonna precipitate bit on myself. Press the digitate. You're gonna <laughs> clean yourself. Okay. Take a bath. That's yeah. his first instinct, everyone. <laughs> He's a very clean thief. We appreciate it. You know, we know where his butt's been. Take a magic okay. bath, if only, right? <laughs> I just look around and just chaos. <laughs> and I think to myself, where's the ale? Uh, <laughs> as you're thinking that, uh, the dwarven woman uh, starts walking back towards everyone and she stops. When she looks at you, you guys make eye contact and she drops a plate of glasses that she was carrying. But, huh? She says, Is that you, Hildar? Tree, check. Because <laughs> what in bloody place is Ray doing all the way out here? Uh. Pimeldor's great beard. Well, she uh, walks up to you. She says, you don't recognize <laughs> me, do you? Uh, maybe. Not. Uh, too much. No ale. It's me, Ado. it's Arabella. Ado. I'm your sister, hey, you Ado. bug. Ado. 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 Come here. Okay, Get really me, loud. Hunk. When you speak really loud, Taryn, we cannot understand you. <laughs> I've, I've literally said that to him seven times today like this, alone. This is what it sounds like. Ready? <laughs> <laughs> Which is great. I think it's great fully, but we can't understand you. <laughs> I adjusted the gain a little bit. We'll see if that helps. Okay. Just don't um, peek your mic and you should be fine. Yeah, try talking at a more you. conversational level. I, um... <clears throat> Come here. Give me a big hug. Yeah, she reaches <clears throat> in to hug you and she's like, You've been gone for... <laughs> it's been like eight months. Well, it's been a while. Oh, that's my back. And she she stops. Oh my god, what happened? Did you fall? No, no, no. I was, that's, that's, I was doing the, I was doing the thing. The thing. The roll. Oh, okay. Did you roll? Oh, a well, history check. Yeah. The roll. Would you? Would you? You really want to do a history check on your your sister? No. <laughs> I mean, um, go ahead. <laughs> right, let's see. I want to know if she's from a different mister or not. I want to see what comes with the sister roll. Eleven. <laughs> Amriano, Amriani is eavesdropping on this conversation. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, they're not trying to hide it. They're all just, she's literally shouting at this man. Dwarf. <laughs> and I'm shouting back. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, look, I got my stubble coming in finally. And she like scratches Ooh. her beard. We got her out to this length. And I just saw, you just see this, <laughs> this beard just dropping You undo ground. a hair tie and your beard <laughs> free flows. <laughs> She's like, she's like, well, you know the recessive gene skips the females in our family. You know that. She goes, oh, wait, what am I talking about? We gotta help these people. She's like, come, come follow me. And she goes over and she picks up the, uh, the the glasses she dropped. They didn't shatter, but they're definitely dirty now. Uh, on the glasses. She's like, what? Where did you learn to do that? Magic. What? <laughs> we got a lot of catching up to do. And she's like, oh, oh, yeah. quick, hand these out to people. We need to get these people taken care of. Oh, and, oh, oh uh, okay. Yeah. And she starts to pour uh, literal honey, just straight honey into these glasses. Uh, guys, um, Amriani, you are feverishly working away at this tent being constructed. A couple of the uh, students have come over. They started to uh, pitch logs and are pulling uh, makeshift tarps over them. Finally. Yeah, one of them is casting mending. Um, it appears they, they carry them in, like, scraps so that they can mend them when they get there instead of carrying one big piece. And they're uh, putting together these tents, or this tent, rather, for the uh, survivors, quote-unquote. 
Is there anything anyone would like to do before we continue? I'm gonna go collect Akiote. Is anyone gonna check on Vibri who is laying on the ground passed out? Just I thought we got her the good berry down there. <laughs> we did. We good. put a blue, good berry in her mouth, and that's all we did. Uh, well, I'll bring uh, Don Quixote over to her then, and I'm gonna have Don Quixote sniff her. See how she's doing. <laughs> um. Okay. Let me roll for it. Hang on. That didn't go through. Right, that didn't right. go through. I think I have to refresh. Hang on. Right, right. Still didn't work. What's going on? Oh no, people won't get to see my dice rolls. Let me log on back in. Boop boop. Beep boop. Beep boop. Beep boop. Beep boop. Uh, everyone's <laughs> trying to get everyone together. Uh, people are moving people into or towards the tent area. Hmm. What's going on? All right. Copy dice overlay. Let's properties. Let's paste. Okay. Let's roll again. Oh, I think my my dice have been broken. Sag. That's okay. I'm not gonna worry about it. I can just add rolls, whatever. So yeah. Um. Donkey hat. You know what? I got dice right here. Let's go back to analog rolling. Don Quixote goes to sniff, steps on Vivri's hair because he rolled a two. Yeah. <laughs> she's definitely not waking up from it. She's she's gone. Something's going on. Vivri's uh -oh. just so exhausted. Yeah. Don Quixote, can you talk to her the way you did that one time? Uh. <laughs> Alright, now try that a bit closer to her ear. <laughs> he does that. Yeah, <laughs> right in your <near> ear. <laughs> <laughs> she just stirs slightly, but you know, she's just, she's out. She's out like light, man. You hear Arabella I'm gonna pick up a blade going, of grass. Donkey! Donkey! <laughs> pick up a blade of grass, okay? Um, and I'm going to then uh, hold the grass up facing the sky in my one hand, and then the other hand, I'm gonna cast fire bolts on the blade of grass. All right, you do that. Are you, are you making smelling salts? Uh, you know, that might be indirectly what happens, but now I'm, I'm trying to murder, you know, plant life and see if that awakens her. Uh, uh, uh he kills grass. You just lay there. <laughs> uh, this greatly offends me. Why would you uh -oh. do that to the earth for no reason? Uh, uh, is there is there an earth genasi next to me? Yeah. <laughs> oh, did you hello walk there. Over? Did you did you finish the tent? Mm -hmm. I, okay. Yeah, I saw what he did. I saw, okay. I, I saw what he did. She approaches from over. behind you. <laughs> well, you so see... You should be it. more respectful. Uh, you should be more respectful of the earth. At uh, the moment, I'm trying to be respectful of my colleague who's currently unconscious and not waking up. So I was trying to stir her into action by murdering one of her friends. I um, look over at her... And I say, let me handle it. And I scoop her up in my arms and carry her to a tent. My hero. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. You could have picked her up the whole time and you didn't? Why? Why, Don Quixote? <laughs> <You're> a... <laughs> <laughs> he just sniffs at you. <laughs> Here's some feed. Don Quixote, you, you deserve food. He eats whatever feet is. Uh, it's like, I don't know. Do I have apples? Well, we'll just say it's apples. Oh, well, you have rations. You can give him some jerky. I oh, know, I actually have like feed, like feed, feed. Okay, sure. Uh, I'm guessing it's just straw, you know, like a bundle okay. of straw of hay. Here you go, Don Quixote. Cool. Here's some hay. You do the thing. So, uh, we we put everyone in this tent, this triage tent that has been hastily erected. Uh, people are being treated for scrapes and bumps and bruises. Um, there are some groans of, of uh, you know, people who aren't very happy with what's going on. There are some people who are very happy to be alive. 
Uh, the kids are up and playing. Like, they didn't even notice. Oh, yeah, they're, they're like, oh, wee! Log ride! Ice ride! Uh, one of them is carrying a white flower around, giving it to everyone. Mommy! <laughs> uh, and, um, that's pretty much how the night is going. Uh, Vivari, are you, is your intent to just sleep the night? Uh, yeah, she is, she is so exhausted at this point that she just cannot get up. I mean, she has been going hard for the last, like, three days. Uh, so... She, she just needs sleep. Okay. Yeah, so, alright. So that's what's going on. Um, you all get set up. Everyone gets uh, fed whatever rations are available. Uh, there's water that gets passed around. And, um... Omriani, is there anything in particular you'd like to do? You no longer have a tent of your own. Um, I'm going to head back to the carriage and sleep there. Okay, cool. Yeah, so you do that. And you settle up for the night. Um, Hildar, uh, your sister pulls you into the researcher's tent where it's just the two of you and she's like, where have you been? You, you've been gone? You've told nobody you were leaving? You just disappeared overnight. Uh, they're trying to form words and they're not coming out. <laughs> um, I don't know. I just I wanted an adventure. I didn't want to stay, stay in a cave pretty much a hole and mine in a way <laughs> yeah, we didn't live in a cave we lived in a mountain home you realize that don't you i know it felt like a prison to you and i know you didn't always agree with father but you know what we do like i get that you didn't want to do that but you didn't have to disappear on everyone Ugh, we've no. all been terribly worried Mother fell ill as soon as she found out you were gone. I didn't know that would happen. You had to expect uh, it, you know, Mum. She's a right old bat, she is, isn't she? Uh, yeah. Aye. <laughs> um, Lol. She says, well, we got a lot of catching up to do, but you'll never believe what has occurred in your absence. You'll uh -oh. there. Hilda, we found it. Found what? You know, we found it. Deep underwater in a cave, we found it. History check. No history <laughs> check, because we're going to pass the night. <laughs> <laughs> Cliffhanger. <laughs> That's what we're going to get. Cliffhanger check, and the check is a nat 20. Okay. Damn. All right. <laughs> um, you guys sleep. We can long rest. You can long rest. Please regain yes. all of your hit points and spells. Oops. Dear God, that was a, an ordeal. Yep. I'm feeling great. Yeah. My, my hit spells. You my, slept in the, in the well, carriage. You took, um, oh, no, that was in your That was a fun chest. thing. Yeah, she's fine. Yes. Um, normally at this point, by the way, we can switch spells if we need to. Yeah, I, uh, usually on a long rest, uh, spellcasters can switch spells. Norheon cannot because he's a sorcerer. But mm. everyone else can. He has to wait till he levels up. Mm -hmm. That's the price to pay for being able to bend arcane to your will. <laughs> yep. Mm. And uh, light multiple forests on fire. Possibly yes, concurrently. Yeah. Definitely oh. concurrently. I'm really disappointed I can't do the rolls on stream all of a sudden. That was such Maybe a cool thing. Refresh thing. I, I had done everything I could think of. It's just not functioning right now. Mm -hmm. I think I would have to so, stop and restart the stream, which I'm not I'm not willing to do, so it's fine. Burp, burp. So anyway, is there anything you guys would like to do in the night before the morning comes? I'm uh, switching a fuse. Okay, I'll I'm give like... you a second. Um, Hildar, are you, uh, you're given a bedroll. Are you going to sleep in the researcher's tent uh, where your sister is sleeping? Beep. And, uh, no, hang on, I don't know what you intend to do. Uh, there, there's a dozen people who are just sleeping on the ground inside the, uh, triage tent. I'm gonna find where, uh, Vivri is. Uh, Vivri, you were taken into, I'm gonna say, uh, the storage tent, um, because Omriani kind of just picked you up and brought you into one. You're, she laid you on a table. 
So she's in the storage tent. There's like boxes and barrels and crates and uh, cloths and blankets and stuff all over the place. Alright, I'm gonna... Can uh, Don Quixote fit in there? No. Darn. Uh, where's Fran? Uh, Fran's in the triage. She's just trying to help out however she can. Mostly she's just resting. Same with... Uh, pretty much anyone else who was on the raft that isn't you guys is in the triage tent. Laura's just sleeping outside of it with her back up against it. Because she's hardcore like that. Where, 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 where. <laughs> uh, I'll grab uh, some like cloth and whatever from inside the storage tent and uh, fashion a bedroll in there and station Don Quixote just outside. Okay. But to right. make sure that like Vivri doesn't suffer further for whatever Norian is probably allowed to happen. Okay. All right. So, yeah. Uh, you all sleep uh, a very, very well-deserved, well-needed sleep. Uh, and Vivri, while you're sleeping, uh, with more frequency, you, you realize you're getting these bizarre visions. And another one comes to you. And this one is of... A vast cave network like you you see flashes of uh, caves tunnels connections there's stalactites you don't quite get a sense of what you're looking at other than caves just caves and caves and caves and a door a small stone door surrounded by shapes that you don't understand so I see, I see a, a vast cave network. Yeah. With a lot of underground tunnels. And what I'm envisioning is like, I'm zooming through it until yeah. I get to like this big stone door. So you're not physically moving. You're just getting like, like pictures, like a slideshow that's like white in and white out. And you're just getting like flashes of cave just like that's all you can think is just moss cave mushrooms cave stalactites cave and it ends in a big stone door yes in a, a really wide open room with a stone door in it on the wall is this reminiscent of that same door that we had seen in the underground caves in the first town um, give me a history check. Fourteen. You feel like there's a very strong possibility they could be connected. I'm writing notes. I gathered. And does this sit, fill me with any sort of like unease or am I just like kind of confused by it? Confusion, mostly. You haven't learned to understand what's happening yet. Cool. Okay, so um, I'm, I'm going to end up waking up and yep. I'm going to be muttering to myself. Oh, so much, so much moss, but I'm going to be saying this in Elvish. Uh, so, you know, some people might understand. Norion, you're right there, aren't you? Yep. Does that wake you up? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I don't do, like, a full sleep thing anyway, the way that Does half that elf thing snap works. Does out of your meditation? Yeah. There you go. You hear her mumbling, muttering to herself. Mushrooms. 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 That's what she's saying. I look over Muskrats. Where are we? I'm still talking in Elvish and, and not common. Uh, well, we are in a camp uh, with a whole bunch of other people. Uh, you're in a storage tent. I'm in the storage tent. Don Quixote is just outside the storage tent. You say hi to Don Quixote? Sure. I kind of get up kind of groggy, which is kind of unusual considering I normally just meditate. You, know, you guys have never actually seen me sleep. 
You see him a little unstable. Hold on, let me pop the tap, flap the tent open. Hey, Don Quixote! Light pours in. Don Quixote kind of, he's munching on grass, absentmindedly looks over to you. Stick your head in here. He walks over. I'm going to look back at Beaver and see if she's like any steadier. Not really. I mean, you probably just get the sense that I've probably overexerted myself. Um, hello, hello, Don Quixote. I'm gonna give him some some happy pets and a good berry. That's probably not that good anymore it's from yesterday, but I don't know that because I don't know how long I've been sleeping. He eats it happily. But Don Quixote, I'm go- I'm going to make it your job today. Because it, it seems Vivri has perhaps overexerted a little bit. Nakote, you will be chauffeuring Vivri wherever she needs to go. Uh, is this where we landed? Uh, yes, not the specific tent we landed in. Um, that was destroyed by Skylogs from the Sky Deity, which I believe was this. Earth Genasi we talked to because she said she praised herself. Anyway, um, but uh, yeah, we're in a, a camp with some other peeps. Um, they get the feeling it's an excavation site based on some of what I've seen and some of what's been said and the large number of dwarves and someone that would look like wizard garments, I believe. And we were looking for a dig site earlier, so maybe this is the one. Interesting. I had this as uh, the strangest dream. It did was... it involve mushrooms? Yes. How did you know? You were kind of speaking a little bit out loud, but I most only heard mushrooms and maybe muskrats. Uh, there was moss and and lots of caves, uh, many many tunnels, and and. Do you, do you remember where we saw that that room before the fire water? Yeah, I do. The, the one where we were trapped in a cave forever because there was acid rain outside and we absolutely could not go outside because we would have died? What? Uh, yes. Welcome yes, back. that one. Uh, I, I suspect that it, it is similar in some way. It, it felt very familiar, but, but also different and I'm wondering if this is here. Well, based on that the individual who assaulted us at that village was born from that cave, or so he said at least. And given that the wizards directed me here, if this is the dick site in question, and this might be the basis of where that all stemmed from, so that would make sense that these are related. As you guys are chatting, uh, you hear footsteps approaching. Oh, uh, of course, Min goes AFK. You hear footsteps approaching, and uh, you can hear the fam- No, you're fine. Go ahead. You can hear the familiar uh, elven voice uh, call out to you guys. Uh, Are you decent in there? Uh, yes. We, we don't usually get undressed to That's great. Like, uh, meditate. It's morning time now. Um, we need to discuss our plans to uh, one, get you out of my dig site, and two, make sure everyone is okay. I'd actually like to discuss the nature of your dig site with you. She doesn't respond. You can get the sense she's walking no. away. <laughs> where, where is uh, Hildar and Fran and, and Mother? And did, did everybody survive the fall? Yes, uh, minus the four, well, the fall part, yes, the, when the logs fell apart, there were four people who did not make it, but since then, everyone's good, including, as you see, Don Quixote, uh, Fran was in the medical tent last I saw her, um, the, the captain was just outside the medical tent, Hjalder has a sister, do you know Hjalder has a sister? No. Apparently, Hjalder has a sister, and, uh, they slept in the same tent? Roll tied. Good. Good. Are, are, are dwarves like that? Are, are dwarves what? Like that? <laughs> I mean, some people have described them as as hill 
well, I, so I knew this dwarf once, and his <laughs> last his name was Billy, and he lived in a hill, so we called him Hill Billy. Uh, so maybe. Okay, all right. And why do you? Uh, you know, I mean, it would explain why they're so short and they just never grow. You know, I mean, when you you, you don't <laughs> diversify the gene pool. <laughs> oh <my God>. mm-hmm. <laughs> world. What's wrong with you, Norian? <laughs> The story now magically moves ahead with annoying. Yeah, as you guys are <laughs> chattering on, Hildar, it's morning time. You're awake now. Um, your sister's not in the tent with you. I'm gonna have a Thank look God. This. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I felt the need to clarify that somehow. Yeah. And some I reason. come back, and what do I what do I witness here? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're from Jordan, wedding. You get it. <laughs> We're, um. I have a look around this research tent because what the hell is what, what is going on here? <laughs> yeah, so uh, you you look up around inside this tent. It is full of tables, and on the tables are various rocks and stones of shapes and sizes and cleanliness. There are also jewels in here that uh, may or may not be <laughs> cut or uncut stones. Mm. Nah, good for now. <laughs> that is probably the most shocking part. <laughs> the thief leaves the jewels behind. It's only because he hasn't had alcohol in a week. If he'd had the alcohol, he'd be taking those. <laughs> More risk. <laughs> he only thieves when he has alcohol. There we go. Character development. <laughs> Character development. <laughs> um, yeah, so, what's your plan of action here? Just gonna walk out of the tent. I'm still just confuzzled. Like, yeah, we. Went from exploding midair, crashing on a landslide, and now I met my sister. What the heck? <laughs> you step outside the flap of the tent as you pull it away, right? And standing in front of you is what can only be described as a metallic concoction of a furnace with slapdash pieces of armor stuck to it as it's barring your exit uh excuse me furnace thing sorry um, you're talking to a furnace <laughs> yeah it's it, 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 illegal <laughs> and uh as you say that you that's hear, an answer as you say that you hear apologies designation judicious electric parts holder also known jeff Please to make your acquaintance. Thanks. Can I lend you <laughs> assistance? Uh, I think I'm good. I'm good. It proceeds to just stand there then. Uh, can I get trying? Like, can I squeeze past it? Just no. <laughs> no. <laughs> wait, wait, let him try. You could try. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a strength roll. This house actually works, by the way. If you want to move through a space that someone else is occupying, you have to make a strength roll versus theirs. And let me tell you, <laughs> this guy does the heavy lifting here. So let's let's have it. I rolled. I'll do it God, I wish I could roll on better. stream. I'm so mad that that doesn't 12. work right now. You roll a 12? 12. All right, I'll roll for him. Yeah, he rolled a 31. What the fuck? <laughs> so you press up against him. Two things you notice. Number one, he's hot to the touch. Number two, he ain't going nowhere. Okay, I need assistance with your movement. Pleased to meet your Let's acquaintance. Go. How may I assist you? Uh, move ten feet away from me. He stands there for a second and he says, Calculating. And then he begins to walk backwards. <laughs> chunk, 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 chunk. <laughs> imagining like the voice from the voice, yes. Yeah, um, oh gosh. Oh now. gosh, you're Mike, man. You sound like you sound like a robot. <laughs> Hilariously. <laughs> <laughs> She's just getting into character, y'all. Yeah. The robot. Yeah, and so you're standing out there now and uh, looking around the campsite, Hildar. Do I sound okay now? <laughs> yeah, you sound better yes. now. What yeah, did you say? Good. I said I'm just imagining the voice of uh, the GPS system or something. I'm trying. That's, that's what I'm going for. I'm trying. 
Please make a U-turn when possible. No. <laughs> Recalculating. So Recalculating. Can, like, he hasn't like spoken up at all, Hildar, but you can kind of hear him saying, awaiting second request. But um, as uh, you're looking around the camp, you see that there's uh, a lot of the villagers who are on the raft with you guys are kind of walking around. What are the blessings say? That are kind of right. walking around, um, trying to get their bearings on where they are. Uh, the kids are playing. They're running around the, the campsite. There's a few people building a new fire pit. And off in the distance, you can see in the ruins, the actual like foundational ruins, are a few of the uh, student workers are uh, hard at work digging through the dig site. Amriani, are you out here on this fine morning? I am uh, out. I rose early because I wanted to get to work and try and get things done. I'm very cranky because all the villagers drank all the tea, they all did. the spotted tea. Spotted tea's and gone, by the way, have... guys. No more coffee. Yeah. yeah. There was none for me, so I am not happy about that. But working hard, trying to just get back, get it done, and get it get back. Cool. So you're. Uh, what's that? No, nope, nothing. <laughs> what specifically are you doing? Are you like moving the earth around inside one of the, uh, like, like piked off, designated areas for digging? Uh, I'm in one of the the supply tents, uh, preparing for digging, like getting everything ready, all okay. the tools ready. Yeah, so you see Amriani like enter a tent, and so you're looking around. You don't see Norhan of Avery. You do see a donkey's rear end sticking out of a tent, and then you see that elven woman uh, who was very bossy the night before, like sort of like run walking her way back towards the research tent towards you. Any response? Explosion. Great, here we go. Allison's like, what are you doing here? Why are you in the research tent? Uh, I was given this place to sleep in. Who gave you the designation to sleep in my research tent? Uh, my sister. You're gonna have to give me a little bit more than that, bud. My sister. <laughs> oh, her name is Arabella. Sorry. It's Arabella. It's there we go. His brain explodes. Here, this will help yeah. you out. The nickname you used to call her by is Belly. Oh. Uh. <laughs> okay, that'll help you out. Yeah. So if you can remember Belly, two points. <laughs> Belly. As soon as you say uh. that, she goes, Arabella! Arabella, who is this ruffian? And she starts walking away looking for her. <laughs> I stealth, no. <laughs> <laughs> or you can if you want. <laughs> Good. Oh my god. I'm gonna go look for uh, Vibra and Norhyun. Cool, you do that. Uh, I imagine you approach the uh, donkey's rear end. <laughs> the ass is uh, ass? Yep, you got it. <laughs> I was hoping someone would say it. <laughs> I slip off to the left and I'll be behind its ass. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, while you guys are talking in the tent, you see a familiar blonde beard poke around the corner. Hildar! And I run up and I give him a big hug. Boom! She tackles you. That. <laughs> hey, please, you're, you're crushing me. I'm so glad you're okay. I, <laughs> except I don't because I have negative one strength. <laughs> <laughs> she collides with you and bounces off. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Ugh. Well, you're all good. You, it looks like you're very sleepy and like very permanently sleepy, and that didn't look good. <clears throat> I I think I just overdid it. Okay, okay. Y'all there? You are you are here? Yes, yes I am. I was given a place to sleep in a research tent with a lot of gems, which I didn't touch. I swear, cross my heart. Seems like a very I sus like... thing to say. Like, why would you announce yeah. that? There was plenty of loot to take, but I didn't take any of it. He's very proud of himself. <laughs> Y'all I feel like at some point, someone in this this research dig site, whatever, is going to be searching you if you keep talking like that. I will assume you didn't just tell me you stole gems that you definitely stole. No, I did not. I did not. I'm, I'm not no, no proof. So where's your sister? <laughs> uh, I look around and see if I see her in the distance. 
Y'all don't even know her name. Like, Arabella. Didn't you tell us that she's your sister? Why didn't we ever know you had a sister? Uh, she never brought it up. Ran from uh -huh. home and never brought it up. Why did you run from home? Uh, no, not it's a great right place. to the chase. Yeah, he does. That's that's what he does. Norion has no tact. He thinks good. <laughs> uh, that's what I do, Zoga. <laughs> no. We're gonna get along well. Uh, how are you? How's everyone else? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I was trying to change the topic, like on maybe okay. the conversation. I like it. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna investigate whether he's trying to change the topic or not. Sure. <laughs> give, me, give, give me a deception roll, you'll learn. <laughs> okay. Deception roll it is. I got a 20. Oh! Wow. 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 I got a 15. <laughs> yeah, nah. I think Whoa. he's just being concerned for everyone else. <laughs> I'm surprised at how genuine Yelder's being right now. It's uh, the no alcohol. He's a completely different person. Yeah. yeah. You're right. Yeah. We have done a good yeah. job of keeping that away from him. Yeah, where is it? I mean, uh, I mean, it, it's been great that the alcohol just hasn't been around for a week. Hmm. Where is it? <laughs> um, I, I, I think Don Quixote drink it all. Yeah, yeah don't you see his, his butt sticking out of that tent? I mean, he's quite hungover. <laughs> oh, I fix it. I fixed it. No. Yay! I had to redo them all. That's fine. So, uh -huh. so, Norian, we we should definitely go check on on the rest of the crew. Uh, I think you should go check on Faran. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was su surprised. We I was in a tent, and um, she wasn't magically in it when I woke up. I don't know how that happened. That's like the first time in. Two nights. You hear snoring mm -hmm. from the side of the tent. <laughs> <laughs> then I go peek around the side of the tent cautiously. Absolutely. Just laying in the dirt. Oh, you know, actually, uh, Beaver, I think I think I found Fran. Um, should I should I wake her up? Should... I, I, I don't know. I, 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 I've never. She's just sawing I mean, she, she's a human. They need their sleep, right? Like, they sleep, like, 20 hours a day, right? I, I no, I'm not a human. I, I know, I know. You're, you're not even from, like, this particular plane of existence. But yeah, humans sleep a lot. I mean, dwarves do, too. But, like, like humans are infamous for it. They're like sloths. Do you know what a sloth is? Do I know what a sloth is? Yeah, yes, do, do you know what a sloth is? Yes, I got a three. I do not know what a slop is. You think it's another dog thing? Oh no. <laughs> okay, so it's like um, it's like a bear, right? You know what a bear is? I think we talked about a bear. Uh, yes. So it's like a a bear, but like maybe one fifth the size of a bear, right? But it's got even bigger claws than a bear has. But it's got like this like little button nose and like this kind of weirdly cute face. Uh, and it's also got like large feet too, and they're also kind of like claw-like and everything. And it climbs up and down trees, oh and it'll God. hang around on a tree branch all day. Um, but you know, it goes very slowly, and that—that's the key. Just like my descriptions of what you know the sloth is. While you guys are talking, Larissa approaches you, Hildar, as you know she sees the flap open and everyone's starting to stir. It's like, is everyone okay? How are we doing? That's sad. And I give her another big hug. She's surprised. Uh, as you can see, Vivi's a little, little, little exhausted. Uh, hey, Don Quixote, you're slacking. Get over here. You're supposed to be chauffeuring. He uh, walks three feet over. <laughs> now, turn around, Don Quixote. Don't show me your ass like that. He does a 360 <laughs> degree turn, bumps into the table, and the stuff clatters on it. You're going to wake Fran doing that, Don Quixote. Fran wakes up. Huh? What? <laughs> I'm sorry, Fran. I told Don Quixote this would happen. Fran's like, uh, uh, yes. And she walks around the corner and blushes. I, I, I will go make everyone potatoes. And I just kind of walk out and I start looking for the cooking fire. Yeah, yeah, oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there's like, uh, the, seems like, uh, the, you know what? It's Jeff. I was waiting for that. It's oh, Jeff. No. 
You see that oh, Jeff has a huge pot sitting on like uh he's got like a belly for a furnace and so it's like on top of his belly and he's just humming but like he's humming in monotone so it's just hmm 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 it's like a phone vibrating it's, it's, uh, <laughs> can you hear that music can, can, can you hear that music <laughs> sigma of <appears> and <laughs> <laughs> but yeah you find oh, hello, Jeff. Jeff. greetings pleasure to meet your acquaintance Designation, Jeff. How may I be of uh, assistance? Uh, do you mind if I share your fire? Request understood. Please. <laughs> you were just staring at all. <laughs> so I sit down and I just He's I got start two pulling out my uh my little cooking pan and I pull my potatoes out of my bag and wash them with my my carafe and I just start going to town roasting some potatoes in this pan yeah so you like you get a good look at Jeff right now because it's sunny and you're 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 actually acting actively interacting with him uh he's brown in color with like a bronze tint uh he's got a huge metal jaw that kind of just squeaks when he talks but, like, you don't get the sense that the sound necessarily requires to come from his jaw, but it's sort of like an aesthetic uh, choice, I guess, design choice. Uh, he do, does have two arms. They're asymmetrical. One of them's a little bit longer than the other one. Um, they've got three fingers on them each, and he has uh, really, really big feet that clump as he walks around. And a furnace belly. Hi. What the, what the beautiful color you are. <laughs> Query, what is color? It is a spectrum of visible light. Ah, yes. Understood. Praise accepted. Thank you. Just, I'm just still over here, just twiddling my thumbs of what to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah, while you guys are, uh, you know, getting about your morning routine, um... Amriani, you are hard at work, hard at work uh, with what's going on, and uh, people are starting to gather around the cooking fire. That Avery has sort of, you know, everyone seems to be accustomed to your potato givings, and are starting to essentially line up <laughs> for their helping. Um, this is when you see Arabella finally come back into the picture. She comes walking uh, from over the hillside. It's just a small hill, but you know she was out of line of sight, and she's accompanied by a very large crow man question mark, and they're talking, and um, they see what's unfolding and shrug and get in line. Hmm. There, there's quite a few people who want potatoes today. Okay. And I start pulling out the potatoes. And I'm like pulling out like little pieces of herbs that I'm sprouting and adding like thyme and rosemary. Oh, Mariana, this elf woman is like emptying her bag. It's literally just full of vegetables. Hmm. I'm watching her cook and i have noticed or i have realized that i haven't had breakfast this morning oh it smells good yeah it smells really good i can smell all the spices merging together so i decide to go uh jo join arabella and crow man in line <laughs> crow man yep. for a minute <laughs> that's all hilarious okay anyway so yeah you, you do that um Allison steps out of her tent and she looks at what's transpiring. She kind of shakes her head with uh, with uh, disbelief and uh, walks over towards the excavation site that you were at, Amriani, and she starts talking to the uh, the uh, students that are there. Because <clears throat> as far as you know, it's it's you, Arabella, Jeff, uh, Quayakik, which is the name of the crow man. And, um, oh, I'm gonna have to delete that one because that person doesn't exist. <laughs> and the two students, right? Mm hmm. Did I? 
So I'm like, I'm having people bring me up their plates and I'm putting potatoes on their plates. Yeah, some of them just, just give you a mug out. and they're like, fill up the mug. With like potatoes. Potatoes. <laughs> potatoes. potatoes. You've got, you know, mashed potatoes. There you go. Like, no one's got, like, forks or anything. They're just kind of handing it. And, I mean, everyone's just kind of sitting around and having a go. Uh, Ellison... I'm just sitting in the line. <laughs> You're in line? Okay. Not Nori, what are you doing? I'm uh, just kind of waiting to be served, you know? I'm a duke. I don't stand in line. Just, you know, kind of chilling. But uh, also, I'm be not, waiting like... for a while. Yeah, everyone's in line, Vivri. Norion's just standing next to you. So I'm, like, clearing his throat. <clears throat> <laughs> I mean, I'm not super hungry, so I'm not actually being super rude about it. But you know, I'm just kind of, kind of waiting there. Uh, is Fran in line, or is she? Rude. Just his normal brand of rude. There you go. See, Fevery's pretty used to this by now, and just completely ignores them as she continues to hand out potatoes. A leader eats last. Arabella looks over to Hilda. He's like, "I bet you can eat this faster than you can." Huh? Oh, okay. She starts shoving potatoes in her mouth. Oh, okay. I may have lost. Give me, give me a, <laughs> give me a D twenty. All right. She's gonna contest it. Oop, what did I roll? I just damn it, I have to reroll it. Roll it fell off the table. I got seventeen. All right, she gets seven. Oh yeah, she's like, oh yeah, I see you've done this before. As she's like talking through the potatoes, <laughs> like you easily eat her under the table. <laughs> Whoa, hang on. Whoa! Oh, 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 no. <laughs> Crazy! Whoa. Oh yeah, hold on, let me do that. Leave your sister alone, Hildar! <laughs> no. You easily beat her at the potato eating contest. And oh, she's impressed. God. She strokes her, her stubbly beard. Her stubbly chin. Her not beard. Oh, her beard, God. not beard. Not beard. Freezing, oh go! <laughs> it doesn't matter if this actually fires off, it's going to be relevant still. I love it. <laughs> yeah, cool. so uh, Ellison approaches you, Norion, as you're standing there, and she's like, well, it appears as though you're probably the leader of this troop. Um, we can't take everyone back home. Uh, from what I understand, the older one says that it's burned down? Question mark? Uh, yes, says question the Weaver attacked. Way. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, yes. So, yes, we were attacked by gnolls. We did what was necessary to save the village. Gnolls? I've heard of gnolls in the area, but, like, how many are we talking? 451, to be precise. I'm and they're sorry, all crispy critters all? now. Yes, don't you count your kills? What do you mean they're crispy critters? I don't understand. Does that have something to do with the enormous forest fire that is approaching? Yes. Also, on a related note, do you like Noel Burgers? She ignores your question and says, Our carriage leaves every day uh, around the same time. We, If we start shuttling people out now, we could probably get them to the closest town. Um, and you know um, the closest town. Is that town Dobnus? I'm sorry? Is Dobnus the closest town? Yes. Thank you. I was, yep. And she goes, uh, yes, that's correct. Dobnus is just a little ways north. I say a little ways. It's actually a three-night, two-day journey, but um, we need to start moving people ASAP. I cannot support, with the resources that I have, the amount of people that are here currently. Then she motions over to the soup line that has developed as Vivres begin cooking. Uh, hang on a minute. Uh, so if Dobnus is just to the north and is the closest town... Do you know Benlet? Oh, well, yes, I know Benlet. We have had many discussions in the Arcane College in Venron. Why do you ask? She sent me here. Why did I she have, send um, you here? Well, did she send you I here in a, a raft that was made by shoddy architectural questionable design? Are you disparaging Vivri and Fran right now? Were they the architectures? Architect hang on. The, the brilliant mind behind the architecture of this raft? For something that was built in less than a day, I think they did a pretty good job. 
she looks over at the uh, literal logs. It looks like you, you guys ever seen like when they throw javelins and they just leave them sticking out of the ground. That's, there's just logs yeah. sticking out of the ground at odd angles. <laughs> <laughs> Like, they dot the entire dig site, right? And there's, like, two or three that just destroyed Amriani's tent. It's just gone. Whatever you had in there, by the way, just gone. Yeah. In any case, uh, yeah, so Venlet mentioned that you have uncovered some runes in this dig site. Why would she discuss... Who are you? I am Norhian Wafeus, Duke of, of North Era. Right, okay. That makes a lot of sense. Well, uh, Duke Norhian, we've got to get your people out of here as quickly as possible. They need attention. They need food. I don't have either of those things, and I am running out of patience. Uh, can we use your donkey? Uh, can we use your donkey? Quite, we actually have quite a few people in need of medical care. I think you have plenty of patients. She looks around like, was that joke for somebody other than myself? Levity is important. It's what keeps rafts floating in the sky. She, she looks at you and says, rafts don't belong in the sky in the first place. You understand that, right? <laughs> no, we run a galleon to start with, but um, I, I feel like a raft is viable. I feel like a balloon would have suited you, but you know what? We're getting caught up in uh, eccentricities. Uh, we're going to start moving people out immediately, uh, starting with the, the least able to travel. Um, we'll mix them up together so that one can watch the other. The carriage can hold about six people at a time. This this may be a, a timely ordeal, an untimely ordeal, a long ordeal. Help me find the word. Words. Words. A long ordeal. A long ordeal. Is that? Is well, that... yes, but that's not a very fancy word, and I'm a very fancy woman. You understand? <laughs> I believe endeavor? I do. Harrowing okay. endeavor. Harrowing. I like it. We'll go with that. Thank you, Almriani. Where did you come from, by the way? You were in the lion's pursuit. <laughs> Listen, I've been overhearing this, and I'm very upset that my uh, sleeping quarters is now being given to <laughs> these people. I like it. You uh, they already took one tent, and now they're taking <laughs> the carriage. So I guess I need to go get my stuff and. Um, figure out where I can set up. Yeah, like, uh, one of the uh, students is prepping the carriage and he opens it up and it's just covered in dirt. And they're like, Ugh! <laughs> Precipitate. <laughs> Precipitate. You know, I feel like more if you can fix that. <laughs> Beavery's finished, uh, handing out plates and she brings Norky on the last one. Ellison, uh, the white. Thank you, Beavery. Ellison looks at it and just kind of looks back up in Norhan and says, um, I'm going to let you handle the, uh, the extradition of your crew and uh, I will be in my quarters. And she walks over All to right, the research tent. Did, oh, well, goodbye then. Did you, uh, did you ask her about your room? I asked her generally about runes, and she did affirm that they have indeed found runes here. She just um, she didn't the willingly. She, she she did dodge the question, but in dodging, she confirmed that they are here. So right now, she wants us to get our wounded and whatnot to Dobnus, which is the city north of here that we were originally supposed to land at. Which I'm not going to fight because well, that's where we the uh, ship probably... was headed to. It was going to stop in Atari. Probably not at the site, <laughs> but here you are. Uh, Larissa's captain. She could certainly handle handle that, but, uh, you know, you may want to speak to Mother before she leaves. I believe she's going to be one of the first. Yes, I have been wanting to talk to her anyway. Thank you for reminding me, Beavery. Um... So yes, I'll start coordinating and then I'll see if I can delegate this to Larissa. I believe she'll be happy to captain the effort to get everyone to safety still. I'll be remaining here. Um, I believe the dream you discussed with me would be best investigated if we both stay here. And I'm thinking about asking Fran to stay around too. What do you think about that? I, I think that uh, <laughs> if you want to keep Fran around, you should. It seems she's improved your manners greatly. Although you still need to say please and thank you when you ask people for help. Uh, 
Also, uh, where where did Tilter go? I want to meet his sister, and I'm looking around. Oh, they're just stuffing their faces. I think he's in a food coma currently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on the plus side, this time the potatoes were cooked, so I think this grass. Well, you know the grass is sad now, isn't it? Because it's not going to get fertilized. <laughs> she like pushes then... one in her mouth. That's no room, so some potato comes out of her nose, <laughs> cool. and it causes Hildar to laugh. And potato comes out of his nose, <laughs> <laughs> and they start choking because to... you can't breathe when that happens. <laughs> <laughs> you know that question you asked me about dwarves earlier. I feel like we're getting the answer right now. <laughs> Maybe. But my hair turns bright yellow anyway. I'm so proud that he's managed to stay sober. I agree. I'm, I'm impressed. I we'll, we'll have to see how long this lasts. Maybe, maybe it'll stay that way. <laughs> we look over at Omriani. Uh, I, I am a uh, Vivri. Vivri Seram. Omriani. Pleasure. You hear in the distance. Designation, Jeff. <laughs> hey, hello there, Jeff. Um, whom do you serve, Jeff? Designation, Jeff. <laughs> Jeff served Jeff? I see you've met Jeff. Affirmative. <laughs> Jeff agrees. And he clumps away. <laughs> I think Don Quixote has a better conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I tried having him talk to you last night, but I'm not sure if it worked. But I do feel like Don Quixote is just talking out his ass all the time. Oh, God. <laughs> she kind of just looks at him confused. Did you did you hit your head on the way down? Uh, me? No, I actually uh, landed like... Um, so I was on top of the log, right? And it was like crashing and everything. And I, I just like totally nailed it you know I, I was right there standing the whole time just popped off you know do, I, I did nuclear things huh I just kind of stare at him like he's crazy Fran right so uh, uh, kind of sheepishly and she says um hollered <clears throat> nope not gonna do hollered voice for Fran uh Fran says <laughs> hollered has begun working on a secondary a tertiary if you will uh, carriage. He's, he's been constructing it out of uh, whatever lumber has been laying around. Uh, we might be able to carry more people this way, albeit not super comfortably. Well, they're not paying for comfort now, are they? Well, I guess they were paying for comfort when they were aboard the galleon, but that's that's kind of toast, she literally, right? At you and said, I mean, they're not paying at all. We're, you, really, you understand we're saving people, right? Yes, yes. And that is the key here, is that they are going to be saved. Um, okay. So, okay. Uh, we are going to help orchestrate that effort, and I'm glad that uh, Grand Wizard Harm... Um, Hollard. His name is Hollard. You literally, yeah. you literally have to learn your own people's names. I mean, it, it is getting embarrassing at this point. Friend nods in agreement. Yeah, I agree with you. Has anyone seen Chicky Changa now that I think about it? Actually, you don't. I think he uh, might I have fallen off the raft. Friend, oh, perhaps. no. Well, I'm sorry. In any case, um, right, Fran, so we'll we'll get people to safety, um, but then I believe Beaver and I were just discussing, we're going to stick around here. We've got some stuff to look into. Actually, Fran, you remember the first time we met? Yes. Yes, I do. Yes, remember, I do. Remember the thing I was telling you about that I wanted you to like help us with because there was an imminent threat to the entire realm. You mean the coin? Yes, although there's a different thing than the coin. But functionally, the entire speech I gave there applies to this very dig site. Would you like to stick around and help us deal with that situation? She kind of looks at you strangely. She's like unsure of how to respond. She's like, "Are you?" Are you hitting on me? <laughs> um, I, I don't believe I've raised my hands. Or are you okay? I, I did Don Quixote hurt you while you were outside last night? She she blushes a little. Says, "Uh, I I yeah, I can stay." Beaver kind of turns away to hide the fact she's <laughs> laughing. 
Excellent, Fran. We could really use your help. Um, right, so there's also this the Earth... Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Um, I'm sorry. In the distance, you, you can hear Jeff just introducing himself to everyone standing in the soup line. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. I'm sorry. So there's ahead, also this Earth Genasi over here. Uh, her name was... Her name was... Turns and uh, Viva, did, you, did you catch her name? Amirati. Um, okay, yes, yes. Amirati. Um, uh... I'm right. Are you here still? Oh, I'm here. I heard you say that you're staying. Yes, that's the plan. Okay. Friend looks at Amrani. Hmm. Is that is that not okay? Um, I mean, if you're going to stay here, you need to work. I'm sorry. Oh, I, I don't work. Sorry. I'm a duke. He really doesn't work. I should be clear about that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, you're going to have to do something. You can't just stay here and eat all of our food and do nothing. Uh, nothing. Didn't eat any of your food so far, yeah, right? Yeah, supply the potatoes. Hey, the tea was drank. <laughs> I didn't drink the tea. I don't know that. I, I mean, I have plenty of water. The friend like looks nervously up to the side, and she's like, "I, I don't. What, what tea? That's okay, friend. You needed it. You, you were out cold." And then Don Quixote really woke you up. And she looks at you, did you give Don Quixote tea? No, no, wait, you didn't drink the tea, Fran? I I brought it, you requested that I bring it. What did you do with it? I, what? Okay, you know what, that's not I, important you know right now. We intend to stay. She turns and okay. says, yes, okay. that. Hildar, are you can well, hear them talking by the way like you're you're still with your sister but like it's all you're paying attention obviously well if the duke doesn't work then the others will have to work twice as hard i i mean i already booked for you all is that not enough oh wow <laughs> why is everyone a is hard it? ass in my campaign <laughs> <laughs> i mean do you need anything set on fire we might need some fire Excellent. That, I won't consider it work, as you call it, but I will set things on fire, and we'll call it even. Okay. That works. We can use that. We can work with that. Friend says, do you, do you need me to fly? Uh, I think we're digging, so probably not. I can make what, the, if, what if we let the dirt fly? I can make the... Yeah. I could do that, maybe. Oh, we can load the earth! Uh, that's my job. Hold on. But wait, but you, you wanted people to help with work, and now you don't want people to do your job for you? What, What is this? I don't understand. Arabella starts to walk up, and she's like, uh, listening in. Keep going. Hildar, you, uh, you, you will was, help I was, you, yes? I was chartered out to do a job, and I intend to do it. I can't let someone else do it. Oh, okay. Well, yes, that, that does make sense. If I tasked a minion to do a job and they didn't do it, I would probably put them in a dungeon or something. I was speaking with her. Arabella gives you a look. look. She's like, what do you mean you don't imprison your own people? Well, I mean, do you put other people's in your prison? Because I think that's an issue of, like, inner kingdom, you know, foreign relations and all that, where you, you usually can't do that without a war starting. Do, do you start wars? We finish waters in our in our mountain home. Oh, who have you fought? Uh, Emriani turns to Arabella and asks, "Are you are we ready to get started?" Oh, we've been ready since this morning. Are you are, you, are we are we heading out right now? Emriani looks towards the rest of the crew to see what they'll say. Uh, yeah. So. Well, yeah. You, you scan uh, the site, uh, and again, you pretty much just see people picking out, right? Jeff's walking around, leaving great big old metal footprints in the ground. Uh, the two students are on the top layer of uh, dirt. Actually, I've got the map open. Uh, the two students are up in here, digging away. Let's say the big middle circle here is where everyone's kind of hanging around, because the red tent's the one that got put up last night. Let's put Jeff in here, because I like Jeff. And that's pretty small. <laughs> it is small. I can make it a little bigger. Hang on. I just don't want it to take up too much room. All the room. There we go. <laughs> that's what he said. 
All right. Wow. I'll we'll just do this. That's fine, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's terrible. No, no, don't give me that. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, that's what you see. Uh, and you'll see uh, Koya Keek, who is uh, over here assisting them. But, um, Amriani, what you know is that there's an underground uh, site that has been dug out, which, because you did it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it goes underneath the dirt into um, a small system of tunnels. It's, they're very small. They obviously, they connect underground to the uh, buildings like this. Mm -hmm. And you know that uh, you're continuing to dig around underneath to try to find whatever you can find down there. Perfect. So I think that um, uh, Duke... What is your name again? Lorian of of North Era. Are you able to light some torches for me? You said you need to go higher. Show me the torches. Just I hand, uh, I go into the tent and retrieve some torches okay. that are unlit and bring them to Norheon. You know what? This is good. Let's do this. this. I'm listening. Go ahead. I'll light them all with the uh, prestidigitation. Yep, they ignite in your hand, Amriani. I'm impressed. I didn't know that he could actually do fire. Uh, I, was, I was questioning it. <laughs> Arabella rolls her oh, eyes. Well, you wait a couple days, you'll see how much fire he can do. Yeah, I did hear yeah. something about it coming right for us. Yeah, as the race says that, you guys can definitely see a enormous plume of smoke on the horizon. And the very, very distinct smell of burning wood. You know, I really thought the mountain would stop that. <laughs> the mountain's covered in trees, man. <laughs> There's also some rocks. I feel You're like right. they're going to need to rename it. Maybe. Everyone knows that rocks are nature's fire extinguisher. Amriani wow. uh, turns and, and smells the air and smells the burning and says, did you just do that? Uh, I mean, if by just, you mean yesterday, and if you mean do that, you mean kill over 450 gnolls who were going to tear a village limb from limb, and who probably would have come to this dig site after they're done with that, then yes. Yes, I did. And it's coming right for us? I mean, there's a bunch of grass here. There's only a few tree logs. It really shouldn't be able to jump this distance, honestly. A friend kind of shoves her feet uncomfortably. She says, well... Fire travels wherever the wind's blowing. Well, oh. can't one of us control the wind? Maybe, possibly. Do you have a do you have a like a spell for that, Fran? Or I, wonder, I, I could do some. Stuff. Fran says I can do wind but, wall, but that's not gonna last very long. Yes, that, it, it's not that it's not huge. We would need an army of us. Uh, what if we made an earth wall instead of a wind wall? Amriani likes that idea. Um, perks up at that and says that's actually a decent idea I could work on that excellent um, and move. does anyone else have the ability to also make earthen walls who would also like to assist with that because we might need a lot of work on a lot of earth wall to not get crispy did we not try to do that with the village and the village still burned down so the problem with the village was that the gnolls had trebuchets or or catapults that I did not account for. And as a duke, I do apologize to all of you. That was my oversight. I should have thrown the dwarf into the forest to let him deal with that for us, but I did not. <laughs> Arabella and, leans over uh, and nudges Hildar and goes, did you kill 450 gnolls? Uh, well, I only did 40. Um, he did the rest at a point in Norhian. <laughs> he burned the entire forest to kill them. So, well, that's incredible. So, you, you're probably going to kill a lot more things than that now. She mm -hmm. pays attention to what's being said. <laughs> mm, that's a very, smell, very strong smell of bush. Mm, that's not good. <laughs> it reminds me of the forges back at home. Don't you remember? Mm, a wee bit. A little bit. What has happened bit. to you, Hildar? You've only been gone like a year. 
Oh, he was very, very drunk. But he has been sober for one week now. Let's all celebrate. About everyone, 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 clap, please, for for Hildur and she his sobriety. She kind of gasps audibly and stares at Hildur in disbelief. You got sober on me. Uh, they forced it on me. What would Jamar yeah, think? She'd be sick again. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> <laughs> what the crap? <laughs> <laughs> As I, you know, I, it's what happens when a dwarf is sober, ma'am. What you've not feeding him alcohol, and you can't tell what's wrong with him. She grabs you by the arm, hold on, and starts hurrying you away. We're gonna get you fixed right up right now. Ooh, oh no, there it goes again. We tried so hard, Vivri. No. We tried so hard. He's going to steal all the jewels now. <laughs> so friends looking around like, well, what, what is it we intend to do here what i mean i know you want to stay but you uh, haven't told her yet well i told her about the coin but i um what, what all right let's let's find a to do with this you, you know we actually still don't know what the coin has to do with anything yet i we're still working on that one but I've got a different thing, but I've got to take you to a tent to show it to you, and please don't take that the wrong way. Or she, do, yeah. I'm not really sure at this point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll go find the supply tent, um, and I, I guess Beavery can come, and then I'll politely ask... Uh, oh, no, I'm, I will let the two of you go in there. Go on. Um, Amriani, Amriani is overhearing all of this, and it's oh, like, yeah. wait a second. You're like right there. Why are y'all exactly staying? Uh, right, so I'm gonna fill Fran in on this. Um, and not me. And not me. For, for now, there is a reason for that. And uh, you we can don't bring it know up. who you are. Right, and also you can bring it up with your supervisor should you wish to. Um, you can tell them thank you, Lenlet. Benlet, sorry, Benlet. Names, right. I intend to do that, and I turn on my heels and go to find... Uh, Ellison. What's your name? Ellison. Yeah, she's in her research tent. You want, I'm very you mistrustful now. I have ulterior motives. Okay, let's, uh, let's resolve like... that. You stole hmm? her into Ellison's tent, and she's in her beanbag chair that almost entirely engulfs her form. And she just sighs when you open the flap and goes, what now? Do you know that those, uh, those people intend to stay? I imagine some of them wouldn't be able to leave. The Duke and his companions, they are looking for something. They have some reason for being here, but they won't tell me what. She, she kind of like leans forward so that most of her face is uncovered and she goes, what do you expect me to do about that? Well, do you know anything about them? I, I, I know of Northera. I know of Duke Norheon. I don't know of any other dwarven or elven uh, like in the area. This is all news to me. They came here the same time as you did. Yes, but I was chartered out for a job and now they're here and going to poke their noses around doing something that we don't even know. You don't care? She looks at you and goes, do you see any armed guards here? No. Do you intend to apprehend them yourself? I don't know if I could take them myself, but you're supposed to be in charge. There's no plan. I'm in charge of the dig. You're here to dig. I guess we're digging with them. And what if they take what we're trying to get? We'll just have to make sure that doesn't occur. Everyone will go together as a group. As a group. Okay. I guess I don't have a choice. She looks and goes, you know what? That's an excellent point. How about you go with them? By myself? She goes, yes. I'm glad you understand. And what happens if they if they turn on me? Oh, you can move the earth, can't you? Just bury them. Good point. <laughs> All right. 
I can't argue with that. Um, all right, I'll go with them and I'll keep my eye on them. She sinks back into her gigantic beanbag chair and disappears. I roll my eyes as I leave the tent. <laughs> Good for nothing. Her arm is sticking out and she's holding like a goblet of wine. Oh my God. <laughs> I slowly disappear and I go into back, the chair. <laughs> I go back to the group and say, well, it appears that uh, I will be accompanying you. Arabella well, I'm the is only whatever one you're doing. There. Arabella yeah, is yeah, on the line of wine and just like... I go back to Vibri. Yes, I go back to Vibri and say, well, it, uh, Ellison says that I must accompany you. Well, I, I suppose we'll have lots of fun then. And I give her a big smile. I grimace back at her. Right, fun. <laughs> um, while you guys do, are talking, do you not have that? I'm sorry. Um, I don't have time to have fun. I'm very busy. I just want to get back to the monastery, honestly. Are you particularly devout? No. Oh, good call out. I'm not. Interesting. I kind of look at her funny. I don't like the way that she's looking at me, so I try to change the subject. To what? To uh, what we'll be doing. All right, we'll let them know what you're doing. All right, brush her off. So there is um, an underground tunnel I've been working on that we need to continue to dig in. It leads to a bunch of underground rooms. We have our torches for when it gets dark underground. Everyone tell her how you feel about torches. That's, uh, mm -hmm. that's going to be a choice. Wait, torches? Mm -hmm. Nobody says about torches. What? Do you, do you not, with a tankard in his hand. Do you not have dark, dark vision? You do have yeah, dark, dark vision. vision. You yeah. all have dark vision. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. That's part. okay. I was gonna let you go with it. She's like, I got a bunch of fire, and they're all like, oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, I guess we don't need the torches. Um, if you want to perceive we, we, we have color, to dig. If you want to perceive color, you will need light of some kind. Otherwise, you can see in the dark, in the black and white, no problem. Okay, okay, so we do need torches because I have my eyes out. I'm going to have my eyes peeled out for different jewels. And they uh, are different why, colors. Why jewels, exactly? That's why I was brought here. I know jewels, like the back of my hand. What, what jewels are you looking for? Uh, Yelda knows lots about jewels. As she's saying this, you just see that... Yelda chugging down a wine bottle. Yep. <laughs> like I look over at him and say, Him? <laughs> He knows things? Yes, yes quite a surprising number, actually. <laughs> I'd still ignore them and still chugging down the zip wine bottle. <laughs> Arabella, like, stubs a potato in her mouth and then starts drinking. <laughs> uh, do you not agree? Uh, what, what did he call you? A uh, belly? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he's a great, right? He, 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 you know, back at home, he, he didn't really have many talents, but uh, he was being reared up to be uh, next in line to succession. Uh, nobody knows why he disappeared. Oh, what? That's what? Cool. And I kind of look at him, giving him a knowing smile. <laughs> well, well, does Mr. Hilda still have many secrets? I let a glance over at her, but still chugging this bottle as I get to the last drop. I slam it to the ground and like it shatters the bottle and go, yep. Yeah, it shatters. And I go, and Arabella's nah, like, nah. Well, that's just irresponsible. Someone's gonna step on that. Or I need another. <laughs> Where is the more or less? But you can have another once you pick this up, you lunk. No, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, no, Emriani asks Arabella, Will you be coming with us? Oh, no, I'm a. Uh... I, I, I've got duties to attend to out here. I gotta take care of the uh, the scholars. Someone's gotta watch over them. Emriani sulks uh, a bit uh, because oh, it's the one fine. person he likes. Don't worry about it. I brought you along because I knew you were talented. All right. 
She gives you a wink. <laughs> I'm gonna use my mage hand and pick up some dirt and just cover the glass. You just cover it. <laughs> <laughs> as you do that, uh, <clears throat> inappropriate. As you do that, Jeff stomps over and he crushes the glass under his huge metal boot. <laughs> He goes, greetings, designation, Jeff. Do you require assistance? Uh, you know, we may, Jeff. Uh, would you mind, uh, finding Orion and Rathian? I'm sorry, finding Norhion? Mm -hmm. Did he leave? Yes, he's in yeah, a tent with Fran alone. With Fran. Okay. Uh, Jeff's... <laughs> I've been feeling dry. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff's head tilts from side to side and he goes, uh, Query accepted. Locating Norheon. And begins to stomp off. <laughs> and he just you keep hearing him every now and going, going locating. 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 <laughs> locating. Waiting before Jeff ended up in the forest fire okay. because he's looking for the fire. <laughs> he just walks in one straight line forever. Do you wanna do you wanna do Morheon and Fran in a tent alone? Yeah, sure. Oh, and so it, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so yeah, Fran uh Fran is kinda like shakily. Uh you, you got her hand in yours and she's like shaking. What's going on? Alright, so um I showed you the coin previously, yeah? but yeah. I've got something else I uh -huh. have to show you as well. Yeah. Uh, Norion's gonna reach into it deeply into his coat pocket about this waist is too height. Too soon, Norion. We just met. Uh, pulls out the paper with the rune on it. She gasps. Ah, uh, oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Um. What were you uh, expecting, friend? I'm, I'm. I'm sorry. Yeah. No. Um. Yeah, this works. Is there like a drawing like, on it, or? Uh, yes. Would you like to? So this is this is a rune, which I probably don't have to tell you once you look at it. I mean, I've never been with this, an elf before. This is a little unorthodox. Uh, I'm I'm only half of an elf. Oh, that's even stranger. But what do you mean by been? We just we just talked to an entire village full of elves. What I feel like I'm missing something here. And she goes, "Oh, you know what? I've misunderstood the situation." Okay. Uh, yeah. What did you want to show me? The the rune that I'm holding with my hand. Okay. So do you like unravel and show it to her? Yes. Great. So this is the first time you've actually physically pulled this thing out and looked at it in a while. Um, what do you remember about the rune? So it uh, has. Um smaller abbreviated pieces of shard or shards orbiting it. There are five of them that are actively orbiting around a main 2D rune, uh, and the ones that are orbiting are like doing so in an erratic and active manner. Uh, it's probably pieces of multiple spells rather than like just a single one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you pull this thing out, two of the five are locked in place on the paper. They're not moving. This may not be good. Friends, like I don't, I don't really know anything about runes. What's what am I looking at here? Uh, sure. So um, I only know so much, unfortunately. But um, from what I can tell, there's one large rune in the center. You see this two D one right here. I'm gonna take her hand and like guide her finger to it. Yes. Hey, tape. Welcome right. back to the stream. And uh, so then um, I'm gonna be. Uh, you know, so this this is the big one. This seems like it's oh the main part of some kind of spell, right? Okay. And then there, you okay. see these ones. I'm gonna move her hand around to each one in turn. Uh, these ones that are floating um, uh -huh. and kind of orbiting uh -huh. around it. So do you think these are some kind of shard of a room? We can't fully understand what they are, what they're they're saying. Like you're doing this, um, and like she's still just looking at you. <laughs> Um, and then these yeah. two yeah. shards on the paper here, right there in the parchment, I should say, uh, these had also been floating erratically around, but they're not anymore. And that is what I'm saying is probably not good, because if this is some kind of spell that hasn't been cast yet, 
I feel like these two might have been cast, and there's only three left. She says, um, well, you don't generally cast a spell without the rest of the room. That you would, you would get really bizarre effects. Have you cast anything recently that has had a bizarre effect? Hmm. I don't believe so. I mean, it was intentional. The entire forest got set on fire, so I don't think that's considered a bizarre effect. Well, you did effect. that on purpose? It was the only way to be sure all the gnolls would be dead and crispy. She kind of looks at the ground. Yeah, I guess so. We couldn't take the chance that they would come in greater numbers. In fact, I'm pretty confident there were more gnolls. He Yalder actually described uh, Adam. <laughs> one wearing a, a blue robe. Uh, it sounded kind of like a wizard robe or something, or possibly a necromancer. I'm not really sure. But it seemed different than the one in the purple robe. You know, remember the big one that fell into the ditch? Well, yes. A few moments later. Yeah, and I believe he looked like he was going to be trying to raise some gnolls from the dead or something. But I counterspelled him into the ground. Yeah, he burned and the entire forest up. down, Tate. You have no idea. Happy He's... birthday to the dead gnolls! <laughs> <laughs> what a gnoll burger! He, he chose to kill all those trees. He didn't care. I mean, the trees were going to die anyway. Let's be real. There's a bunch of gnolls that were going to just, you know, slice and dice them and whatever. The, the trees at least died honorably this way. She and their souls uh, will rise to the... I didn't mean to interrupt you. I'm I... sorry. Oh, no, you're, you're good. Um, right, we should probably get back to Fran. Yeah, let's... Uh... Yeah. Nice, baby. What is it you want to do? I don't... Okay. Are we looking for something? <laughs> right, so I uh, talked to... Well, actually, I know that you, um, you're you a wizard, right? And you um, are you based out of Enron? She says, yes, I've lived my whole life there. So you've been to the Arcane College, right? Uh, well, of course, yes. Absolutely. And have you ever met uh, Venlet? Well, yes, yeah, she's the headmistress. Perfect. So I showed this to her. Um, actually, I traveled all the way from Northera in part to do exactly that. And she said, like, you have that this room is not something that really has been seen at all that is understandable it seems weird right Why would she but she said right here? That, well apparently there are runes like this being uncovered at the stick site and how did you get on was that actually, that's what venlet asked it actually showed up in my mailbox of all things okay well which well. is weird i agree i guess we should have a look around Exactly. So that's what we're here to do. And Venlet also mentioned that no one was supposed to know about the stick site or the runes here. And well, so she said she an armed guard here. That does make sense. They're probably trying to keep a minimal presence and everyone on lockdown. It's also why they want to get the rest of our, our individuals out to safety, which is I also why we'll have to make sure they of six. That's incredibly small. Well, they do have that artificer robot or whatever he is, creation automaton. I'm, I'm not automaton, really sure. Jeff? More than likely. Yes. Like the ones at the Arcane College, but with more fire, which I kind of like, actually. I think Jeff's more along the lines of a. Uh... You know what? It doesn't matter. Yes, we should look around for this rune. Perfect. Uh, yes, I didn't mean to insult the Arcane College. I, I am very sorry. Um. But right, so that that's what we're here to do. And the thing, right, ben, the thing from Benlet was that she mentioned there was a leak that no one else should know about this. So she thinks that whoever figured this out and sent this on the mail to me must intentionally be trying to alert the outside world of this for some reason. So we have and a double agent. Possibly. But what I'm actually more concerned about is if someone felt the need to do that, who's involved in this expedition or aware of it, that suggests to me the leadership of this expedition may not be on the up and up. I'm very concerned. And she says, do you think it's Jeff? I, you know, I actually hadn't considered Jeff yet. I, he seemed like a really nice automaton. But 
we can't rule anyone out. So it could be Jeff. It could be that Earth Genasi. It could be that elf who tries to order me around who really shouldn't do that because she's going to get a firebolt one of these days. I'm waiting for that day. <laughs> but there, there is probably someone here or maybe many someones who are doing something in the Paris. And um, the last thing, Fran, is before we got to Vinron, uh, I had stopped at a village and that's where we picked up Hjalder and that's where I met Vivri. And that village... Um, was a normal Hodunk village? I don't really know how to put it. it we, we have similar but different in North Era. In any case, um, kind of like a regular old village, so to speak, but um, we found this cave on the outskirts of the village, but that was supposed to go underneath the village, Ooh. and we never found the entrance to the village from underneath there, but we, we did try. But that's besides the point. The real point is that in that cave, someone summoned ritually by like ritual sacrifice a being of great power who rose and created acid rain throughout the entire region set the village on fire was able to cast fireball and was able to knock me yeah but it was apocalyptic right this sounds and terrifying. this are you okay ex- i am now thanks to beaver actually she uh I, I I did, luckily. I, I was it was on the loops for a little bit there, but Vivri chucked a good berry into my mouth from twenty feet away or something. It was it was crazy. That's impressive. And then Hyalder came in behind this guy and he like knifed him. Like he was missing previously. He just couldn't get close to him. I don't know. Something was going on. Maybe he just drank too much that day. We've been keeping away from the alcohol, but you saw that that just failed recently. But uh well, he, need alcohol. But, They'll get dehydrated otherwise. Was. Oh, 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 wow. Well, I mean... Hmm. You tell me Hjaldar hasn't been drinking this whole time? The poor guy's probably been yeah. suffering from enormous amounts of dehydration. Don't you guys have an alcoholic you... jug or something? We do, but Hjaldar doesn't know that. Oh my god. Or if he does, oh, he's oh forgotten god. it. Imagine going without water for like four days. Uh, seven, I think. I've been worse. keeping a counter. Uh-oh, you guys is... There you go, you're coming back. Oh, we have a really bad storm outside. Oh, so gonna... okay. That's okay, I'll just kill off your characters if you disconnect. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it should come back in shortly. It's showing in the uh, the back room. There it goes. There it goes, yeah, that's no problem. Um... <laughs> But yeah, anyway, so he all there, uh, put a knife in the back of this guy and like exploded him. And then I set every piece of him on fire to try and make sure he couldn't resurrect or anything like that. But he said specifically he was summoned by the ritual born from the cave. And I found runes there like this one. I Did you find anything else in sure. there? Uh, actually, the, this coin. Remember the coin I was telling you about that we we're trying to figure out, you know, yes. what to do with it, everything that was found in there by Hjalder. You also found a knife. And and then a knife. A knife was also found there. What kind of knife? If I did, uh, you know, we should talk to Hjalder about that, I believe. Okay. It, was, it was the one used for the ritual sacrifice, I think, but I'm pretty sure he pocketed it. Oh, well, I guess we Hjalder. should do that. Okay. Um, oh, go ahead. She motions for you to exit the tent and rejoin the group because we've been role-playing in a tent with each other for like 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay so- we're all on bated breath you see them come you out them and she's out. she is most certainly holding his hand <laughs> i'm still i realized that the rune is still out and i was still like tracing like her finger over the runes and everything and i realized everyone else will be able to see the rune so i quickly hold her hand with my other hand and then take the rune and put it back in my you know cloak which for everyone else seeing just looks like i'm shoving something into my waist like, I'm, nudging, uh-huh. I'm, I'm nudging Kildar and the side. Uh, Raising bow! Um, Rihanna, you see this entire display. I roll my eyes. Hey. <laughs> roll the eyes at hyperspeed. The two of you approach the group. <laughs> they're, they're holding hands. Yes. Are, they, Fred, are they whispering? <laughs> uh, it sounds like it. Are we whispering? 
Yes, okay. whispering. Oh, what am I whispering about? I, I, what's going on? I, what's going on? Yeah, what, what's what's up? Uh, what what, what are the whispers for? Here? Are we are we trying to prevent the 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 elf from hearing us? And you hear Jeff start approaching, and he goes, "Query located. <laughs> Norheon <laughs> is present. You are welcome." A, a good, good job, Jeff. You are you are most excellent. Uh, uh, Jeff, I have a from? question. Query, excellent. How may I be of assistance? Uh, Jeff, who asked you to go search for me? <laughs> Designation, Vivery. Mm -hmm. Vivery, I told you I was going to the tent to show Fran the thing. Yes, oh, oh, uh, yes. we have... <laughs> we, we, uh, we apparently have to uh, go into the you know, um, the catacombs of, of tunnels? Yes, that I do know. I have someone else I have to meet first as well, though. Can that wait? Oh, sure. I'll, I'll walk with you. And I loop my arm <laughs> through his. And we start walking. He's your spiritual animal. Oh, well, so thank you, Beaver. And I lean really close to his shoulder, making sure that uh, nobody is in earshot. Our new friend is a liar. Uh, the Janasi? Oh yes, she's uh, she's most definitely lying. You want to make an insight roll? Make... I feel like that's an insight roll. Is it because I already peeked up on the fact that the monastery is not for religious purposes? Let's let's have the roll. Okay. Don't mind me. And the button. <laughs> I have a very high modifier. No! You made me critically fail because you <laughs> made me roll. So and we oh, both oh. know that I know about oh, the monastery. Okay, okay, I'll give you this. All right. You, yes, you know about... What's the name of the monastery? No one tell her. She, did, she didn't tell me the name. Yes, she did. No, you, you, she told you guys the name. She didn't tell me the name. Well, I think you were passed out, maybe. Maybe you're right. Yeah, I was passed out. Okay. I was right. unconscious. So I'll give you this. It's definitely, definitely sus that she's not religious and belongs to a monastery. Yes, that was going to be the whole basis of my okay, good my enough. connection. I'll take that. <laughs> okay. Amriani, it is it your intention to deceive them? It's it my intention to deceive them? Yes. With why yes. here? Okay. Yes. I'm not going to make you roll because <laughs> she rolled a critical one. You know what? I will make you roll. Maybe you'll roll a critical one as well. Uh, give me a deception <laughs> roll. I rolled a five. Okay, you're fine. Don't worry Plus. about it. <laughs> she, she made a bad lie, but it's okay because it's a, a suspect anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, Psh, no. This is, -uh. this is like when... This to me is like when Norheon had his Freudian slip. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which almost led to y'all's total party kill. Yep. We have we have gotta find Marmaduke still. Anyway, yeah. go ahead, Beaver. She she mentioned that she's very anxious to get back to her monastery. Yet she has no religious deity or piety whatsoever. All right, so like she's present. Oh no, Beaver, you grab, grab my arm and started walking us away, and okay. is whispering to me. I mean, yeah. you see this, Amriani? Are you are you gonna let that let that happen? Are you just like hanging out? Or I'm gonna march over there and say we've dally dilly dallied enough. Okay, she interrupts. Time to get to work. As a duke, I do not dilly dally. I have important business, and I was currently having important business with Vivri. Which I'd like to continue. Are you planning on accompanying us for that business? Because I don't think that was the original intent. Ellison has instructed me that I am to accompany you. I, I suppose she, that she wants. We we're going to say goodbye to mother. Yes. We are. Although I had to talk to mother alone. Bibri, I might have considered you being there. I'm not so sure about Amriani. Why don't you go ahead with Hildar and we will meet you down there shortly. 
It is, uh, it is for everyone's benefit for us to put Mother in the carriage. Send them on their way. Right. It is. Yep. I don't like don't the sound of that. Talk to your supervisor, Amirani. <laughs> talk to you, man. essentially been de facto made in charge of this uh, little foray, Amirani. Right. Uh, whatever you send, can say to Mother, then I can be present for. Uh, and I'm sure. Gonna try and you, you know what? She absolutely can. Oh, <laughs> like, oh, I, know oh. I know where this is going. Well, I am going to trust Vibri for now. We'll walk towards Mother. All right. Uh, while you guys are walking, you see Jeff, like, handing uh, tools to uh, Hollard, who's trying his best to put together this like Ikea reject of a carriage back to try to <laughs> lengthen the carriage to accommodate more people. And he's like, he's banging on like nails with a wrench and Jeff's like, no, you have to hit here. And then he points and Hollard's like, I know what I'm doing, you bucket of bolts. <laughs> Hollard, North Air appreciates your efforts. And he puts his hand up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Jeff's like, right Jeff's here. Like, right yes, here. my duke, Hollard. Yes, my duke. Y yes, my duke. <laughs> of, of course, sir. Yes, my dude. <laughs> Thank you. But yeah, you guys make it to the tent. So um, the great mother. This is probably not a seal. seat. I love it. You should see what they created to uh, get to Venron in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> they basically carved a tree trunk or a tree uh, stump into a chair. Uh, Just yes. for me. So you guys are approaching the the uh, hastily crafted tent that was put up overnight, and uh, yeah, the great mother is in the center of it, and she's like sitting on the floor with crossed legs, and um, yeah, no guards because you don't know where they are. Amil. Uh, she waves you in as you approach. She goes, "Amadore." <laughs> yeah, so Amriani, if you haven't picked up on it, they all speak Elvish, and you don't. Mm. So we can oh, I, I'm now. so sorry. Uh, I, I'm being so rude. Mother only speaks in, in Elvish, so I'm afraid you won't be able to, to listen. In. But uh, you're welcome to stay. Yes, absolutely. I definitely decide to stay, even though I can't understand, to keep a watch on them. Okay. So we're just going to be continuing this conversation in Elvish then. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Agreed. I'm just going to sit there and go, what? Yeah, he'll die. Well, you, uh, didn't, you didn't follow us. <laughs> no, we left you. You're still drinking. You can come if you want. Yeah, so yeah frick it. I'll follow them. Great. I just, I just saw them go into the tent. I'm like, eh, enough drinking for now. <laughs> I, feel like we, I feel like we need a stealth roll here. Was well, it in your intent to be stealthy? No. Okay, he's just falling. He's coming along. I just stomp along. I stomp along. <laughs> like you, you've come along to watch them on the behalf of them versus Amriani. So Amriani's watching them, and you're watching Amriani. You're just giving each other the stink eye. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that works for me. And, uh,. Hildar also doesn't know what we're saying. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's why I'm not objecting yep. too hard here. <laughs> great. So the great mother greets you and she's like, How are you, my darling? I, I feel much, much better, much renewed from uh, the steep. But, uh, but how are you? Are you okay from the fall? She reaches around her back and, like, kind of stretches it because I wish I could say the same. Uh, it's been I... a trying time the past 24 hours or so. I've lost all I've ever known. I do wish that we could have protected your village from destruction, but I hope that you take faith in that we were able to save at least some of your people. She nods. If there were any other way, Mother, I would have chosen it. She kind of eyes you. She says, I understand completely. I am eternally grateful to the two of you for protecting our home the way that you did 
you are bigger than I am, then I probably could not do the same. She says, uh, well, as long as I've been around, you learn to take the small wins and dismiss the losses. I, uh, what I kneel down. I kneel down and I pour her, as a sign of respect, a cup of the honey bead and I present it to her. Oh. Uh, mother, this, uh, this gentleman needs to speak to you about important business. Okay, uh, I'll speak with them. She takes the honey bead. Thank you, Beaver. Hilda, are you just here? <laughs> <laughs> Same for Amrani, right? Yep, yeah. Amrani is probably something weirder <laughs> for you. It's probably like <laughs> I usually describe it as the sound of like water running in a brook. There you go, perfect. Mm. So someone's babble, drowning, babble, 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 babble. but it's them. <laughs> yeah. So she uh, she turns to look at you, Kaiju. What's up? Woo! Hey. That's gonna be a delayed sound. It's not for you, but it will be for me. So you're probably gonna hear it twice. <laughs> thanks for the uh, follow, Kaiju. The well, I mean, I know you followed before, but thanks again. The other Kaiju. Yep, Kaiju 2. <laughs> Woohoo! Yeah, so the uh, Great Mother uh, regards you. I'm going to do something Norhia and almost never does, and I'm going to kneel on one knee in front of her. As a sign of respect. Okay. And she, uh, she says you, you don't need to do that. But I shall, for my ask and my question are great, and to okay. ask them alone is a matter of disrespect. And I therefore will compensate for that as best I can, but ask I must. Look, I, I have a favor, and please don't take this the wrong way. Alrighty. <laughs> like how you well. had to think about it. You're like, hmm, I guess. She says, I don't have a lot of attention span these days. Please keep it short and to the point. <laughs> yes, mother. You see, I'm very tired. <laughs> well, in that case, mother, why? Was there a dragon symbol etched in stone where your town stood? Avery kind of pick, perks up at this. <laughs> um, how do I want to handle this? She says, uh, well, it's been there for as long as I can remember. We built the village uh, around it, inside of it, through it, whatever you want to call it. It's just uh, the only home I've ever known. Have you ever known a home in the mountains just north of your village? I can't say that I have. But I do must ask <laughs> that uh, you didn't answer my question as far as why there is such a, a carving there. Well, it's not a carving, dear. It's, it's a construction. I didn't put it there, if that's what you're asking. Did you build the village on top of it for any reason in particular, then? It just seemed like a good place to go. Did you believe the dragon would protect you? She sighs. Some of us believe that, yes. And they may yet still, mother. What'd you say? They may yet still, mother. In your head, Morian, and in Draconic, you hear... Do you intend to do something about that, Welpling? Yes, Mother. That is my quest. And that is why I am here. 
She nods. Hazel, is that you? This is an important moment. <laughs> okay. Hazel disconnects the modem again. She's knocking oh, no. on something. I'm just trying to make sure it's not on the door. <laughs> She, uh, she says, she says to you <clears throat> out loud and in Elvish, uh, your journey is a perilous one and I, I wish you all the best. Thank you, mother. I am sad to have not met your acquaintance sooner, but thank you for Provided me with your guidance. I'm happy to have been here for you. And in your head, in Draconic again, you hear her say, <clears throat> I will remain at Dobna's for as long as you need me. If you ever need my assistance, please come seek it. In my head, uh, I'll respond to her. Thank you. Your assistance will be appreciated and at this point, probably needed. If you have any allies to call upon, please ready them. Uh, you hear her respond. <laughs> you hear her respond in your head, in Draconic. I just, I gotta make that clear. Um, um, yep. There are very few of us these days, and if you seek to bring us together, I advise you exercise caution. That I shall. I understand what happens when we come together. Y'all are like I... standing oh. around while they're staring intently at each other, but no sounds are coming out. <clears throat> I mean, Vivri's kind of picked up on there's some send message going on because, you know, it's been <laughs> several <laughs> weeks of this happening. Amriani, they're having like a staring contest. It's kind of weird. Low key. Mm -hmm. I'm just still in shock that he kneeled to her after his attitude. Okay. Yeah. Whoa. I'm just sitting there, just like uh, thinking, like, doing too much to see him <laughs> kneel. <laughs> yeah. You're like, have I drank enough yet? <laughs> she says, um, if you make the call, I will come. How shall I call you? You will know. That I shall. You also if needed, have the resources of Northera at your disposal. I will try to make Harmon available to you to bridge the gap there if needed. She asks, who is Harmon? Uh, you know the lizard man that was is in your village? Is he saying this part out loud? No, he's talking No, about this is in Dr Draconic. So Sunday. even in his head, he yeah. doesn't know his name? So she says, <laughs> oh, you mean Holler, the lizard man, of course. You know, yes, are yes, of us. You are aware of this. What is that? Sorry, say that again. They are a lesser version of us, but they are no lesser a person. I thought uh, Hollard was a lizard man, not a, a kobold. I must have been wrong about him and his wife. <laughs> but yes, I, I am aware that in, in general they are. I've always done my best to treat kobolds with the greatest respect and all other beings, but kobolds in particular. She, uh, an elvish turns to you, Vivri, and she says, you keep your eye on this one. Oh, he's kept me busy along with the other one since I've met them. She says, if you'll excuse down me. down three villages now. <laughs> Vinrod is still standing, I'll have you know. <laughs> In Draconic, three. Only three. Well, she doesn't know about the others. I see. She says, uh, <laughs> if you'll excuse me, I really must rest. Of course, Mother. I am sad to have not made your acquaintance sooner. I'm going to take my my hand to my forehead and bow to her, putting my, my fingers resting at my temple. Um, and then I'm going to say, uh, I will uh, say my prayers for your lost. For the uninitiated, uh, the Great Mother is uh, a very old elven woman. Uh, she's got uh, white hair, long white hair, 
She's uh, got a hunch in her back and carries a, a long staff. She's wearing a green robe uh, with white trim and is usually accompanied by a guard unit, but, uh, well, they're missing because of a certain wrath that fell from the sky. She's you old mean exploded. And, uh, she's very old. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so that's what I'm just trying to paint the scene. That's what she looks like. Nice. Thank you. Avery, you have something growing out of your head. That's my potato. That is oh. her potato. It's a tater. It's grown sentient. <laughs> it's got eyes. Ha ha! I'm sorry. Okay. All right, you guys have talked to the great mother. Hey, Olvar, you, you're, you don't, you think they're talking about tax evasion? You're not sure. <laughs> tax evasion. <laughs> <laughs> just like Turnip uh, Boy. I'm just going to go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Arabella kind of like knocks on the flap again, like she did before. So is everything all right in there? <laughs> oh yes, we are. We are just finished saying our goodbyes to Mother and our prayers for the lost, and uh, we are ready to get to work. She stands up and brushes off. Her, uh, her robes. Yes, uh, I am ready to light additional torches. <laughs> I think we have enough. Oh, but that one over there went out. You, you need to relit? Fine. Do what you can. I'm going to firebolt that particular torch. Oh, no. I'm going to firebolt it? After we get out of the tent, though. No, no, that's oh, what you said. God. Give me a roll. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> The DC 10. There's no chance you're gonna miss. He's gonna miss. I got a 13, luckily. Ooh. Yeah. He like, he hits like the very, very tip of it, and it like. This time he luckily, shot it from his damage. hand. It was a projectile. While you're holding it. That was incredibly risky. Was it though? Do you have no faith in your duke? I, you're not my duke. Let's make that clear. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, if you don't want citizenship is in North he, Era, then... Is he not? Uh, you never did say where your monastery is. She's right, you didn't. Where is your monastery? Mm. Uh... <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Do you not know where your monastery is? I feel like that's something I would know like the back of my hand. Just like I know Hollard's name, like the back of my hand. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my monastery? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> um, it's easy for the roll for if it's in North Era. <laughs> oh God! Oh God! Fate okay. check. You know what? Yeah, give me give me a fate roll. Get, roll a d100. Uh, uh, min. Me? <laughs> yes. Okay. Um. Um. Looking for. I'm gonna make Hold this on. an extremely rare percent chance here. Uh, that's that's the 100 just, and the 10. One. 100. Not initiative. Oh god, we're not killing anyone. Not yet. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Gonna roll. All right. Let's have it. It is a 36. Okay. No, it's not in North Era. Oh, that would have been so funny. If she had gotten 75 <laughs> or higher, it would be. <laughs> Adam, no! We're not killing anyone. He hasn't made stat blocks for these people yet. Hang on. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, actually, oh. I'm so proud of you, Trog. Uh, <laughs> it is in uh, the uh, what's called the Frenzied Reach, which is a mountain pass. It's yeah, it's the in east. the Frenzied Reach. Duh. 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 <laughs> you speak with such confidence for someone who took so long to remember where their monastery is. Hmm. Oh, my bad. I'll just go ask I'm going to keep my eye on you. Okay, sorry. Yeah, with that, no um, Arabella is kind of like, well, if you don't mind, I'd like to get to work today at some point. 
I, I think that's a wonderful idea. And I go up to Arabella and now I link my arm on hers. Tell me more about when Hildar was a child. Oh, you're going to love Uh-oh. this story. Is, is there a story where he got into the peanut butter jar, but he couldn't get it back out? <gasps> I say oh, out loud. What happened? Oh, they work for her, but not me. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> some, some of I us hear that honey will get you things that uh, iron cannot. Got it. <laughs> so I hear. Not necessarily experience. I'm just gonna recycle. <laughs> Fantasy recycling? I love it. Fantasy recycle your recycling. plastics. So it's a jar, but it's like a glass jar of peanut butter. <laughs> Alright, so are we heading into the mine? Yep, so it's pretty much a staircase that goes down. Suavamente. After this suavemente stuff, we'll continue. <laughs> quiero sentir tus labios besándome otra vez. Alright, uh, Amriani leads the way to the mines. Uh, so it's like, it's just a staircase that goes into the dirt. Like, you say the mines, like it's a <laughs> grand wall oh. entrance. It's, it's well, it leads the way down the staircase into the dirt. Hazel, that's my dice. Come on. All right, yeah. <laughs> so uh, let's have a marching order, please. Who's uh, heading up the pack? You, I guess, Amriani. Yes, me. Great. Who's next? Me. Kill Then a pen. me and uh, me and Belly, arm in arm. Well, Belly's not accompanying you. She'll she'll be there and and like see you off. Trust me, I wish she okay. was. Then I'll go down after we part. Okay. Uh, I guess I'll go behind Fran in the back. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> wait, and wait, Fran. Nudge, nudge, uh, yeah. Nudge, 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 he wants nudge. to see Fran walk away. There we go. Yeah, we'll, we'll, have, we'll have Fran walk in front of me so that you know her like wizard robe that is probably covering her entire ass. You know, <laughs> leaves she, okay. absolutely nothing so to, she's wearing uh, a to the imagination. It's a red naval uniform with the uh, the, the fuzzy shoulder things. Um, she doesn't Don't ever we have, have a anymore. picture. Yeah, yeah, we, we do, do this right picture, Yeah. In the picture, she has elven ears, but she's not an elf. She's a human. It's just it's clearly how Norion sees her with the elven ears. There Basically, you go. Basically, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's elven, but then God's being elven. <laughs> yeah. Kildar wakes up one day Jeff and up. he's got elf ears. He's like, no. No. Hildar is going to actually start studying Elvish. <laughs> It'll take him 365 days, but he might be able to manage it. He'll be able to have like conversations about potatoes. <laughs> and how to cook them. Great. Uh, yeah, so um, you guys are approaching the staircase and uh, Belly uh, looks up at you, Vivri, and she's been telling the story and she's like, we had to cut him out of the jar. Can you believe it? I'm face farming and sighing. So much like him, I love it. You should have seen him when we went to met him at the at the inn for the first time. He was a hot mess. It was so funny. Well, you I got to tell me stories sometime, but uh, right now we really got to get to work. We're burning daylight. Even I wave by door. Ground. I don't know how that works. Don't ask me. Huh? <laughs> yep. I work better at night anyway. Yeah, so Fran uh, looks around and goes, "Are we doing this? We are, we are. Are we expecting resistance? Yeah, always, always respect resistance, Fran. <laughs> always expect resistance. Well, Mariana, you've been in these tunnels. Is there any resistance down there? Uh, resistance, yeah. as in, as in complications, as in I might have to do something I didn't intend to do." Yes, mm. it's it's all kinds of resistance. Perfect, oh I love it. <laughs> I mean, is that what you're telling them? Is that what you're telling them? Calculating stat blocks now. I right, <laughs> got everything set up. I'm so proud of you, Drog. Shanks. <laughs> the shanks have been set. We're getting shanked, y'all. All right. So we walk down into the stairwell. It has been hastily carved out um, by our earthen genasi here. Uh, it's it's very geometrically pleasing to the eye because it's it's almost perfectly angled in every way. Uh, you 
enter into the dark corridor and it's literally just a hallway that turns to the right. Um, Fran asks out loud, goes, what exactly are we looking for? Jewels. Jewels? Lots and lots of jewels. Just all I see are, are dirt walls. And she's like, what? Does anyone have a torch? I don't. You all have dark vision, I'm gonna don't you? Dark vision. Light yeah. dancing lights and uh, have them hover around everywhere. She's okay. Oh, that's great. All right. Yep, that's better. Now everything's pink. Now blue. Okay, that's yellow. All right, great. <laughs> It's Pride Month, friend. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Let's see. Hang on. I had this set up wrong. Actually, yeah, I guess that works. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, you guys continue uh, down the corridors. I mean, this is literally. Um, rooms after rooms of what's essentially the basements of these buildings. Most of them have been cleared out on Riani as you take them to each room and you tell them, well, you know, we, we did this one on the first day or well, the first, you know, whatever, a few hours, uh, we cleaned it out. Um, if you guys would like to start making some rolls, maybe do some investigations, maybe check for traps, cough, chalk, choke, choke, cough. Something along yeah, those I want to do a perception check to see if I can find anything um, that seems dangerous. Like, does it look like any creatures have been through here that, you know, maybe weren't working creatures? Um, okay. Do I see okay. anything that strikes me as dangerous? I also would like to do a, a roll for uh, looking for traps sure. and such. So, um, what? So by this is going to work, Min, is you have a passive perception. It's on the left side of your page underneath where it says mm -hmm. saving throws. It's passive perception. Yours is 10, I believe. So mm -hmm. what I do is I keep in mind whose passive perception is highest. And going forward, if I you know, intend for you to encounter anything that you could see with you know perception, that's Min, Kaiji. You couldn't tell? If there's anything that's Dang. around that you need to perceive, and I, if it's high enough then you will just perceive it otherwise you need to roll passive perception your perception rather to look harder essentially so that's what everybody okay. wants to do is to look real hard to see if anything's out of the ordinary and i rolled okay. a 20 dirty 20 you rolled a dirty 20 that means she rolled a number that when she added her bonus added up to 20 so natural 20s are different obviously um okay so this is what you see you see uh, a lot of dirt on the floor, right? The ground, essentially. The floor of this tunnel, which is perfectly straight because of uh, Amriani's ability to just move the earth. Um, you're not very far underground. You're probably about 8 to 10 feet underground. And Did uh, my druid craft tell me that? Would your druid craft tell you what? How far underground I am? Can I tell? Hmm... I'm not what does the druid craft say? I forget exactly. Uh, you can create tiny harmless sensory effects. You can tell the weather at your location. Um, I can make flowers blossoms or seed pubs bloom. Other harmless sensory effects, and I can snuff out lights and candles. But I didn't know because since I can make um, the, the flowers and blossoms bloom if there's any exposed roots would I be able to use that in order to tell about how deep I was okay you've asked me if you could touch grass and tell how far underground you were um I mean not grass I was thinking more like deep roots like tree roots I was being facetious because touching grass is like a nerd thing oh that's illegal yeah, also, um, could you sense sunlight through the roots of plants? Um, I'm gonna say no. I feel like if you were able to, like, grasp roots, that you're probably pretty close to the surface. Okay, I, I was like just wondering. Could, I feel like you could suss that out. So, like, if you were underground and there were no roots, you'd be like, man, we're not anywhere near plants. That kind of thing. Okay. All right, so you wanted to roll also on Riani? Mm-hmm. Okay, go ahead. What do I roll? Perception, you roll a what d20. Do you look? Okay, d20. Unless there's something 
particular you're looking for, in which case I might have to roll something different. I rolled a three. Um, there's dirt. Oh, plus, going. um, plus. Oh, yeah, just a three. Yeah, it's, there's dirt on the ground. Like, a lot of it. <laughs> like, more can than you're probably I move, used to. Oh, can wait. I start to, like, move it? <laughs> yeah, you can move <laughs> some more dirt, sure. <laughs> I'm... <laughs> I move the dirt, like... <laughs> I move the dirt. The dirt moves. Good job. You move it against the wall or against the wall? Uh, <laughs> Behind you or in front of you? Uh, I move it like from like parting of the sea, right? Like she red sea parts the floor in front of you guys for some reason. Wow! <laughs> Jeez, it's impressive, Hildar. You're like, whoa! Where can I learn this technique? Where? Where can I learn it now? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Hyotar, do you do you sense any traps or? Mm, what would that be under? Uh, investigation. So you're underground, yeah, and there's it's literally dirt walls, um, except for the holes in the stone walls that have been knocked out in order to access the basements of these buildings. So mm. uh, yeah, maybe not. <sighs> I mean, you can look traps. for traps, yeah. Let's do it. Okay. I'm giving you the scene all. so you can tell me how you look for traps. I have 21. a question. Yes. Uh, my spell, like the Pass Without a Trace that lets me merge with stone, does that mean I can like move through stone? So Pass Without a Trace is not a merge with stone. That's just flavor text they put in there. Pass Without a Trace allows you and your party to have... Uh, a higher chance to to stealth through an area oh, as long okay. as it's within range of you okay got it you're not even supposed to be able to like part earth but i kind of just gave that to you because i thought it'd be fun thanks yeah no problem there is a spell that lets you do that called mold earth and i figured you know what let's just do the thing Fran and i have that yes yes they do Fran has a great many spells that I make up on the spot usually. <laughs> Particularly fly. But yeah, no, you so um Hildar. Trap searching. What are you thinking? No. Nah. Wispy, like thin wires. Uh Okay. So yeah. like um you've got some tools in your backpack. Um uh what Look. you know, what would you use in your equipment? to test for traps. Like, you're not even sure what traps are here, if there are traps. Ball bearings. Yeah, it's a great <laughs> idea. All right, so you're going to, like, chuck your ball bearings around. You're going to throw your balls around, Hildar? Yes. <laughs> yes, I am. Hildar begins to throw his balls. Like, y'all are walking, right? <laughs> and, like, you see this earth part in front of you from left to right, and then Hildar, like, perks up and just chucks a tiny ball bearing into a room, and it clicks around. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Just throw, uh, what do you call it? Um, just throw a ball bearing and okay. it barely misses. Give me an investigation uh, check. <laughs> Let's see. They did a great job, Kaiju. They they slaughtered an army. It was amazing. Wait, are you doing the previous investigation check or are you doing. Oh, did you do one already? What'd you get? Yeah, 21. 21? Okay. Um, uh, so your, your ball bearing clicks around a little bit, uh, but you don't really get the sense that there was anything there to trigger. Mm -hmm. You feel like you're pretty safe. Okay. 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 Ooh. So yeah. I guess I'm going to keep on going down yeah. this tunnel with this red sea of dirt just going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, you guys are pretty much making your way through. This labyrinth here, I don't know if you still have the, the I mean, you have the stream open, you can see. So you're making your way down this curvature. You're turning the next corner. You guys are about here. And there's an underground room here that you need to pass through. Ooh, ooh. Is there a door? <laughs> no, there's holes in the walls. I mean, there's a door leading, like, up, but it's not a, a door. It's like a pathway. How deep are the holes? I'm sorry, there are holes. 
<laughs> like actually you can see through t to something so you guys have um when you excavated previously punched a hole through the basement in one wall and out the other and then into the dirt like a ah, like a okay. drill gotcha yeah so the basement is um free to explore uh everyone yeah sure you walk up to yeah. you look inside it's a, it's a, not a very big room it's maybe five by ten feet very dusty down here uh lots of stone everywhere and oh my god the cobwebs uh there is a staircase that leads up uh, that is mostly made out of wood that has rotted long ago hmm. i'm gonna presagitate some dust and some cobweb okay yeah oh, norhan starts cleaning house quite literally <laughs> that makes sense for him. Uh, I inspect the staircase. Sure. What are you looking for? Uh, a way up or, or some something sturdy to figure out how to get up there. Okay. I mean, you know that on top of this, since you're in the basement, is probably the house that is no longer there. Oh, okay. Where, where? So even though well, the nine... light's not oh. shining down, it's probably just because the ground is there now. Gotcha. Mm. Uh, there's uh, a rotted table that is uh, crumpled on the floor, uh, as well as a bookshelf that um, has several books on it. I'm going to investigate the bookshelf. Likewise. Okay. The uh, the shelf is has seen better days. Um, there's some metal hinges that are still around that are incredibly rusted. Uh, there are three books. Um, I got a fourteen on investigation. Can I understand the titles? Um, so the books that you see don't have anything written on the front covers. So I'm gonna flip it open like somewhere towards the middle and see if, first and foremost if I understand the language okay you flip open this book um, and it is full of drawings drawings of various animals uh, some of which you recognize there's a there's a horse is there a dog no no there's a sloth yeah. thumbing through there you see a butterfly you see uh, you see a flaming monkey. Do you remember when I when I showed you the flaming monkey? Yes. Look, Wait, you're there is. Oh, very nice. You were spot on with that. This this might be useful, and I think I'm going to keep it. I'm going to tuck it into my bag. Okay. I hand the other book to Norhion. Here. Can you can you see what this one is? This is a I'm red open book, the book and... that appears to have been leather bound, and the leather on it is very rotted, and it kind of disintegrates in your hand. Like it doesn't fall apart, but it's definitely rubbing off on you. And a prestigitate what's rubbing off on me. Okay, the book mm -hmm. deteriorates further. Just prestigitate my hands. That okay? Yeah, I mean, well then we'll. <laughs> We'll uh, open it up and see if we can read what's inside at all. A lot of the pages are stuck together. Um, they don't seem to be in very good condition. This book is basically ruined. Uh, there are definitely markings. You can't tell what they are. You don't feel like you're going to get much use out of this book. I'm going to put it back on the shelf and grab uh, whatever is next to where this one was. This is a black uh, book that is bound with uh, some, some kind of cloth, you imagine. You have a look All at right, it. we're going to open it up. It. Yeah. You explode. No. <laughs> you, open yes, it up went out. you open up the book. It's blank. There's nothing written on it. You want to bring a dancing light and hover one over it? Sure. Like over the pages? Can I do a history check to see if it reminds me of Hildar's book? Sure. Let's mm. have a history check. Me book. I got a five. You got a five. Um, It's blank. Like Yogar's book. book was. 
Uh, Hyotar, does, is this like the book that, that you had for a while? Mission failed. We'll get him next time. <laughs> Thanks, Kaiju. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Let me, let me have a look. Him? Yes. yes. Gently, yes. They hand you a blank book. Gently. <laughs> I touched the book. <laughs> touched one of the pages. Yeah. Um, you, you thumb through the book. It's it's blank. There's nothing on it. Mm, well, that you and do you have an identify spell available? Uh, Fran says, um, uh, yeah, yeah, sure, I can do that. Pass it to Fran. Right. Let's <laughs> give it a shot on this book. Fran takes it in her hands and she kind of looks it over. She flips it from side to side and she goes, "Guys, I I think this is just a plain book. Do you really want me to cast?" And uh, if you think it's just a blank book, let's abort mission. But let's hold on to it because you know who could use that? Hollard. Hollard. Hollard, Hollard needs a blank book. You got the name right. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> oh, why, why, thank you. You hear an illusion behind you of clapping. Friend <laughs> <laughs> says, uh, well, I guess, I guess that's this room clear. What exactly are we looking for? Well... Can I do a perception check really quick to make sure there's nothing hiding behind the bookcase, like a door? Yeah, sure. Let's have an investigation roll for that. I have a four. You have a four. I was hoping you were going to ask for perception, because well, I have a modifier. If you're going to investigate something hidden, you have to investigate. If you're going to perceive something Ooh. hidden, it wouldn't be hidden, would it? I mean, I, I'm looking behind the bookcase is how I'm imagining it. Okay. I'm just, like, looking. So I wasn't sure if, like... So a little behind the curtains. If you had rolled high, I probably would have put something there. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you, you grab your hands on the book. Because that would have been fun, right? You put your hands around the bookcase and you pull away at it. And it crumbles to the, the ground. Uh, revealing a brick wall. Oh. This is, uh, this is interesting. Mm -hmm. They make brick different here. It's yes. red. <laughs> red, it, it's gold for you, isn't it? Yes, and, and silver and purple. But never red. Fran looks and she's like... Yeah, he, here it's every shade of red. It's, it's great. What are you, what are you guys talking about? Oh, uh, hold on. I move a dancing light closer to it. Oh, okay. I see. But the dancing light keeps changing colors and tune with the pride rainbow, so it like it looks like every <laughs> color under the sun. <laughs> 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 Just like, friends, like, can we, can we, like, is there another room we need to look at? So we work our way out of that room yep. and continue on? Yes. Um, as you guys are continuing, um, you see something peculiar that wasn't here when you were down here before, Amriana. Amriani. Mm hmm. It's a log. And it's a barring log. your path. <laughs> I have a solution for this log. No, oh, do God. not do that. <laughs> Is this log the same like the logs that fell from the raft? Or you want to give me a roll? See if you can tell? Sure. All right, give me. Give me a history roll. See if you can uh, determine 20. whether or not you remember this. You got, oh, was that a natural 20 or a dirty 20? Uh, what do you mean? What did your rice come up? Not oh, your rice. What does your dice come up as? 20. She rolled a natural 20. Not only do you <laughs> know that this is a log from the raft, you know which one it is, even though you were never on the raft. <laughs> <laughs> this is the mast of the raft that has fallen and pierced the earth. I know my logs. She's like, hmm, my logs. this is a log. Mm, log. And Fran looks at it and goes, oh yeah, I'd recognize this anywhere. Look, <laughs> like Fran, you can still see our nail marks in it. <laughs> she shudders. <laughs> Cedar. She says, uh, it appears as though we need to get past this somehow. Yeah. If only uh, there was someone who could do something about that. A so, mighty small individual with an axe or something like that. 
We all turn and look at Hilder. Intently. What are you looking at me for? Well, you, you don't want him to set it on fire, do you? I would like to set it on fire, but it seems like Vibri does not. Do, do you want me to set it on fire, Hilder? I can set are it on fire. Are you taking votes? Is this democracy? <laughs> yeah, there we go. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Well, I I don't have anything I could break it down. I don't have you, you have You have an axe, don't you? Mm -mm. Do you, you want to you check your a, inventory? You, a, you definitely have something that has a whole bunch of axes on it, if nothing else. This is the great club. <laughs> I just look. I didn't realize. Uh, I turn around, put my backpack down, and like Mary Poppins, just somehow pull out this long, just great club of spikes and chips in <laughs> in it. <laughs> just gonna Ooh, it on has little thing. axes on the end of it. Don't forget about that. Part. What was that? It has little axes on it. Don't forget that part. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna wail on this log. <laughs> All right, you Let's start chopping it. away in the log. Give me a strength check, good sir, to see what we can do with this log. Oh, it would have been an 18. I got four. <laughs> <laughs> you got a four. Um, your uh, your axe sticks in the log, and you can't remove it. Damn it! Get out! Oh, oh no! You thing. Damn axe. <laughs> I'm going to try to assist him to pull it out. Okay. Give me a combined Which is extra funny. Roll. I got an 8. DC is 12. I uh, got a 17. <laughs> uh, Yeah, I'll do it. You guys get it out together. <laughs> <laughs> we both Are we able backwards. to like, lift the log and move it? Or is it... It's a big log. It's a huge tree. Okay. I guess the trunk of so a tree, no. basically. You could try. I'm not gonna say no. I will never tell you guys no. Uh, no, no, I'm good. You uh, sure? Strand, what if we make a hole? Do you think we could make a hole? That says you wanna. Ooh, we could bury it. That's a great idea. If you look so already. Are we making a grave for a tree? I, I mean, the, the tree isn't there anymore. It's already passed over to the Fey Wilds and Fran, has been uh, reincarnated. Friend grins a big grin. And I just kind of look at him. I just kind of look at him like everybody knows that. Well, yeah, but I mean, that's so you, you put something that is already dead in a grave so that it works. No, you, you, you don't put things that die in holes. Can we dig around it? You could, yeah, sure. You're the you're the resident yeah, uh, excavator. Okay, I try. I decide to try and dig around it. Or, hey guys, would you? Maybe I can move the earth around it. Uh, yeah, yeah. I I think that's a great idea. Uh, you you know mold earth, do you not? D do I? Yes, that's what you've been doing yes. this whole time. Yes, I do. <laughs> Technically, don't, but we're just gonna roll with it for now. <laughs> okay. All right. So, so I'm. Go ahead. I'm gonna help her. I'm gonna right. go on the other, other one side of the tree, and she can go on the other, and I'm gonna help her mold earth to drop this tree in a hole. Okay, it's not a cantrip, right? It is a cantrip. It's a cantrip. Okay, great. I yeah. can read it to you. It's a, it's a, thirty foot range, and it's a five foot cube. You okay. can move an area of loose loose dirt instantaneously and excavate it, moving it along the ground and deposit it five feet away. Okay, I like it. Uh, yeah, so you guys like carve around this log, right? That's the yes. plan? Yes. Cool. Give me one sec. Uh-oh. What's up? Secret rolls. Nice nah, secret roll. I'm doing it right now in the open, like, okay. Hmm. Well, so you guys get to either side of this log, and you start to dig into the sides of it, and it begins to shift, which is not what you were expecting, because you're going around this thing, not under it. Uh, it kind of gives you a start, but it stops moving, and you continue to dig around it, and it shifts again, and it stops, and you finally connect where you had originally started, and you can continue on. Hooray. Hooray. You done it. You've solved my log puzzle. 
<laughs> Bye, log. Yep. Bye, log. Uh, now, um, you logged ahead down. of you is a turn that turns to the a right. A few moments later. Do you wanna? Do you wanna scout ahead? Someone can. We do have a scout with us. Do you, do you want to look around the corner? Make sure oh, there's okay. no other, uh, I don't know, desserts? Hey, fine, fine. Nice. Yeah, stealth it. <laughs> Alright, give me a stealth roll. Time to set. Zink. Make sure to do it with advantage. Yeah. Oh. Uh, mm, mm, mm. what's, oh, yeah, double roll. Okay. Yep. So let's try again. Oh, that's better. 19. We've been trying to reach you about your boat's yeah. extended warranty. Uh, he goes to walk around the corner, but before he even crosses the threshold, you guys can't see him anymore. I poofed into okay. the wind. I am the wind. You turn around the corner, <laughs> uh, Hildar, and you see a room to the left and a room to the right just a little bit further down. Do they have doors or is it just holes? <laughs> uh, well, they are... Uh, paths that were carved out previously, so they are punched holes in the walls of these basements because basements don't generally have doors that lead outwards. I'm going to peek into the, door, the room on the left. You look into the room on the left and you see uh, a big circle table in the middle of the room that has been dilapidated with time. A wooden shelf behind it on which stand uh, several bottles of uh, very dusty whatever is in them and in mm. the corner is a fireplace okay room to the right the room to the right uh it has a door actually it's closed i'm going to use ghost step tattoo <laughs> all right uh y'all aren't here for this but Hildar quite literally phases through the door <laughs> into this basement give me a dexterity saving throw do you want to explain why yeah do it tell her why because I can. Because no, you can't. <laughs> there are people here who don't know about your tattoo or what it does or anything. Uh, ghost step to uh, yeah. ghost step tattoo um, is a tattoo that allows me to just literally walk through a door without me having to bother to pick lock it or anything. I just go like, yeah, no, and just phase through the door like it's nothing. Like there's a uh, door there. He actually has decided what it looks like. Adam. What's it look yeah. like? Yeah, do you want to... Uh, I forgot what it looked like. I think it was a butt <laughs> tattoo, wasn't it, Ian? <laughs> I think it was. It was a butt I tattoo? Can't... Yeah. Yes, I remember. Yeah, that's right. I can't remember what it, if I picked it as. I think it was a tattoo of you, wasn't it? On your butt? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. <laughs> if it's not, it should be. <laughs> right, let's do that. Okay, great. Oh, yeah, you do the thing. So you step through the this door, uh, Hildar. Like, mm -hmm. this is the first time you've actually used this ability. What does it feel like? What does it look like? I just feel like I just went through, like, a thick water and just, like, phased through it. Like it's stepping weird. through jello. Yeah. <laughs> it's alive! Uh, 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 give me a deck save, Hildar. Oh, no. Because oh, you no, have no, walked no, through a door without looking through it first. Yeah. Or, or attempting in any way to open it. I got a 13 on the dot. <laughs> um, you step through the door, right? You, like, you put your foot through, and you try to make purchase on the other side, but you don't find it, because there's no floor here. Huh? Uh, you begin to literally fall, and you turn around ow, with ow. just enough ledge to catch yourself. You are now dangling <sighs> precariously over what appears Shit. to be some kind of pit. This is not good. Not very good. And you guys don't know what's going on because uh, he hasn't said anything. I, I can't. <laughs> that I'm far away from him. Uh, you're not that <laughs> far. You're probably about 20 feet. I mean, you could definitely scream. In fact, I recommend it. <laughs> I, I will now refuse that or, request. Or could <laughs> he could he disengage? Disengage from a ledge on which he yes. has no barely any grasp at all? Yeah, sure. Good idea. Good idea. I mean, he is a rogue. 
Is this engage into the water? For combat. I mean, if you want to like jump or pull out your rope or call for help or call for help ah. or call for help, <laughs> any one of those things would be great. <laughs> I yell out to help. Ha. You guys hear Hildar screaming. Did you hear that? <laughs> I did. Ah. Fran's like, I don't hear anything. God damn it, help me! <laughs> oh, I, I think that's Hildar. We better get going. What did that idiot do? He's our idiot. <laughs> <laughs> you can't call we, him that. We walk Something. up to where the door is. Uh, heal that, are you here? There's a closed door. Uh, you, have to knock first. you have to knock first. I start checking the doorknob. It's locked. Okay. I'm going to knock on the door. Uh, okay. <laughs> the, the door is locked. I. Uh... You knock on the door. It, it goes thump, thump, thump. God damn it. <laughs> Hildar, <laughs> <the door. laughs> I mean, you better tell him what's going on, man. Can I use I'm one of my, like, ledge. jeweler's tools to try and pick the lock? So or... there is a thief's kit, which has lock picks in it. Um, so I will do that. Okay, you don't have one? <laughs> 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 if you damn want... Damn it. Well, here's... So, okay. Uh, what... In this scenario... You could do a lot of things, right? It's a door that you need to get through. So what feasibly would you think you could do standing in front of a wooden door? Kick it down. You could try. Yeah, we could do that. I'm a, I'm a kicky that. lady. I'm You're a, a monk. You're a kicky lady? All right. Give me a strength <laughs> check. Okay. As you guys are knocking on the door and trying the handle, Amriani has started to back up out of line of sight. Oh, no. I got a... I got a... Um, strength, strength, strength. I got a seven. You got a seven. Great. Oh, no. Go for it. <laughs> I'll tell you what happens. Okay, so I attempt to kick the door down. And she hurts her foot. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> My God. I, 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 don't, I don't know what to do. I, I mean, we oh, could try oh, to burn oh. the door or... Can I try again? Yeah, Can sure. Give it another it try. I'll let you try one I'm more gonna time. I'm going to give it another try. One more time. Can I give it That was a warm up. Does anyone want to give her a, a hand? I got I a 15. Well, you can give her, the, you can do the help action, which will give her uh, advantage on this. I mean, I could give her a help action, but I have a negative one. Well, I mean, you can still, it's still an assistance, right? It's, it's just a mechanical thing. I okay, I'll help her. You this could uh, describe some other way to help her. What's that, Hilder? Um, I, um, I realized that I could have literally just used my mage hand to pick the door open to let them in. <laughs> well, you don't know if it's locked or not, but you no, certainly haven't tried I'm, anything. No, I'm going to let them do what they want. I'm just going to oh, okay. focus on trying not to die. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> so how do you help, Beavery? Um, Let's see. Charging with her. Do you have like a crowbar <laughs> or something else similar to that? Or maybe you I could. To, I have to check if I okay. if I do in my kit. I do not. I have. You could uh, just be like, "You've got this," and give her inspiration. Or wait, Trog, it says I do have thieves' tools. You have thieves' tools? Yeah, you could pick a lot. Yes. Okay. <laughs> But it's all right. I already I went the kicky route. But hey, I'm gonna here. cheer her on. Go, you can do this, Amarani. Go kick it. Or don't. I'd like to burn the door. Whichever works fine for me. <laughs> I got a fifteen. Ooh. You got a fifteen. All right. So this is what happens, right? You you rear back from having kicked it once, and it just kind of reverberates. And Hildar, you feel the thump, and you kind of get an understanding oh, no. of what they're trying to do. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you realize what's going on as Amriani backs up again. You look at her and you give her a thumbs up and you're like, you got this. I believe in you. And you go charging forward, Amriani, and you go into this thing uh, doing a double drop kick. And you nail yeah. this door in just the right spot that it goes flying open towards Hildar. <laughs> as your fingers are swept off this ledge, Hildar, you are now plummeting into this pit. No! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Can I try to? Uh, you have six seconds to try something. 
Can I try to grab him? Try and grab him. Do it. Oh. Give me a deck save. Hilda, give me a deck save. Deck save. There you go. You see I got an eight. Avery's hair come spiraling at you. <laughs> Seven. Uh, your fingertips touch Hilda as you fall into a pit. When nah. our fingertips throw my rope touch. to him. Oh, sorry. When our when our fingertips touch, can I cast jump on him? Ooh. Mm. Now you're asking a lot of things really fast. I will let you do this because this sounds interesting. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to cast Jump on Hielder. It only requires that we touch. Okay. So when our fingertips touch, I very, very quickly cast this spell that I have been diligently practicing in my head. <laughs> okay. And, <laughs> and when I do this, it looks like... Uh, constellations just suddenly shoot all across Hilder's skin and now for the next minute you're gonna have a triple jump distance what am i jumping off the wall <laughs> hopefully you're falling <laughs> yeah you've got about 12 seconds before you hit something i'm gonna try and grab onto a wall scrape to something all right. you're gonna want to try to fling yourself on a wall and push off so you're That's jump distance. If you have something in your inventory you should look you should look at your inventory real quick because there's something that might help you at least if you're gonna fall you could fall less badly hmm true uh where is it <laughs> oh yeah i uh rummage from my backpack hole i'm just everything's just like flying around me <laughs> yep. um i'm going to take a soup stone what are you doing with the soup stone <laughs> And swallowing it. Well, don't have to swallow it. Oh God! Just oh, put it in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna put it in my mouth. Tell everyone what the soup stone mm -hmm. does. The soup stone it weighs practically nothing. Once you place it into your mouth, it triples your weight, but you take half full damage, and you can't be physically moved without your consent. <laughs> so, uh, you feel this electrical shock as Vivri's fingertips touch yours. And it courses through your body and you feel this like ungodly amount of strength in your legs. And you think to yourself, I'm going to put a rock in my mouth. <laughs> so he rummages <laughs> through his inventory and he sticks a stone in his mouth and you instantly feel way heavier as you begin to rocket towards the bottom of this boot. <laughs> <laughs> you, take, you take 3d6 fall damage. Because it's 30 feet. You should have tried to jump bounce off so, the wall. Does he take half that though? Because he has the soup stone. He will, but I have to get the number first. Good. All right, that's what eight. So you take four falling damage as you're you're gonna collide with the ground here. Now, is your intent to jump to see if you can get yes. back up? It's 30 feet. So jumping <laughs> is let me let me see here because I just looked this up. It's based on your strength modifier. Oh, whoa. Well, yeah, shit. and it gets <laughs> tripled. Yes. I'm going to recommend yeah. taking the soup stone out of your mouth before you try to jump, though. Yeah, just spit that right back out from the impact. <laughs> so you can reach up and grab 12 feet off the ground. That's 36 feet of jump that you have. That is just Jeez. enough to have six extra feet of clearance. <laughs> so here's what happens. Is that what you're going to do? I'm just going to spit the stone back out of my mouth. <laughs> and into your inventory. <laughs> I have oh, my backpack okay. on my front. So, so it's, it's, this it's, is extremely important. Do you hit the ground <laughs> first? Yes. Okay. No. So, yes. Oh, all right. It's important. You gotta let me know. I'm confused. <laughs> I already. Wait. I thought I already hit the ground. Well, that's what I'm trying to calculate. I got everything ready here. Is your I need to know your oh. intent. Is your intent to either save yourself first or you're going to hit the ground and then jump? Cuz you know you're going to take less damage. You know that. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm just going to I'm just going to jump. <laughs> All right. You don't want to hit the ground. Nope. Okay. Yeah. So you're going to jump off the wall. Your your vertical jump. It's, you just have this jump, so you can do this. Mhm. Mm uh, so as you're falling, you you push yourself up against the wall in whatever way that you can, and you get purchase and you leap off at a 45 Boing. degree angle into the wall next to you. <laughs> <laughs> and then you begin to fall again. God damn it. 
Oh we God. we throw a rope <laughs> holding the other end, me and Norheon. Okay. Does does it reach him? Uh, well, it's fifty feet long, so he's at a thirty feet dip, uh, pit. So yeah, it's it's coming for you, Norheon. You see you see them. I'm Norheon. Hildar, yes. you see them like scrambling <laughs> up above you. Uh, they're screaming. You're screaming. Fran's screaming. Uh, the rope comes rocketing past you as you reach the other side again, and you jump again at a 45 degree angle and hit the other side of the wall. But now there's a rope there. <laughs> Give me a dex save so you can grab it. Dex save. Omriani, are you screaming? I'm rolling my eyes. What? <laughs> she's, she's so cool. Yeah, so Should have cool. a cigarette. <laughs> hey, I, I did my part. I opened the door. You got a 10? Yeah. Yeah, you don't grab it. Uh, <laughs> you go to reach Damn for it and your hands just kind of like clasp around it and you start to fall again. <laughs> that, that sound, the goat, that's me. How long does <laughs> jump last? One minute. One minute. All right, it's only been like 20 seconds. Um... <laughs> no, no, we're not it's rolling for initiative. Who's attacking who here? For initiative. And thankfully it is not a concentration spell, so. Yep, as you uh, continue to jump off the wall and ricochet, <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, you hear a rumbling from below as the pit at the bottom gives way. Oh, oh, no. You are now an untold amount of length above the ground. Oh, I'm going to ask you for one more deck save to get this rope. I hope y'all are holding on to the other end. Oh yeah, Nor <laughs> Norheon yeah. and I are absolutely holding on. I imagine Fran is also joined in at this point. I, I mean, I'll, I'll help too. All right, there we go. I'll lower um, the DC since she's helping somehow. How are you okay. helping? We're we're all holding it. We're all holding it. Okay, that's that works for me. Uh, I got an eleven. That that'll do it. It was originally oh. a twelve, so their helping oh. <laughs> has lowered it enough that you're you you jump off the wall again. After seeing this hole appear beneath you, and you get a hold of the rope with one hand as you're hanging onto it and you're looking down into what looks to you like nothingness. God. You got to climb! Climbing. <laughs> Quickly. I, everyone starts pulling. Um, there's four people pulling on a rope. I'm not going to Heave ho! Heave ho! <laughs> yeah. Yodar, what is with you in holes? I'm surprised he didn't throw a rat at it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not too late. Not too late. Yep, so Hildar, they pull you up to the top of the uh, the doorway. <laughs> and then Frank kind of looks at you with a mean face like, What were you thinking? Uh, holes. You don't look before you leap. What's wrong with you? The The door was open. The door's not open. Boom! We had to, yeah, we no, had we had to open it ourselves. Did you lock us out? No. I don't know. Why didn't you just <laughs> open it with your mage hand? Uh, uh, good question. Why didn't you throw a rat to open the door? <laughs> <laughs> I look at, I look at North and go, oh, maybe. No. <laughs> friend uh, uh. kind of peers over the side and looks down and she's like what's what's down there I can't see down there no, 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 no. push dancing lights down there how far <laughs> does your dancing lights reach let's find out today under 20 all right so your dancing lights go down this uh, this pit right it's a circular pit it's been like bored straight down into this basement the basement is at the top floor, uh, or where you guys are, essentially. And um, it's unremarkable. There's um, some scattered uh, broken pottery and some rotted wood chairs, apparently. But uh, there's definitely a hole right in front of this door that leads straight down. And yeah, you can see the bottom of it. It's not 120 feet, but it's pretty freaking close. Mm -hmm. uh, your, your rope does not reach the bottom. But, could uh, we tie our ropes together? You could, absolutely. And hoist me down. Would you I like want to see do what's that? down there. And yes. Can we can we see what's down there? Uh, you see the floor? You're not quite sure what else is down there. It's white. Okay. The floor's white, if that's any consolation. 
Well, we already have half the rope down there. We might as well just tie off this end. Great. Who's tying? Not me. Whoever's got high dexterity. Um, I do. Great. Well, I have plus two. Yeah. Tie the rope. Give me a okay. dex roll and just add your flat modifier for dexterity. Now, here's the important part. No matter what you roll, your character is going to think you did a very good job. Okay. Mm. I rolled a an eight. All right. Um, no, yeah. So you like, did you, you add your plus two? Yes. Oh boy. She, okay. So she's like, you know what? I've tied plenty of shoes. This no problem. So she ties the rope to what are you tying it to up here? The door, I guess. Um, <laughs> I guess I need to look around and and find something to tie it to. You could, I guess, shape some earth into like a spire and then tie it around that. Yeah, sure. Hildar, uh, is there a stone wall here? Stone wall? I look around. It's just dirt. <laughs> Are all the walls dirt, DM? The basement walls are stone. Yeah. We we could consider uh, putting a pipe in, into the wall. To hold I the rope? Consider, I consider not to go down there again. <laughs> not for you, you silly. Okay, I've had it. And I pull out my pipes and give them to them. <laughs> All right. Uh, we want somebody to to hammer them in, yes? Uh, yes, I believe our Earth Genasi friend uh, volunteered. We hand her the pythons. <laughs> they give okay. her the pythons. They're like little railroad spikes with loops in them. Okay. They're like nodding at the python and nodding at the wall like eh? 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 eh. 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 Alright. to nail this into a stone wall so you can tie the rope to it. Okay. They taught you this is a so, monastery, right? I, uh, do I need to roll for that? You already did. You rolled an eight. <laughs> oh, okay. So it, it, I thought uh... this one would be a strength one. Um, if you want to make this a double jeopardy situation, I'm happy to do that. Double jeopardy. So, roll? Do you want to? Yeah, it's All right. fun. Give me a strength roll. Oh no. <laughs> Let's hear it. Two. All two. right. <laughs> uh, so she takes Do you have a modifier hammer and strength. Yes. And starts to smack the python into the stone, and she gets it in about two inches, and she's like, you know what? That's pretty good. And then she ties off a eight roll for rope tying and says, I'm doing a good job. I'm proud of myself. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm. I, I'll test the sturdiness, though. I'm not an idiot. Okay, go ahead. Okay. So I test the sturdiness of it. Feels pretty sturdy. Oh. Okay. You need to tie the ropes together. Mm hmm. Who's yeah, that? I'll tie the ropes all together. You tie them? All right, give me another dex roll for tying the ropes <laughs> together. No, no. Uh. I got a 18. Did you add your dex modifier? Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. You, you, you feel like you tied him pretty well. So right. I'm going to remind you before you get in this situation that you can use mold earth. Okay. Yep. Do you know what that's, the, the spell says? No. Let me copy for you the spell. I'm going to send it to you. Since you... Basically, Min doesn't have access to her own D&D sheet, um, like, on hand. Because right. she's using Trog's account. So I'm sending her the wording of the spell so she can read specifically what it does. Essentially allows you to uh, move Earth in many directions. Including out oh. of the wall. So yep. I can make a staircase out of dirt you could but only like cubic feet at a time yeah in case you need to in an emergency like if yeah you're falling. i'll i'll do that as a fail safe okay you know just you know just in case because we don't <laughs> intend case. for this to happen yeah all right so how how do you want to descend this uh rope of death 
Um, I want somebody to walk down the staircase and spot me. I mean, there's like no staircase currently. Do you want to put one oh. in the walls? Yes. Okay. She makes five feet of stairs and says, hey. Huh? Huh? Uh, I've got something for this. One second. I touch my robe. There's a patch that looks like a monkey on it. Okay. And all of a sudden, a monkey pops out from my robe. You don't have a monkey, do you? Spotter. Did I give you a monkey? I yeah. I gave you a baboon, yeah. didn't I? You get, no, you gave me the robe of useful items, which has a small monkey. Oh, that's awesome. All right, yeah. She so gives you a monkey. It's a little gray monkey with a, a beard. It's kind of weird looking. That, that's my spotter? That's yes, uh, that, that is your spotter. I mean, a monkey is very good at climbing. It's probably better than what we He looks at you do. and he goes, oh, 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 oh. All right. Um, you can just hear his elite climbing. Every word. Don't yes. you think you should go down with her? That's what the monkey is for to start, and we'll go from there. Fran looks at the monkey. She's like, are you, are you, are you sure? I mean, um, I really I mean, would have wanted really... y'all to go down with me. Fran volunteers. You I'll, I'll help gonna... you. You don't want Fran to go down, do you? Not Fran, Fran? Fran puts her hand up. I got, I got it. I got this. She goes down the stairs. So... Vivri kind of nudges him to follow her. I can it uh, okay, right, I'll go one one stare after her, but the monkey's going before either of the two of us. <laughs> Deal. Fran's like, give me the monkey. <laughs> you handle the monkey. There you go. Great. And she clicks it in her hands and goes, Alright, let's do this. And then walks down the stairs. Says, okay. Wait. I lean over to Hildar and whisper, I think we're good matchmakers. <laughs> Hildar's like, I, I don't think so make too. matches. No. <laughs> I don't make matches. I only drink alcohol. <laughs> so yeah, all right. So you're standing on the cusp of greatness as you prepare to descend this rope. What's this yes. look like? Huh? What does this look like? Explain it to us. Paint us um, I have picture. the rope tied around my waist. How does that work? I... Like the the very end of it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Like a mountain climber, right? Sure. Like you make a little like. Mm -hmm. We loop it around, yeah. Okay. Like around your <laughs> waistline, or like do you have it tied? Are you going to use tied. the loops on your pants? <laughs> okay, tied it is. <laughs> no, I like this. Keep going. Okay, um, so it's tied. Um, I'm standing on the edge, peering down, gathering my courage to descend yeah, she's into the abyss. So this is this. <clears throat> She has tied the end of a 100-foot rope around her waist and is preparing to descend. <laughs> Let's do this. All right. I step off. Mm. I, like, rappel, like, like mountain, like, uh, rock climbing. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you, kinda... you begin to rappel, and, uh... As you go past Fran, she puts her hands on the ropes, and she looks at you, and she goes... You can do this, and then the monkey starts climbing after you, downwards. Okay. I feel Great. a little more secure having them there. Great. Yeah, so you start going. Um, at about 60 feet, you can see the floor is getting closer to you. Are your dancing lights still down there, Norhan? Yes. So you see the floor is changing colors in front of you. <clears throat> um, the disco. Yeah, sort of. like Sort of like RGB that's like smooth fading in and out it's like mm -hmm. red blue green in that order um, it's beautiful yeah but like it's just a floor right you don't feel like this is a very big room that this hole opens into okay um and while you're thinking this is beautiful all of a sudden you feel weightless and you hear screams as fran and norhan make a Deck save to grab the rope that they're holding on to. Oh, Fran did pretty good. Thirteen. Okay, they did well enough. Yeah. Um. The the rope, the rope that you tied to the python and the python itself both come loose at the same time. As you begin to free fall, yes. but they grab the rope. Can I try to deck save to grab it? Yeah, sure. Let's have it. Oh, I don't grab it. Oh wait, maybe oh, no. I do. I got a twelve. You got a twelve. That's that's 
That'll do. That's just barely. You grab the very tip of it, Vivri. Like you're holding on to it and nothing else. Uh, they fall. Fyodor, grab me. Uh, okay. <laughs> grab on to it by the waist and just yep. heave back. Yeah, Amriani, <laughs> you, you feel this weightlessness and then you know instantly that you are falling. It's got uh, soup going in your mouth. I don't know. Oh, that's a brilliant idea. <laughs> I don't have one, do I? No, but he'll no, die. Ah! Oh, God. All right, Mei-Chen, take the stone. Bring it down to no, her. No, put it in your <laughs> mouth. No, your mouth. Oh. Oh. So we don't... <laughs> Into my mouth, I mean. And, and he becomes like a mountain unmovable. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually brilliant. I love that. <laughs> so you feel the rope go taut suddenly, Amriani, as you fall about six feet, and oh man, Ugh. your hands are hot Dirt. from the burn that you get from grabbing yourself. Ah, uh, ouch. You're okay. Though. No damage, just uncomfort. Yeah. Uncomfort. <laughs> uncomfort. Yes. Uncomfort. Unpossibility. <laughs> Where's Norion? Where is he? I, I don't know. I can't see over the side. Friends, like he's with me. We're okay. <laughs> I don't think. Uh... Where's the monkey? Oh, yeah, there's a monkey. <laughs> no one sees the monkey. <laughs> oh, no. The monkey is a wall. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, my God. Y'all saved me. <laughs> yes, yes, they did. Uh, Fran calls down to you. Are you okay? I'm okay. Can you lower Can you... me down further? Um, <laughs> slowly this time. Not slowly. really. You're so... going to have to climb down. Yeah, I think so. I yeah, might you know? be fine to let go now because I'm just the immovable stone. <laughs> I'm You've just got an anchor. about 15 feet between you and the floor when you reach the end of the rope. Okay, 15 feet. Yep. If only there was something that could bridge some of the gap between the floor and you. Cough, choke, cough. I move cough. the floor up to <laughs> meet me. She creates an earthen elevator that climbs along the side of the wall to her position. I step on it Ding. and let go of the rope. You, you let go of the rope that is thing. still tight around you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> ding! I love it. And then there's a monkey there in a bellhop's outfit, and he's like, burr, 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 burr. <laughs> oh, "I love that." I hear elevator music do, chiming do, throughout. Do, 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 um, do. Okay. Um. So you untie I yourself have... because you're still tied. Yes, I untie myself. And uh, you scooch down. Uh, and as you move down, your vision, your dark vision, and the lights dancing all around you, you are greeted with the sight of what appears to be some sort of catacombs. As there are uh, ceremoniously uh, wrapped, what you guess are corpses, you can't really tell, but there are cloths in cubbies all along the walls. The wall, it's not a very oh, big no. room that you're in. It's probably about 10 by 10 feet. There's probably about ten of these cloth-wrapped, what you would assume to be, corpses. Um, in the middle of the room is a big stone table with uh, several urns on them. Y'all, I think I found a catacomb down here. <laughs> do, do, you, do you think Hildar and I should come down? And I'm coiling up the rope as I say this. Yes. <laughs> I, I think you can take the stone out now, Gildar. He pulls the stone right, out, and where he was standing are indentations of his feet from where his <laughs> weight tripled. And then held the weight of all of you. Yep. That's a super useful magical item. I like that item. I made that up. Am I keeping it? <laughs> yeah, keep it. That's, yeah, as long as you don't lose it. Ruh, ruh. Put it back yeah, you gotta... Back. Okay, let's... Uh... You know what? I saw what she did with the mold dirt. I, I think I could do that too. Come on, let's go. Let's go. And I make a little earthen elevator that starts spiraling down with me and Yildar on it. Spiraling? I like that. Yep. We're I, just going. Do 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 do. I want to point out that I just there had were to show off. Dude. There was, <laughs> I want to point out that there were four of you 
suspending her from a rope, and Hildar wanted to give her the soup stone. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been a total party knockout. <laughs> okay, yeah, so she starts spiraling down. You guys are having a good old time. It's very dirty. You're getting your shoes very dirty, Hildar, as you guys go down this elevator. Um, eventually, you arrive at the bottom. Uh, Norhayan, uh, I almost asked myself as Fran. Fran, are you accompanying them? Yes, I am. Okay, great. Let's do this. Uh, yeah, I'll hop on the elevator. Yep. And, I uh, guess uh, I'll hold Fran by the waist to make sure she doesn't fly off. Fran coos, like, just barely. Like, just barely. Huh? Uh, you guys reach the bottom, and yeah, true enough, you're standing in a room of, of dead people, probably. We haven't looked yep. yet. And I do a history check to see if this reminds... Or no, actually an insight check to oh, see if this reminds me of when we went to the Lich King's party. Yeah, I mean, yeah, sure, why not? I got a dirty 20. Uh, so, Nibble Cogmaller was the name of our lich. He wasn't a king, but I like the moniker. Um, his place was kept up, right? It still had the appearance of undeath with a lot of the ghoulish delights. And uh, there were cobwebs for effect, but you got the sense that he kept his place up. This place is not kept up. This is definitely an old buried something. Do you, do you get the like, feel that there might be a lich here? You don't think so. There wouldn't be a lot of corpses just laying around. I'd like to make a history check on if this is similar to the uh, the cave that we spent a lot of time in where there was the ritual sacrifice chamber. Okay, shame. sure, yeah. <laughs> Give me a roll over that. Also a dirty 20. Uh, <laughs> this is not a cave. This is literal stonework, so no, it's not the same. I think he meant to call out specifically the altar. Yeah, the uh, like the altar uh, and the corpses. So the altar that the female dwarf was on was uh, was carved out of the rock that was in the cave. This is a table that is that was placed here. So no, you don't get the same okay. vibe. It's not that. Can high I up in the ground. What's up? Can I investigate the urns on the table? Sure. Let's have a look. You want to approach the urns? Yeah. All right, you open them up. Uh, inside. Whoa! The urns, I didn't say open them. I said investigate. Investigate? Great. What do you want to look at? <laughs> you want to sniff dead bodies? <laughs> All right. Like, okay. okay, we can open them. Sorry. These are large urns. They're probably about two feet tall and about eight inches wide. Do they have different colors? They are yellow with brown uh, stripes painted through the centers of them. So they all look identical? They all look identically painted. Okay. So I just rolled a history check to see if I know what urns are, and I got a one, so I don't. Oh, you no. You think this is more magical alchemist jugs. You're excited. Yeah. Oh, are there, are there liquids inside? Uh... Usually, no. Usually, more like articles. Articles? So, like a, a food version? Um, that'd be cannibalistic for most people, but I don't know. I mean, I don't think these are dead Eladrin, so probably not cannibalistic for you. What? What do? You, what do you mean? This is this is just like my my cafe. Uh, no, nah, you know. When I burn trees and they turn to ash. Yes. So when some creatures die, they would prefer to be turned to ash. And then they put them in jars like these. She looks horrified. Why would you do that? Because you don't have enough room to bury them and or there's a strong risk of them coming back as undead. But they're ash. They should go back to the earth, to the to the cycle. They want to not? I, I don't know. It's a good question, honestly. Fran's kind of she looking just looks around. so confused. Yeah, an abject horror. Mm -hmm. 
I'm going to do a religion check on the uh, urns to see if I can identify if there's like a religion that these are associated with for the markings, like the tiger markings you mentioned. All right, let's have a roll. A dirty 20 again. Okay. It does not ring any bells. This just seems to be a painted urn. There's there's three of them here. Uh, one of them is shorter than the others by about uh, um, 10 inches or so, almost half. <laughs> Yeah, now, the yeah. paintings on these urns aren't consistent with any religion I'm aware of. So these might just be painted urns that have nothing to do with religion. Yolar, what are you up to, man? No. <laughs> I was going to say, Drug sounds like he's like, get out of the damn hole. No, it's Ow. fine. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's hilarious. Um, Y'all are like, hmm, object, avoid hmm. or investigate. I was gonna. I'm gonna go search the bodies. Mm. Cool. <laughs> Tell me what that looks like. I'm just gonna walk over to one of the bodies and start. Like everyone's searching scratching their, their chin, staring at these urns. Hildar just kind of walks over to the corner of the room and starts <laughs> pulling up the cloth. Yep. Uh, yeah. So you reach under and you, you tug away at this cloth, which falls apart in your hands, and uh, you definitely see bones underneath. Hmm. I search the bones now. <laughs> search the bones. You find more bones. You're like, how is this possible? Do y'all smell something? Uh, I don't know. Do I? Insight? Is that what I'm looking? Or perception? I don't know. Is there a smell that I'm unaware of? Decay. I mean, if it's like bones, it's decaying, yeah. I like mean, it's gross. what's Smelling. the statue of limitate? Okay. Um, you do not <laughs> detect the smell of rot. How about that? Okay. You smell no, dust. Nothing here. It gets in your nose. You sneeze. Can I and <laughs> can I uh, investigate inside where the altar is to see if there's like a light source in there? So it's just a table in the middle of the room, and then oh. a bunch of uh, <laughs> cubbies with a stu- uh, probably corpses in them. How high? But how high up do they go? Because like we had to go. We went in the hole, and then we walked down a little hallway, and then there's the room with the table, or is it just sitting down there? You didn't go in. You literally dropped in from the ceiling of this room, from the hole in the ceiling. Just casually? Yeah. I, I don't <laughs> see a spot for, for torches or anything. How yes, there the are world? no sconces of any kind, no light sources of any kind. Like, there's no light. So not even he's light. dancing light. Yeah. Do, do, you, do you think that it was the same blue light from the, the, the mister whose name I won't say in case he has some sort of magic he can hear it. While you guys deliver <laughs> it, Fran pulls the top off of one of the urns and looks inside. Nobody cares? Inside, okay, Fran. Inside. There we go. <laughs> Fran, she peeks aside and she looks up. She goes, she looks inside of it again looks back up. And she says, I can't see in here. I'll send a dancing light over. <laughs> you send a dancing light over and she goes, thank you. And looks inside. She says, it's a bunch of heads. Like, oh. like shrunken what? heads. Like, look uh... at this. And she reaches in and pulls one out. And yeah, it's a shriveled up, hideous looking shrunken head. Wow. Mm. I'm gonna do an arcana check on that. Okay. I also am gonna do a religion check. Okay. <laughs> Let's have some rolls. I have a twenty-one. Great. Twenty-two on the arcana. Damn. Uh, no magic. It's a head. And uh, with a religion check, you've heard of shamanistic uh, tribes that would do shrunken head type things like this, usually of the enemies to uh, you know, dissuade them from attacking further. But um, that's something this old is unheard of. Are there more heads in the other two? I'll have to question. open them up and find yeah. out. Let me, I'm going to open the next one. It's full of this fingers. I'll set a dancing light there. This Wait. is very strange. I, some some shaman practices have been known to, to shrink heads, but this place looks very old even There's... even by a ladran standards yeah shamanistic and, and... tribes don't usually use stonework mm. and, uh, and 
Jump tribes aren't aren't big on on stone. This this is odd. It is, and there's no side of magic on the sharken heads either. Which I was thinking possibly something with the kermitsy, but it's nothing that I can tell. But how did they shrink it? It's a good question. What if they Kildar and says can't you use poison to, or some other kind of liquids to, to dehydrate a head? Or meat of any kind? You. Isn't that how you make jerky? <laughs> I look at it with a like question face. Like, what? Yeah, do you eat <laughs> heads? It's a simple no. question. I don't eat heads. Okay. I'm a civil, a, a civil dwarf. <laughs> uh, you're saying you don't eat head, Yelder? No. Oh. God damn it. Face palm. Phrasing. I take the oh. second urn, the one in the middle, yeah. and open it. It's full of fingers. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> Just well, you could points. say they got their hand caught in the jar. Friend gives yeah. you, a, yes, you a long stare. <laughs> I thought it was a good joke. Fran instantly agrees with me. We've Noriana. been trying to get you about the boat's extended Absolutely. warranty. <laughs> um, extended warranty. I guess we'll let's check the third too. <laughs> okay, I, I realize I haven't told you guys that there's a door in the room. I'm sorry, but yes, yeah. check the third too. Oh. Well, I didn't well. the wall, so I just thought we were stuck here forever now. Yeah, oh. y'all are stuck. Goodbye. Like the okay. there's a cave in above you, and that's the end of your story. <laughs> you each other to survive. Starting with the fingers. Okay, no, I'm sorry, I went too far. I didn't take that uh, damage, did I? By the way. No, I, um... no, no. You decided yeah. not to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. I Let gave you the option. You would have punched <laughs> right through this floor, and that would have been a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> like a mi bloody missile. Yeah. <laughs> like a bunker buster. You would have exploded this whole <laughs> catacomb. Um. <laughs> Well, I'm you ought to come down here and been like, there's just bones everywhere. I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm going I... to get to the door. <laughs> All right, wait. One thing at a time. Who's up? I was going to go over to the door and investigate if it was locked. Uh, so this is a, a white painted wooden door with uh, metal bars for a window. A small window, probably about the size of your hand. Is it locked? Think... There's no handle. Do you think we could put a, one of your little uh, fairy bowls through the, the bars? As what, one of those little talking. fairy holes, you said? Fairy, fairy <laughs> bowls. Oh, uh, like a, a window? They're, they're bars. They're open. You could take one of your little fairy bowls and go through it. As, a, as they're talking, I do the face thing again. I face for you. Know, the... <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm like gesturing towards one of his dancing lights, and I just keep calling oh, them a no. fairy ball. Yes, okay, the lights. Yeah, here is the light through the hole. There yeah, you well, go. Give me a stealth roll. I start talking. Yep. Do it. <laughs> I'm Rihanna, do you it. watch as this dwarf just phases through the door again. I got oh my god, he didn't learn. You got a 10? 10? Yep. Had a better Did way to handle this guy. Oh, roll with advantage. Uh, do it again. I did not I do better. Ball. 10 is the better. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> well, that Hildar happens, I'm going to open the third jar and see what's inside. Y'all see Hildar, like, crouch down, like, surfer style, like he's trying to keep his balance and just walk through the door. <laughs> <laughs> Hildar, well, uh, I, I now understand how he got through the other door. <laughs> Hildar, before you stands a hallway that uh, dips to the right of you, uh, just a few feet ahead. Yep. The door has no handle on this side either. <laughs> is it even hinged or is it just like a wall? <laughs> uh, you can't tell. Um, it is flush with the wall. You would assume there's a hinge, otherwise it would just be a gate. Hmm. Um, I'm gonna use Maychan and push it against it, see if it moves. It does not move. Solid. Okay. 
Okay. Elder, don't, don't worry about that. I can get us through the, the doorway. Uh, if you want to scout ahead, go feel free. I'm going to take a look at this third urn and see what's in there. We've got like shrunken heads, fingers. What what more could there be? I mean, we could try to. <laughs> it's already through the hole. Yeah, uh, for only 120 feet. Yep. yep. Oh, oh, yeah. Uh, done. Uh, done. Uh, done. Da, dun, da, da, dun. All right, Hilda, Not as you uh, go and turn the corner. Are you going to turn the corner without stealthing? He stealth. stealth. He rolled a 10. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm going to peek around the corner. Be-be. You go around the corner, and you can see that it empties into a, a much larger chamber. Um, <laughs> this one has big stone columns as supports that go from the ceiling to the floor. This is probably three times the size of the chamber you just left, so about 30 by 60 feet. It's very big down here. There Jeez. are uh, stone... Um, tombs, uh, which are caskets made of stone. Uh, Six of them that uh, mirror each other uh, straight into the chamber from where you're standing. Uh, Against the walls, lots more skeletal uh, remains. Assumably, we haven't really investigated more than one. Uh, There are braziers. Uh, There's one at the far end of the room and one pretty close to where you're standing. Right in front of you. I'm going Excuse to me? use Brazier's. Yes, Brazier's. I just thought made okay. up. Uh, I did a trollism. Pres- I'm sorry. <laughs> trollism. Um, how Brazier. far is the closest one? About ten feet. It's not very far. Oh, you're, you're like right there. Easy. I mean, there's right. nothing in it. Just... It's just it's empty. Ah, oh, nothing to light. Damn. You can find <laughs> some stuff. Plenty of uh, plenty of bone. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just going to use Mage Hand, dig up some bones, cup it into the room. All right. So, <laughs> Hildar starts grave robbing. You guys are opening up this third urn. Let's have a look and see what's inside of it. Mm. I open the urn. There's black powder in there. Black powder? Like a fine black powder. Yeah, this might be what we actually expect to find in an urn. Ash. Is it? Yeah, oh, let's investigate. All right, give me a roll. Yep. Min, do you want to try your investigation on it? You should. Sure. I investigate the black powder. Great. Give me a roll for it. Investigation. Use your modifier. Uh, d- d- uh, 16. Okay, 16. Mm-hmm. Uh, the smell of sulfur comes from the urn, and you, you pick up on it pretty quick. Oh. Oh, this smells like sulfur. This doesn't smell like ash. Could it be gunpowder? Maybe. Yes. There are cannons. I don't know that there's guns. I haven't decided. Eh, probably. I'm sure six of one half dozen of another. Yeah, sure. Gunpowder. We could call it explosive powder if it makes it feel better. Yeah, I can matter. Black powder, whatever. Y'all, if we ignite this at the door, could we blast it down? I don't I know if we it. need that to blast down the door. You can certainly we, try. We don't. Yeah, that, that might be a little bit big of an explosion, even by uh, even by my taste. Oh. But I do have a window to get us through the door. I'm gonna walk up to the door, tap my robe, and pull out a three foot by three foot window. And I'm gonna place it on the door. A window appears on the door with nice purple oh. lace curtains. <laughs> <laughs> you may all now step through. What? Well, you'll have to open. Amriani is thinking, "Who are these people? Why do they have <laughs> yeah. so much stuff?" Yeah. I've been generous with the magical items. Oh yes, very much so. Um, now we're actually starting to use them in fun and interesting ways. I'm loving it. Mission failed. We'll get them next time. You might want to put the. Uh, the... I want, to on take that black the, powder. I want to take the powder with me. Sure. And pocket it for later. How do you did want you, to take it with you? Did you put the, the lid back? But that, oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it just starts spilling out of the yeah. game. As you walk, yeah. you leave a trail of gunpowder. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yeah, so I'll put the lid back on and put it in my back. Yeah, so this is the smaller one. It's still rather sizable. Like, you can carry it but it's cumbersome. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah, yeah so you guys can step through this window. Uh, as you approach it, Fran lifts it up with both her hands and goes after you. I, I'll, I'll go first. Like, step through. Yep. You guys step through. Um, let's just say everyone gets through. Uh, as you turn the corner, you see Hildar has stuffed probably about four <laughs> skeletons worth of people into <laughs> this brazier. What is he doing? Precipitate on it. Light. And he sets it ablaze and a whole <laughs> bunch of bones just ignite. <laughs> Do we need to make dex saving throws? No. I but regret taking the gunpowder with It's me. suddenly warmer in the room. <laughs> and brighter. Now uh, we can see and, it. Uh, more full of corpse desecration. Yeah, so you guys can see now what I described to him earlier. It's a big room, uh, two columns. Uh, I'm sorry, filled with columns and uh, six um, tombs mirroring each other, uh, leading forward to the end of the room. Other than the torch, what have you found, Yalder? A torch. Does this remind me of any of those doors that I saw in my dream? Um, just remind me of the door you saw in your dream again. I had well, I saw, I saw several doors, like, through these hallways, right? These tunnel, catacomb, tile hallways that it was just, like, stone tunnels and then oh, doors and one. doors. The one and the then it opened. Yes. No. What the, why why would Can this I... be under here? It's a good question. What's up? You can Rianne? do whatever. I'm Riani. What's up? Oh, I was going to say, you, you said there were like a bunch of pillars. Can I do a religion check to see if there's anything tied to my monastery? To the monastery? Sure. Give me a check. Uh, 12. Walking into this chamber, you you kind of had a weird feeling, but the more you came in and the more you looked around, you're, you're having a visceral gut reaction to what you're looking at. This is extremely similar to your monastery. Uh oh. Y'all, this reminds me a lot of the monastery. All these pillars are standing out. We have stuff like that back home. Which is what strange because your monastery is in the mountains. <laughs> yeah, that's that's weird. What would it be doing underground? But, but what is this room used for? Yeah, but what is it used for in your monastery? Um, uh, Fran kind of speaks up. She goes, I mean, people are literally buried here. I don't understand the confusion. No, this um, room. Right. Is this, a, is this a prayer room? Is, is this where they hold their farewells? Probably. Amriani? Yes. Do you guys have, like, burial ceremonies in a big stone room? We do. Well, okay. Well, there you go. That's I not on her. Yes. And do you walk through that room regularly at the monastery? No, but I know about it. I do imagine that people have died since she's been there. She kind of uh, no. kind of shakes her head around and says, I guess that's a good place to have a wake. I mean, yes, uh, in my faith, a room like this would be for worship. Maybe it can be both. That would be um, necromancy. Are there any, like, if we if we hold funerals at the monastery, um, is there anything, like, incan like, not incantation, but, like, chant or prayer? So, like, there's, a like, a monk mantra. Um, okay. But you get the impression it's not something that uh, it, it's like your general mantra. Yeah, it's it's, it's whenever okay. you talk to another monk about anything and they talk about prayer, it's it's the same mantra. Okay. It's nothing special that you can think of. How do you check all 
the uh, the tombs yet, Gelder? No. Alright, I guess we can check the remaining tombs and see if there's anything interesting in them. Unless someone has a better idea. Okay, I can hear now. <laughs> We're checking the tombs. Uh, yeah, unless anyone else has a better idea. Alright, so these have been undisturbed. Uh, there are six of them. There's three on one side and three on the other side. It seems this room is very dad. symmetrical. Your dad. And it points towards the, uh, like the, that are, that are at, you know what? I've got paint open. How about I just do a thing? That would be great. So I'm having trouble visualizing this particular yeah. one. So let's see, you guys came in through here. You did this number. And now you're doing this number. And there's... This is not symmetrical, but you'll get the idea. And there's a brassiere, and a brassiere, and columns. Y'all are here. Pink. Yellow. Whatever this color is. Bluish. And red fran. Make sense? And this is lit. I think so. Wait, so... Oh, that's the one that cross-lit? Yep. And you throw a bunch of skeletons into it and set them on fire. Okay. I'll uh, go ahead and just precipitate to light the other torch to the other side. It's empty. You're going to set oh, the metal uh, on then... fire? No, that's okay. I'll walk over to it and start thinking about what I can do to get it lit without having to light corpses on fire. They're all covered with, like, cloth and stuff. There we go. I'll uh, grab some cloth and throw it in there, and then... Uh... Well, you, you don't need to do that. I'm going to go ahead and I am going to wild shape into my starry archer form. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to light everything up with my own fucking body. All right. How far do you glow with this body of yours? 10 foot radius for bright light and an additional 10 feet from there. Okay, so yeah, she can illuminate about half the room just by standing there. Hey, hey, well, that is you. very nice and whatnot. Uh, my thought was to maybe see if lighting the braziers would cause something to happen. Don't you think you should check and make sure there's no traps before you do that? Good idea. Kjeldar, have you seen any traps? Yildar is having a moment. <laughs> Yildar has a rat in his eye. He oh, does. No. The rat is taking its revenge. It is finally tired of being yeeted into the abyss. It's biting and his is eyeball juice. It's slowly worming its way into his brain. It's gonna ratatouille his body from the inside. I am in control <laughs> now. <laughs> Let's or... put you in the hat. <laughs> Uh, Amriani, would you like to look for traps? Sure, I'll look for traps. Great, give me an investigation roll. I rolled... An eight. Uh, so you look around, um, being as this is pretty familiar to you. It's not an exact copy, but you get the idea. <laughs> Ooh. Excuse me. You get the idea of what they were going for, because it's pretty similar to your monastery. And so you know that in your monastery, there are curtains that are supposed to rise and fall. And so you're looking around the room for levers and pulleys uh, that would uh, achieve this goal. Um, and you, you do see on the ground what appears to be extremely old rotted wood and what you can only assume to be pieces of dust that were once rope. Um, mm. And on the other side is a perfectly fully constructed uh, pulley with a rope that goes into the ceiling. 
Hmm. They are mirrored of each other. So what are the curtains used for exactly? So in the monastery, it's just decorative. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's usually a banner or there'll be like so a I... stitch for the person who perished or whatever. I head over to the full rope. Yep. And I give it a Nicole, tug. Nicole, thank you for the follow. You probably can't hear me say that until after that song is done. <laughs> well, Nicole, thanks uh -huh. for the follow. Welcome to the stream. We're uh, navigating a catacomb. I'm trying not to die. Unless my cat attacks me. So I tug on the rope. Okay, give me a second. I can hear you. <laughs> okay, no way. worries. Great. So you guys are watching as Amriani approaches this uh, completely intact pulley system with a rope attached to it. And you're going to tug on it? Yep. Everyone give me a deck save. Oh, oh no. Boy. <clears throat> Nat 20. Nice. Five. I got a 21. I'm guessing Hildar is AFK. I'm going to roll in his stead. Oh, there he you is. You can get a 5 too. Beep beep. Hildar. Oh. I need a deck save from you, sir. What? What the hell happened? Somebody has done a thing. <laughs> Well, yeah, we I'm were going to have you check for traps, but you left and didn't tell us you were leaving. No, because I was So I just decided out. to, to activate them. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> I had to rush downstairs because my dad was pulling a light and it started falling. Oh, oh gosh. You're good. You're oh, good. No. Yep. I was just right. giving you a hard time. <laughs> All right. Uh, deck save. Yeah. Burp, 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 burp. There's a little what? A little... 15. Cool. Let's have those numbers. 15. Who else got what? Uh, I got I 21. only got a 5. I got fucked. 21, I 5, 20. and a net 20. Alright, so this is what happens. You pull on this pulley, right? As everyone's watching you, kind of like, what is she? What is that? Why? And then she tugs on it. And when she does that, there's a force pulse that seems to emanate from the center of the room that uh, knocks you down, Beavery. And everyone else oh, no. are, everyone else is pushed, but not knocked prone or backwards. Uh, oh, what yeah, the? That's what you feel. I fall down. It uh, <laughs> extinguishes the skeletal pyre that has been burning. No, you and I relight it. <laughs> oh, you don't know. I I'm where I'm in my starry form to help make light, so we're not in like darkness. But it's a uh, ten feet of bright light and then an additional ten feet of dim light, so we can see about half the room without the brassiers. Oh. And I oh, saw my so dancing lights up too, which uh, they go for and put radius of a uh, nice. I don't think like it says bright light, it just says light pretty much, but uh, but yeah, the mm -hmm. cover in the room, too. Great, yeah. So everyone kind of like staggers. Um, Fran, who oh, I didn't make a roll for, hang on, I have to do a Fran roll. I keep forgetting she's here. Okay, Poor yeah, Fran. Fran braces her boots against the uh, pillar she's standing next to and takes the force and looks around to make sure everyone's okay. What about Sir Nanners? There's no monkey. <laughs> Monkey's a wall. What? He's a wall. <laughs> I want Sir Nanners back. I'm okay. I mean, we'll find him. He probably. ran away. He ran away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, you guys feel this force pulse. And uh, you all brace yourselves. And the brazier gets reignited. And we're standing in light again. What you pull? Fran looks over to Amriani. What did you do? What was that? Uh, 
I didn't know what would happen. Well, then why'd you do well, it? I have well, to agree with that here. I just assumed that if this was related to my monastery, that they had nothing bad there, so... Friends, like, that's you pertinent information. You know what they say about assume, right? It makes a Don Quixote out of you and me. Oh, boy. Mm-hmm. Fevery gets up to her feet, dusting herself off. Oh, uh, Hildar, do, do you think you could take a look and, and make sure there's no more surprises? I'm, I'm not sure my ribs could take another hit like that. Okay. I'm gonna have a look around. <laughs> Investigate for any more tripwire, traps, pressure plates, all that stuff. Uh, so yeah, so you do a quick sweep. Uh, you know, you, you put your hands in your pocket, you pull out a bag of flour, and you start like blowing dusting it around and see if anything kicks up and uh yeah you feel pretty confident that whatever was trapped here probably isn't anymore or you know with age maybe things just kind of fell apart the only thing that stands out to you is the pulley with the completely intact rope well that's it it's only just that pulley and that rope i think for now can we investigate what fell if, uh, like, do you assume something fell? What knocked me over? A force so, of pulse, just like an energy pulse, just boof. Uh, uh, see, I, can, I thought it was a physical object. Yeah, I can do an arcana check though, and like, try and get more information on that if that sounds cool. You sure could. Let's do it. It's a 10. Uh, well, <laughs> it's definitely magical in nature. Um, you don't feel like this was caused by anything physical. Mm. I do another yes. religion check. Well, see, so with repeated rolls like that, unless something has changed significantly before you did an ah, original okay. roll before, another one isn't going to give you any more information. Because when you roll gotcha. for stuff like that, like you try, like for personal knowledge, whatever you roll is your personal mm -hmm. knowledge so if you're going to roll again it's you has got to be within reason right so gotcha. like so like in theory if she wanted to know if monks often would be trapped to their temple with some arcana would that be a, a good reason yeah that would be a good reason if you wanted to use well yeah that's what i was thinking if is you're gonna like, is this... well, here's my reasoning for that if you're going to try to investigate the arcana itself or the reason for the arcana to be here that would be an arcana role oh well then i will do that okay let's do that mm -hmm. while she does that i'm gonna look at hildar and say do, do you think you might be able to to climb that rope and see what it goes to i look at the rope i look at myself i look at the rope yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Alternatively, if you find certain matters, you might do it instead. I got an eight. You got an eight? Um, uh, this doesn't make sense to you. You don't really use magic. So okay. it's not a very high roll. I will give you information, which I just did. Um, had you rolled higher, you probably would have got more information, more quality information, et cetera, et cetera. That's how that works. And okay. you can choose to share that information. So if you don't, if you don't convey it to us, we don't know what you know. Right. Uh, so you can choose to tell us that, or you can um, keep it to yourself. That's why gotcha. we made the distinction, like when when people are walking together and talking together. That's why I asked them, "Are you doing this in a way that someone can't hear you?" Because otherwise, that's metagaming, right? Like if I say it out loud to all of you, but it's only meant for you to know then it, the others can't know that. Hmm, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I'll say to the others, I don't understand. Um, we don't use anything that I'm aware of like this in the monastery back home. I don't like this. That's, I, I don't I like mean, this. I mean, I suppose I like that's this. not, not like this. completely strange. Uh, this, this does look pretty old. Maybe it's an old practice. And there is some rope that's uh, decayed and a couple of things like that that suggest there may have been more traps here, so it might just be part of the protection mechanism. Um, whatchamacall? 
I'm going to try and right. get off that, that rope. All right. <laughs> Tell us about it. I'm going to grab the rope, start climbing. <laughs> Strength check or dexterity? Uh, well, as soon as you pull on the rope, everyone make a dex save. Oh, God damn it. I wrote 16. 22. Damn, man. <laughs> 18. 18. I'm We're already. <laughs> I'm an Earth Genazi. I'm stable on my feet. Yeah. Everyone oh, except for Fran this time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Everyone um, kind of anticipating something going screwy. Watches Hildard jumps up on this rope. Fran seems to be interested in the tomb for some reason. Same pulse wave happens. Uh, knocks Fran on her behind. And everyone else, you brace for it, and you're able to stand up. No problem. I'll go off her hand to Fran. Cool. As you do that, you begin to hear the distinct sound of stone sliding on stone. Oh. I don't like that. I look at the graves or the um, the thing things that were grave like to see if that's where the stone sliding on Slota is coming. They are absolutely opening up all six of them oh no oh. i'm gonna uh, grab fran's hand pull her up and bring her like away from the grave As whatever direction we're currently up, in she leaps into your arms <laughs> and then i uh just you know like star wars style have a rope come out of nowhere we like swing away to safety <laughs> <laughs> i escaped somehow let's go <laughs> There's stormtroopers shooting, but they can't hit anything. The uh, the tombs begin to slowly slide open. Uh, I've never to... seen anything like this, so I stumble backwards in shock and fear. Yep. I'm going to turn to look at the stone slide. Oh, no. Yep. Everyone. So, all right. Give me, give me some positioning. Where is everyone? Um. In group together. Did you spread? Well, we know Hildar is by the rope. Yep, Hildar's over here. And you said that Norheon and Fran were next to one of the graves, so yeah. I'm not sure where they jumped back to. Right around the center. I'm imagining that I'm somewhere around the center as well. Okay. I feel like I'm probably by the rope too, since I pulled it the first time. All right, I'll put you here. <laughs> oh, so that's where you pulled. I thought it was a tripwire. No, so it's I a enough rope. information. Yeah, no, it was, the, it was the rope. <laughs> no one warned me. I just went, yeah, let's try it again. I was waiting for it. <laughs> I was hoping someone would try it again. Specifically, we didn't try the lever again. We tried to see if you could climb it. Slightly different. Still both pulls the rope down. I'll put the three yeah. of you there. And y'all one is going... a tug and one is just a pull. So these uh, tombs imagine. are pretty high off the ground, right? They're about six or seven feet off the ground. Um, and the very mm -hmm. tops of them are sliding off. Um, mm -hmm. Everyone kind of just stands there in anticipation, waiting as the uh, the tops slide off and fall to the side with a very loud uh, crunch Dunk. as they hit the floors on either side of them. Mm -hmm. And everyone's standing there. It's time to roll uh, for I, I, I don't think we could get back out the store. I'm going to prepare myself to fight. All right. Anyone want Same. to do anything? Great. I'm going to actually... Is there a place where I can kind of hide myself? You can hide behind a pillar. Okay, I'm going to I'm gonna hide behind a pillar to see if whatever comes out, I might be able to sneak up on it. Okay. I'm assuming Fran and I are too far away from a pillar to do the same thing. Uh, You could run if you want. Do you want to do that? Friend, let's get behind a pillar. She says yes, and she runs off to a pillar. Coward. I can follow her to the same pillar. Okay, mm -hmm. put y'all over here then. Did you mean just say coward? <laughs> she did. Was that like actually said? Because I have a response if it's like actually said, but if it's just, you know, between. Yeah, it was yeah. actually said. I have to step out from behind the pillar now. Excuse me. <laughs> You run and hide, coward. You're gonna send message. <laughs> <laughs> send message would be 
salvation at this point. I'm gonna firebolt at her feet. What? <laughs> I have gunpowder. Oh no! Yep. Don't care. Don't do that. You have insulted a duke. <laughs> Jesus. See, you got into. Oh, none of that firepower is, is uh, leaking right now. Oh my God. Okay. So this is what happens. You guys hide behind your pillars. The two of you stand there, dumbfounded, staring at the the tombs. And out of the center of the two tombs in the middle stand slightly larger than average uh, skeletal men. Uh-oh. So I can do a opportunity attack now, right? How? Well, they're standing there, so they can't see me, right? So I can attack if I choose to before the, the initiatives roll. So that's not opportunity. That's called uh, surprise. Opportunity involves movement. If they were to run past you, that would be opportunity. Okay. So you want to do a surprise before before I finish my sentence? You want to do a surprise attack? No, I want to. I want to know if I can. You can, yeah. A surprise attack okay. is available for anyone they have not seen yet. Okay. And I'm, I'm, I'm plotting my next move. Okay. I will also okay. plot on the surprise side. All right. Anyone else want to do some plotting? <laughs> Plot. I explode. Okay. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just checking. You guys have. Wait. What is plot? Sorry. What? I'm, no. Mm -hmm. it just they're they're comically deciding to not do a surprise attack in the in the chance well, you haven't finished your sentence and if it's still a surprise attack if they haven't seen us so, we're hiding so behind the pillars yep you got okay. it all right so. i'm staring it straight on ready to face whatever happens right. so here's what happens then the two skeletal guys stand up uh they're unarmed they're wearing very ratty clothing uh, and leather armor as they begin to scan the room and their eyes fall on the two of you over by the rope and they let out a roar that doesn't make a lot of sense to you because they don't seem to have any kind of vestigial organs at all roll for initiative <laughs> Alright, All right. so now I can do an opportunity attack, right? After we roll for initiative, yes, you will go first uh, do I add what do, do I add anything to this? You add your initiative. So if you score. look on if you look on your chart next to your armor class, that's your initiative one. Okay, uh, seventeen. Okay. Um, I got an eight. Three seventeen. <laughs> yeah, I got three seventeen somehow. Three yeah. seventeen. Sorry. So who wants so to I go guess... first? I'll go first. Um, I'll go second. I'll go third, and then I'm eight. So what does Fran have? Uh, let me get y'all's first. It'd just be easier for me to track it. I've run out of paper. All right, one more time. Let me have this. I'm sorry. I have an eight. And then there are three seventeens, which we decided was Hjalder, Norheon, and Abriani. for initiative. So I had a thing going in my ear. <laughs> One more time. Who are the 17s order? Sure. Yep. Kyoldar. Yep. Kyoldar. Norheon. Armriani. Three. And then me. All right. So we'll roll. This is. Initiative. What a time to forget Don Quixote. Poor friend. We didn't forget him. He couldn't get down the stairs, unfortunately. I He's mean, also ferrying people to safety. You could have pushed him. It would have been cool. Hi, Hazel. Hi, Hazel. <laughs> Hey. Uh, so actually, you're going to go. You're going to go fifth. Fran's going to go fourth. You're going last. Um, oh, I forgot to roll for the big guys. Dur -dur 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 -dur. What? Hey. Hmm. You okay? That's not good. That's oh, that's no. great. Alright, so what's the order? The order is... 
all out of whack because I forgot to roll for these guys and they rolled really high. One of them did. So let me just do this. Wait, before I do that. I really should have just written this down. One was a 20 and one was a 4. Yeah, he's first. Uh, Fran's gonna go before the last guy, so he's gonna... He's gonna be 7. Do, 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 do. It's actually pretty good music. Oop, not that. I said no. I said not that. Um... Makes you to. My god, this is gonna annoy me. Makes you three. Four. Friend fifth. Okay. So the order is in the initiative. Couldn't count. Couldn't count for a second. My bad. <clears throat> Order is the initiative. We'll call this one. We'll call this guy two. The guy one's going first. Then Hildar. Then Norion. Then Amriani. Then Vivri. Then big guy two. So they're going to get back to back turns. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, but before that, well, if you guys decide to, uh, if you guys decide to attack, you'll get advantage when your hit rolls. Yep, I am deciding to. Uh, I'm also deciding to. And first up, then, is, uh... Yeah, let's just give it to you in that order. Let's just go, Vera, you're up. You'll get, you'll I'm gonna cast Moonbeam. Okay, let's have it. Alright, so it is a constitution saving throw of 13. Okay. A silvery beam of pale light is gonna shine down in a 5-foot radius at 40-foot high cylinder. Uh, until the spell ends, light, dim light fills this cylinder. When the creature enters the spell's area for the first time on a turn or the start of its turn there, it is engulfed in ghostly flames that cause searing pain and it must make a constitution saving throw. It takes 2d10 radiant damage on a failed save or half as much damage on a successful one. Shapeshifters or shape changers make the saving throw with disadvantage. If it fails, it must instantly revert to the original form, and it cannot revert to that form until it leaves the spell's light. Okay. On each of your turns after this spell is cast, you can use the action to move the beam 60 feet in any direction. That's a great spell. Wow. All right, so a lot. tell me from the top what's happening. Concept. I am... It, it is a uh, vocal somatic with a material. Um, so I am going to pull out one of my uh, discs, one of my glass discs. I've never used this one before. So recognizing that these look undead, just like with our dear friend, um, Nibble, I'm going to decide to start casting uh, Moonbeam. And with this, the language of the celestials is going to fill the air which sounds like something that you aren't meant to hear it's not unpleasant but it just sounds as if it wasn't meant for you and then um there's going to be several starry constellations that appear as i move my hands in a fluid movement and a silver beam of moonlight is going to drop down directly on top of these uh these men Okay. So what's he got to do? He's got to make a constitution saving throw of 13. All right. TC 13. Here we go. Uh, he rolled a 15. That's a pass. Yep. So he saves. I rolled uh, two D10s. Um, okay. So I have 12. So he takes half damage. They both take technically half damage if they're both within the cube. It's a five foot radius. So I'm not sure if that would hit both of them or not. Not quite. Not the way I have the room set up. They're about 10 feet apart. Okay, so let me have to do a quick read. You said this is radiant? Correct. 
Okay. Oh, I don't want y'all to see that, so let me write that down. Okay. So, yep, yeah, you do this, and uh, he feels this light envelop him as he turns to you and screeches and hisses as he takes six damage. Norion. I will cast uh, using Scroll of Catapults uh, Catapult okay. on uh, the baddie that is closer to Fran and I. Okay. So, okay. Which one did you cast on, by the way, Solar? Whichever one was closest to um, Omriani. Alright, so that's He's gonna get doubled then. Alright. Let's catapult your catapult yeah. in the one in the moonbeam. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, so that's a uh, DC 15. And I gotta make a deck save? Yep. Yeah, that's a pass. He's, it's a dirty 20. He's... I sent you the spell's uh, specific verbiage, by the way. Okay. I don't know if he has to uh, also do it on the start of a turn, if it's already there. Uh, yeah, he would, for something like that. Well, on each of your turns after you cast a spell, you can move the beam, uh, if engulfed, it is engulfed in ghostly flames. Must make a con save. Half as much. When a creature enters the spell's area for the first time, on a turn, or starts to start in there. Yeah, so that's correct. I right, saw so I passed the deck save. Yeah, so I pick up some rubble, throw it. Uh, well, do I? Well, no, I attack with advantage, though, don't I? Or well, no, how does that work for? Yes. Does he have disadvantage on? Because he's just a sneak attack. Well, you would roll. Um, yeah, you're yeah, right. And so if it's like, a, if you're gonna do something that it requires a save, I'll do it with disadvantage. So let's have another roll. Okay. No, 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 for me. Uh, well, he still passes. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Um, so I pick up some rubble and uh, check it at the skeleton, and I, I guess it just goes whizzes past its non-existent ear and smacks into the wall. And Fran looks over to you and gives you a thumbs up. <laughs> I hang my head dejectedly. Cool. And uh, that's the surprise round. Uh, Fran's going to belay hers. First up is Big Bad Guy 1, who's on the left-hand side, who... Uh, seeing these these attacks come from the side is going to approach our druid friend. As That's he, Bibri, right? Yep, as he, you're nope. not a druid. As he clambers out of his tomb uh, in, a, in a shaky way that appears as though he hasn't walked for a very long time. And it's going to cast on you Vengeful Glare. What uh, is that? The Revenant targets one creature it can see within 30 feet and, and against which it has sworn a vengeance. The target must make a DC 15 wisdom saving throw. Give me a DC 15 wisdom. Add your modifier to your wisdom. 13. Which is funny pass. because my passive wisdom is 15. That's funny. It says on a failure, the target is paralyzed until the Revenant deals damage to it or until the end of the Revenant's next turn. When the paralysis ends, the target is frightened of the Revenant for one minute. The frightened target can repeat the saving throw at the end of each of its turns with disadvantage if it can see the Revenant. So, as long as the Revenant's within sight of you, you will not take any action against it, and you cannot approach it in any way. But That's I can attack the other is. one. Yes, you could. But if you're within sight of this Revenant, you make disadvantage on your rolls. That's what Frightened is. Okay. 
But right now you're paralyzed, so you can't do Jack Diddley's squat until the end of his next turn. Is that paralyzed concentration base, or is it just straight up? It's straight up. This, this is the spell's effect. Uh, enemy monsters don't generally have the same rules as players do. Alright. So you guys see this thing climb up out of this tomb, walk over to Vivri, uh, ball up its fists and scream at her real loud, and she just gets terrified so much that she stops moving. Uh oh. Uh, next up's Hildar, number two. Let's have it. What are you doing? I explode. <laughs> Hildar uh, explodes. Guts of Isra go all over Amriana. Amriani. I cannot say her name. <laughs> Wait, going... you can explode? No. No. Oh. <laughs> Magic missile at the creature facing towards uh, Vivri. All right, the one that's attacking Vivri. Cool. Yep. Let's have the roll. Roll for the damage. One, two. So I got two damage. Okay. How many missiles are you firing? You should have more than a couple. Is it pretty max? I mean, uh, tell me what the spell says. It doesn't say much about it. I'll have a look for you. Ivy, magic. Hey, put Ivy, it in the. Put it in the dick. The dick's cord. The dick's cord. Yep. answering your question. Okay. What? What's wrong with you? Okay. You cast three glowing darts. So yeah, you get three darts. Yeah, okay. Um, so, first damage was two. Yep. Second damage was four. Okay. And the last bit was three. So nine damage. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna sneeze. Mm -hmm. Two. <laughs> oh, that's scared Jeez. Hazel. She's Whoa, that was a sneeze. I, I cannot <laughs> do a small sneeze. I don't know what's going on. No, 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 no. Yes. No. Peppers. <laughs> and you just see this dwarf, like pointing his nose up, uh, closes one of his like nostrils with his finger. <laughs> <laughs> Snap blasts Three. the red no. from across the room as they pelt yeah. into his form. Okay. Snot rockets. Snot rockets. They're the snottiest. Nice up, Snorion. Alrighty. Um, I'm going to. throw a, uh. Let's try level two catapults at um, the one that's going after Beavery. Okay, let's have it. Uh, so it's a Dex, Dex 15 Dex. save. Dex. Yep. Okay. That's a save. Wow. You see the rolls, I'm not fudging. <laughs> I well, uh, I guess I picked up a skull, chucked it at it, and it hit the ball and exploded. Or you hit him, and it just didn't do damage. Oh no. That's your turn? Uh, yeah, for now. Okay. Uh, next up is Amriani. You're watching these oh. skeletons try to mess up your, uh, your consorts here. So I'm going to do a running kick at the one that cast its Spell on V3. Okay, so this is where you're at. Uh, and I'm trying. I'm going for its head. So all right. Uh, I'm glad you're excited. <laughs> Let's talk about this. <laughs> okay, dang it. Okay. I messed up. It, you're fine. Let's just talk about it. <clears throat> all right. Because there's some things you need to know. You can do this. You can absolutely do everything you just said. But okay. you're gonna have to run past the other one to do it. Um, now oh. you do have. What's your movement speed? Your movement speed is 40, so you're faster than everyone here because you're a monk. What this means is you can cover more ground than anybody else here in the same amount of time. 
Now that's important, because what that means is you don't have to make a beeline. You can come down and around and skip to the same place. Okay. So instead of running past this guy, which would invoke an opportunity of attack, you can just go around. So this, so she gets it in her mind, and she's gonna go hit this sucker, and so she like darts around the corner, and Hildar, you barely see her move because she's gone in a blink of an eye. As she foot pads her way around this uh, this open room in between pillars and runs up on Saguaro over here. And you wanted to do a uh, melee attack? Yeah, flying kick. Okay. So to I'm, the head. Okay. I'm trying to knock it off his shoulders. So we're going to do an unarmed strike. Now remember, you can also make a second unarmed strike. Yep. For free. So let's do those. Two hit. Okay. So you need to roll a d20. Okay. I got... And do I add anything to it? You add your hit DC, which is next to where it says your range. I got a 14. Okay. So you, you got a 14 flat, or you got a 10 and you added 4? I got a 10 and added 4. All right. So 14 to hit is a hit. So roll your second one as well. D20 again? Yep, same thing. Okay. I got a 12. So 8 plus 4. Yep, so that's not going to do it. Your first strike absolutely lands, so roll your damage for that. 1d4 plus 2. Okay. I got... That's 5 damage. Okay, you can also use your bonus action if you want to do that. Um, I will use Flurry of Blows. Okay, so she's going to spend a key, and she's going to hit this sucker two more times. Inside the hits. Okay, so d20 again, or do I roll the d4? d20. Okay. It'd be nice if you could just guarantee hit every time. That'd be great. I got a 17. That's a hit. And then one more time... I got an eight. Okay, so you hit one more time. Okay. So what's the damage on it? D4 plus it two. Is a three. All right. So what's this look like? You you run through the 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 mausoleum, I guess. I don't know what that's called. It's an underground catacomb. And you run up on this guy and you drop kick him. Right in the head. You hit him right in the head, and then you get two more attacks. You. You beef two of them, and then one of them you land. What's this one look like? I land, and then I sweep um, on his legs, trying to make it so he can't move. Like, knock him down. Okay, so you hit him in the legs, and you realize he's big and sturdy, and while it hurts him, he doesn't move. Mm. You, you can talk, too, if you want to add flavor. Yep. You want to be like, take that, or thievery run, or I left yeah. the oven on. <laughs> take that, motherfucker. Yep. This last of your turn. Okay. You want to end it there? Yep. So at the very bottom, if you scroll down under actions, and where it says all, is your key points. Go ahead and mark one key point, because you spent it. It's not letting... I only have my character sheet it. up. I'm sorry. I did it Okay. You. Thank you. Yeah, so you, you cannot do that. If you refresh, it, it'll update. Okay. So you can do that one more time uh, before short rest. All right, so that's her turn. You see her lightning fast reflexes dart through this thing, drop kick this guy, and then kick him away. And that was her turn. Beaver, it's your turn. Um... Let me read the condition one more time. Until the river deals stuck. damage to it, or the end of its. So you're still stuck until he does his turn. At, until the end of his turn. Okay. So yeah, Vera, it's your turn, but you can't do anything, so we're skipping you. Next up <laughs> is. Uh, what Fran. if I wanted. No, I'm just kidding. I was going to say. That's too I bad. <laughs> so Fran uh, looks around the pillar, sees what's going on, holds out her hand. She is going to cast Lightning Bolt. 
cast a third level evocation spell. Jeez Louise. Alright, how am I gonna do this? Yep. So With spice! Yep, yeah, pretty much. With spice. Fran's gonna cast a lightning bolt straight down the line there. Because this requires 100 feet of range and 5 feet of width, and all creatures in it must make a uh, save. And so I'm not gonna make you guys make a save. It'd be fun. It'd be a lot of fun. It'd <laughs> be really bad, too. Well, I'm paralyzed, so I couldn't save, right? Right, you would just take the damage. It would be terrible. All right, this guy needs to six save. Six save. This guy needs to save on a deck save. You see, thirteen. He does not. Uh, well, yes, he does. Hang on. No, he doesn't. Okay. So, this lightning bolt comes out of Fran's hand as she points it at this uh, this revenant who is standing in his tomb still. And he takes 8d6 lightning damage. Damn! Yeah, this is a third mm -hmm. level spell. Go, Fred! She goes, lightning bolt! Lightning bolt! Pikachu! 4, 5, uh, 9, 12, 16 damage. Damn. Yep. She cooks his goose and then ducks back around the corner. Uh, next up is the guy who just got lightning bolted, who is going to come as your friend for doing such a thing. Hmm. And gray man approaches here. I'm gonna... So he's moving out of your beam, Vivri. But he's not beginning his turn in it. Yeah, he did begin his turn in it. Yeah, yeah, so, so he's he has to do it again. Bit. Cool, so we'll have him take some damage. Uh, so he, is he making a save for it, or does he just take yeah, it? Yeah, he has to. He has to make a save. All right, we'll do that. Because that determines how much damage he has. Well, that's not a save. No. Because that no, that was a critical one. I don't know if you saw the oh. stream. Oh, no. and yeah, ours it, is behind. behind yeah. oh, okay, I got you. Ooh. Yeah, it's not that's good. That's eleven. It's eleven damage. All right, cool. 11 radiant damage. So he gets lightning bolted and then moon bolted? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Moon, moon burned. And it cooks moon his burn. goose and he starts walking towards. Specifically, it says ghostly flames cause searing pain. So he's engulfed, engulfed in ghostly flames. I like it. Are they like blue and ethereal and cool looking? Oh, definitely. Maybe best. a little bit of like particle effect where there's like little sparkles coming off of them instead of like smoke. Actually, I messed up. Okay, all good. So you approach his friend. Mind can... you, I cast that at second level. I can cast that higher. Sounds. Uh... This thing is. Moonbeam's great. It's a really good spell. Yeah, it's spicy. So he's going to approach Fran and just start swinging. He gets two fist attacks. Let's see, Fran's AC. That's nope. Fender wins. First one misses. Second one misses. So he walks up to Fran, who's hiding around this corner, and just starts swinging. And he just keeps hitting the pillar. He goes smack, smack. <laughs> And he gets nothing but stone. Watch. Oh, jeez, I didn't know that. Okay. Anyway. Cool. I like that. I didn't know that. That's not good news for you guys. Yep, so he's going to stand there and end his turn. Um, and we are going the Revenants to... now? Sorry? It's the Revenant's turn now, right? Yep, well, they're both Revenants, but yes. So the uh, the one that is closer to Viri's turn now. So at the end of his turn, you'll be unparalyzed. But he's going to attack you again, since no one other than uh, Amriani has decided to come to your aid. I tried. I, you know, you shut up. You tried real hard. <laughs> you tried so hard. And yeah, this... You big boy tried. It, I'm so proud of you. It, so proud of you. 
It whizzed past his non-existent ear and shattered against the wall. That's Skull. So he's gonna multi-attack no you. No multi-attack. Oh legal. boy. Yeah, he's gonna multi-attack you. Same thing. You're gonna roll against your AC. That's a 19 to hit. Uh, my armor class is 15. Okay. And that's a... Is that two 19s? It is. Two 19s in a row. Okay. So... Good news and bad news. Uh-oh. Uh, so he's got Vengeance against you, which is like a tracker, right? Because you, you, mm -hmm. you kind of surprise attacked him and he didn't like it. He does extra damage to you because of this. Oh, no. So he hits you with both. Let's see. That's 2d6 plus 4. Plus an additional 4d6 if you're vengeance. So that's 6d6 twice. 66? Yes. But I'm unconscious. Oh, you're about to be. Uh, they, six, E6, he's got a roll still. Oh, I thought he said 66, as in 6-6. Six, six. <laughs> that's 16. Oh. Oh no, Vivri. <laughs> She's getting torn to shreds. <laughs> yeah, and I'm the healer. Mm -hmm. yeah. God, that's, So I that's, think somebody has a healing potion. You that's 16 and 23. Me. That's what, 39 damage? Yeah, 39. Good bear is in your yeah. pocket, right? I am unconscious. Yeah. No. Oh, I haven't cast it. So you guys oh, watch no. in horror as this revenant puts one fist into her and then uh, hits her across the head and Whoa. she's just out. You guys could try to, to run him through my moonbeam, but I he, know it's concentration spell. And he roars. So it's down. Yeah. I have a question. Yes. So I still have my gunpowder, yeah? Yeah. No. No? Yeah. 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 So is it possible at some point to like, if everybody dashes out, somebody like dragging Beavery, that I can work with Norion, and if we can get out of the room before these skeletons, I can like toss it in and he can shoot a fireball at it and collapse the whole room. Sounds great to me. <laughs> gotta communicate it. Yeah, we gotta do this right or it's gonna end real bad. Let, let me tell you. This has the potential to go real bad. Oh. But that's okay <laughs> because it could also win the fight. Oof. Okay. But if you mess this up, it's gonna go bad in a big way. Oh, yes. <laughs> I don't know if it's worth the risk. Oh. Worth it. It's we worth it. We already have a healer down. <laughs> and next up, shield. I mean, to get the healer. Oh, if you guys can that. get me a healing potion. I wonder who has that. <laughs> I don't have uh, it. You have one, Gelder. Yeah. And you're a rogue, so you could sneak it there. <laughs> All right. I um, I'll have that in my back pocket. Just wanted okay. to know if it was possible. You could set it up mm -hmm. now, and then maybe you won't need it later. Okay. Um, I like the out of the box okay. thinking. Trog. Yep. <laughs> I would like to run over to her and give her one of my minor healing potions. All right. Um, she, she's within melee range of this guy. Um, uh, since you're not true. moving past him, you're okay. But you're gonna be. He's gonna. He's. He's gonna know you're there. Mm. Unless you use your bonus action to hide and you succeed. I could. I'm gonna okay. do that. All right. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, Hildar runs over to you, pops the cork on his shampoo bottle, and sticks it in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how much does that heal me for? Uh, so it's a 1d8. So go ahead and roll the 1d8. Let him know. Or you can roll it. I don't care. I'll roll it. All right. One. Whoa. I said I would roll it. Let her roll it. Oh, you would roll We'll it. discount your one. Okay. I got an eight. Well, there we oh, go. Our best. That's all there Fire is. and water, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> eight health. You instantly pop up. Um, because he attacked you, you are no longer frightened. Excellent. Um, 
bonus section for me. I'm gonna hide. Yep, <laughs> gonna self roll. Don't forget advantage. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me do another one just in case. No, I'm going with 21. <laughs> okay. Let me check his perception. I disappear. Okay, yep. You you pop this potion in her mouth, and then it's like you were never there. <laughs> Next up on the list is Norion. You and Fran are staring right. down a very big skelly man. <laughs> that we are. Let's go, we win. Oh, I'm going to level two catapults again. Okay. Uh, and I've got some iron ore I'm going to take out to do that with. Okay. Oh. So uh, he's going to have to do a uh, uh, dex 15 save. I'm on it. That's a 10. I won't do it. Ah, ready. 10 to bludgeon his arse. 25 <laughs> bludgeoning damage. 25? Oh, yeah. That's good. Yep. And that's on the one closer to you, so. He uh, rears backwards uh, from the iron hit as you hit him in the chest, and he uh, maintains his composure, but uh, a few ribs clatter and fall to the ground. I'm going to use meta magic so that I can cast a, another spell as a bonus action. Well, any okay. spell I want. I'm okay, going to. Talking through gritted teeth. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to pick up the iron ore and send it at him again. <laughs> back the other direction. <laughs> <laughs> well, like from the angle, but yeah. You know what? I like this. I'm going to give you advantage on this attack because it's behind him. Ah, uh, yeah. So he's got disadvantage then on the dex That's rolls. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was almost a one. That's oh. an eight. We'll go with the eight. And he, he does not succeed, and he gets hit again backwards the other direction. This nice. time he takes 26 bludgeoning. Yikes. Yikes, man. More ribs clatter to the ground. Let me do some quick calculations. Okay. Is that your turn, sir? Yes, it is. He points at you with a menacing glare. Why is it me? Yep. Oh, that's, yeah. for a second I thought he was going to cast him. I guess not his turn. Amriani, <laughs> you're up. Question. Yep. So uh, my spell passed without a trace, right? Yeah. If I use that, does that then give everybody an advantage? On it makes us all invisible. Well, well, right, so they can't, like, they, they can't see us. They can't track you. Very specific wording here. It gives you oh. 10 additional points to a stealth roll. If you roll a 1, it's not going to help you. If you roll a 10, it will certainly help you. Which means that they couldn't do the vengeance, right? It would give... No. Once, you, once you're marked with vengeance, you want me to read what vengeance is? Well, because it's... What I'm wondering, if they can't track you, it will then would it be able... You. This is the first time you've you've used this spell with us, so that's why I'm asking. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Is there um, is there not clarity here? What am I missing? Uh, it went it went blank. I missed some of what y'all were saying. I think. Okay. Well, let's hash it out. So again. like, what I'm trying to figure out is the difference between the the terminology of tracking. Okay. as far as what being stealthed yeah and and in terms with vengeance because so, if it can't if they can't track you I'm, I'm trying to figure out how they could cast it on you well okay so when you can't see an enemy you can still make an attack against them it's just at disadvantage okay does that make more sense no Oh, uh, well, disadvantage means they, they will roll twice and take the lower number for a hit. So if you shot a bow at something that was invisible, you're still shooting a bow at your last guest 
estimation of where they were, but now you have a less, like half less chance to, to hit them. Okay, that, that makes, makes sense. more sense. Like if I pop an invisibility potion and we're in melee combat, you know where I was, even if you don't know where I am. And so you're still gonna make an attack, but you don't have a better chance to hit me. You have a, a lesser chance. Okay. Does that make sense? So. I think I am gonna do that just to put them. You can do pass without a trace. I think so. So it, it at least like puts them at a disadvantage against us. Sure, read me the spell out. Let's let's hash this out word for word. Uh, I don't have. You don't have. Where it. do I? Yeah. Where do I? It just says pass without a trace, and then it's oh on oh. It. It open wait, a here it is. Okay, a veil of shadows and silence radiates from you, masking you and your companions from detection for the duration each creature you choose within 30 feet of you including you has a 10 plus bonus to dexterity stealth checks and can't be tracked except by magical means a creature that receives this bonus leaves behind no tracks or other traces of his passage okay so that was very clear wordage and i'm going to tell you they will track you how because it's magical it says it can't be tracked. Except oh, except by, by magical means. Just kidding. Okay, so maybe well, I need to rethink this. Well, I'll, I'll clarify. The, the revenants can track one target that they've picked. And they have picked one target each. So they'll be able to track those people. You can save half your party from detection for now. Well, it doesn't track me anymore because I got knocked out. Okay. So that one has to re-pick a target, right? It sure does. So it hasn't picked yet, right? Probably. <laughs> Trog is like, probably. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna save. I guess I'll still do it, because yeah, it'll still sure. save half my party, even. Even if it just gives you bonus stealth me. checks, that's really good. Yeah. Right, great, so you're gonna cast that. Mm-hmm. So I roll what? You don't. You just do this. Spells, spells oh, don't okay. miss. Spells happen, right? Because they're... You do spells. Um, okay. If it's like a projectile spell, that has a chance to miss. But this is something that radiates from you. So okay. this, these are the key things you need to know about this spell. Number one, it's verbal. That's what the V means. It's somatic. That's what the S means. And it has a material component. That's what the M means. If we're going to forego the material component. Uh, you don't have a casting focus. I'm not going to worry about that right now. Uh, somatic means you move your hands right in order to cast a spell and verbal means you have to say something so if you're trying to be sneaky about it like you don't want someone to know you're casting something this is not a spell you want to use since you're in the middle of combat it doesn't matter whatever yeah i shout out this spell and as i wave my hands wildly she goes everyone hide and just like waves her hands around yes <laughs> uh this is a concentration spell so you have this ongoing until you either take damage and fail a wisdom save. I think it's a con save, actually. Or um, until you cast another concentration spell, which I don't think is going to be a problem. Okay. So what this yeah, this does, is the only spell I can do. Yeah. What this does, everybody, you get a plus 10 bonus to stealth checks. And you can't be tracked unless it's through magical means. So if they don't know you're egg there, salad. they don't know you're there. What's up? I'm I said egg salad. Egg, egg salad. legs. Now I went from turning into the wind to literally turning into just just atoms. Yeah. Nothingness. <laughs> you turned into Ant-Man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so you've got some bonus actions you can use. I don't know if you want to use them. I would need to do another key point, yeah? You would. Um, I'll save. I'll wait for now. Okay. So she calls this out, everyone, you become, I'm gonna, not exactly in the spirit of the spell, but I'm gonna say you guys, because usually you cast this before you're detected, are suddenly hidden from view. Alright, next up, uh, Vivri, you're up. All right. You're hurt, so, but you're up. Yeah, but I, first I'm gonna cast Guiding Bolt and then I'm gonna use a, a bonus action. Okay. It, um, is Moonbeam concentration? It was concentration. It went down when I was knocked out. Okay, I was going to make that clear. All right, so let's do what you're doing. 
I'm going to use one of my guiding bolts. Okay. 11. To hit? Yep. Not a hit. Damn it. Okay. So now I'm going to use um, my bonus action. I can use Misty Step as a bonus action. All right. And so I'm actually going to be briefly surrounded by Silvery Mist, and I'm actually going to go 30 feet away. Um, I'm going to assume by the angle that I'm standing that I can see behind one of the other pillars across sure. the way. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I'm going to hide myself behind one of those pillars. I'll put you here. How about that? Perfect. Cool. All right. You guys see her get swallowed up by a mist, and then she's not standing there anymore. After she fires off uh, one of her shooting star shots that... Uh, the Revenant handily dodges. Mm -hmm. Is that your turn? Yep, that's all my bonuses. Okay, next up is Fran, who is going to double down, burn her other three slot spell, and hit it with another Damn. lightning bolt. Only this time, Fran is going to position herself here so that she can hit them both. Bo 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 Fran holds out both her hands this time. And a streak of lightning goes across the room. In a bright flash, the whole room is lit up. And we need to make some deck saves. Oh my. <laughs> just, just the, oh, that's a save. But that's not. So. Damn, I'm going to do, <laughs> since they both got hit by one spell, I'm going to do the damage. I had to make sure 8d6, okay. Here we go. God. 5, 10, 12, 14, uh, 17, and 20. It's 20 damage. One of them takes 20, one takes 10 for not getting fully hit. So yeah, friend comes around the side of the pillar, holds out both her hands, and a lightning bolt streaks across through both of them as they temporarily shudder in the energy that has passed through them. And Fram will end her turn. Damn. She's going full uh, Azula over here. Nice. That was Fran. Next up is baddie number two, who is now right in front of Fran. And he's just going to make a couple of swings. No, you know what? Let's, let's double down. We're going to eventually... What in the it. world was that? <laughs> that was Hazel. She climbed up her uh, condo. They heard you. Oh. Yes, they did. That did sounded that like fell? an entire bookshelf fell. <laughs> she, like, when I tell you she sprints up this thing, she sprints up this thing. Like, she has she learned dashed. every single inch that she can, like, occupy. So she just jumps in there and goes... Whoa, 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 whoa. It's great. <laughs> first scared the crap out of me the first time she did it. So I'm like, what sounds happened? Like what did you do? <laughs> it sounds like a suitcase falling down. Yep. <laughs> because Fran has made herself clear by attacking, uh, he's just going to turn around and pick a vengeful player. Oh no! Yep. Is that a cast? That is kind of. It's not really a spell. It's it's an action that they have. So no. Uh, so it can't be counterspelled? No, it's not. Uh, it's it's not designated a spell, like if it was Firebolt, yes, or something similar. This is, um, again, monsters have different rules when it comes to attacks. So Particularly how boss you stop it. <laughs> this isn't a boss monster. If you wanted to stop cool. this, you'd have to kill him. <laughs> like right now, yeah. you'd have to die. Okay. Yeah. I'm interpreting it as like a, a feat for like what we would have then. Yeah, which basically. Might not be considered this. All right, so DC 15, Fran needs to save. Oh, bad luck. No. Fran, that Fran did not close. save. That was close. Oh, no. So this guy turns around, looks at her, and gives her the scariest I'm gonna kill you look with his featureless face and dead eye sockets, and Fran is paralyzed with fear. And he insists. Oh, no. oh. Does uh, she now have vengeance on her? Yes. Okay. Top of the line, 
is the other bad guy. And the only person near this bad guy is on Liani, but you are vanished because you cast your spell. So he's, he's going to swing at the air, and he's going to make his attack roll with disadvantage. He's got multi attacks, so he's going to make them both with disadvantage. He's going to do 40 20s. So that's a critical miss. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh. And oh my god, he rolled. Oh my god. <laughs> I can't believe that. What did he hang on? I gotta see this. He rolled. What is that? Y'all have to back that up. I can't see it. He rolled an 18, I think a 16, a 1, and a 2. Yep. Yep. So he's gonna take a 1 and a 2, and he's going to just biff it. Like he's, he thinks you're there, and he swings real hard, and he hits his hand into the uh, column right next to you guys. He's gonna take 5 damage from that, because that's critical misses for you. And the second one, he just swings oh, wide and it gets no purchase. Like, he takes a chunk out of it, a la Agent Smith from, from The Matrix. <laughs> and he just, like, darts his head around looking for you, hissing. He tried it. And he's gonna end his turn there. Uh, next up, Kildar. We got some skellies who are looking uh, pretty nasty. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> do I know anything about the metal? <laughs> uh, you want to give me a history check? Yes. Okay. Yes, I do. Damn it. You so could also you... use your free talk and ask. Mm, but that will give away my position. You certainly would. Very clever. So if seven. only you had send a message. <laughs> if only. I have to start it, unfortunately. <laughs> so I got a seven. So you got a seven? <laughs> uh, you know that they're undead? And that undead don't like some things, and they're hard to kill. That would have been nice to know what they don't like. <laughs> <laughs> what could be in your inventory that was given to you for tackling a lich? I don't know. That's all gone now, isn't it? Yeah. yeah oh, that's right. We used it. Darn. No, uh, on holy water. Mm-hmm. And yeah. um. Trog, as part of a seven, would he be able to recall what happened earlier in this battle? Uh, as far as the moonbeams? Mm hmm. What happened with the moonbeams? It got real mad. Yeah, he wasn't happy about it. He took damage. You would call that. <laughs> and it was real mad about it. He was mm -hmm. upset about it because it was a sneak attack. What about the um, firebolts? What happened to that? I had a. Shot it at him, and I didn't really get a response of how he reacted. Your magic missile? Yeah. He didn't like it. I mean, he took damage. Y'all are damaging these guys. Let me, let me be clear about that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but they've been tanking it. That's why I'm scared. I'm like, oh, oh, oh no. Well, if they didn't <laughs> have high hit points, y'all would have killed them already. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Fran would have, like, with that damage, and Terran. So this is a hard challenge rating for four people. But there's not four people yeah. here. Yeah. Wait. Oh, there's no. five. Oh, yeah. Right. Good beat. It's also mm. deadly. Y'all guys fought a deadly encounter before and still won. Mm hmm. I'm going to just get to the door. That's my move. So you're, okay. I mean, like, I'm, I'm going to tell you, your physical damage far outweighs everybody else's here. And you've been given a plus 10 to your already advantageous stealth rolls. Yes, we, and you we, can disengage. This is this is what we trained you for. This was your solo mission. You can do this. This is your moment. <laughs> you don't even have to stay in melee combat. This is when you decide what kind of person Yildar is. Is he the hero? Or does he run for the door? <laughs> Screw it. I sigh and pull out my bow. Highly I recommend the lich. you go in for a rapier strike. But you can use the bow, that's fine. Do you remember when we did Deadly Encounters and you went with the sticky stab? You've got mm. all the stealth, you're gonna get your advantage. And sneak attack. And sneak attack, and you can still disengage out of it. Yeah, true. I was mostly scared if I get too damage. close. <laughs> if I get too close. 
Don't um, be afraid. What's the worst thing that class, happens? My friend, do the thing. Win the points. Fine. I charge at the or well, in stealth charge. <laughs> I um, sneakily charge. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> <Tiptoe> charges. <laughs> I go for the skeleton facing down uh, Fran Great. with my right here. Hit DC. Here we go. Whoa! 24. Oh, yes. That's a big oh, hit. That's, nice. that's almost double his armor class. <laughs> um, now damage. Here okay. Go. Uh, so wait. here's damage. How do I calculate this? You are undetected. <laughs> this is sneak attack damage, which for you is what? Uh, 3d6. 3d6. So that's just for sneak attack. You get 3d6. Your rapier is what damage? Uh, let's have a look. Damage uh, 1d8 plus 2. Alright, you got 1d8 plus 2 and 3d6. But get this you're not detected. This is a guaranteed critical strike. <laughs> so. What do I do here? <laughs> Double damage. Oh. So roll all your damage. 3d6. So how do I... So three... Hold on. Yep, three three of your squares. Six. Yeah, three Tell of those. Total. Yep. Okay. Nine okay. is total. Plus your 1d8 plus two. Wait, so plus my 1d8? Yeah, your rapier plus damage. Two. Okay. The sneak attack is plus. extra damage because you did it. Because you're a rogue, you get that. Yep. And then... Let's see, so 1d8 roll. That's a 4 plus a 2, so 6. Okay. So that's 15. Okay, and then... Okay. And you said double, right? Yep, so critical. So roll it all over again. So while it's 30, <laughs> I'm just going to double the damage you got. Oh, okay. 30 damage. Uh -huh. Yep. Let's do it. Play it out. Let me do some quick math here. Yep. You instantly bloody this thing. <laughs> one fail swoop. Look, tell, me, tell us what that looks like. Uh, I'm going to say from the perspective of Fran, just as she's being stared down by this giant creature. Well, not giant. It's like He's creature. It's greater than all of you. Yeah. Um... He just staring down Fran. Out of the blue, Fran sees at the corner of her eye this shadow that just moves across as fast as it can and just sticks right through its chest and swipes downwards. God, <laughs> it's taking just ribs bone, with it. just Yeah, taking ribs, like skewered it. And skewered his back through to his front, grabbed his ribs, and pulled them downwards. That's delicious. <laughs> So, uh, being bloodied men means that the creature is at half or below health. Okay. And one move. <laughs> so, alright, you have a bonus action now. What do you want to do? Hold it up. Let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. You can hide, disengage, or dash. I'm going to hide again. <laughs> okay. Stealth roll. I'll get advantage. And plus 10. And plus 10 because past oh. the trace. Crit! Crit! You gotta quit. So, Fran so sees this hide? happen, but she never what knows what happened because you were never there. Yeah. <laughs> where did you hide? Where'd you go? I literally just ducked into the shadows. <laughs> he just, just skulks back away backwards into the night. <laughs> I just hide behind Apollo and I. A yeah. nearby object. Yeah, that you're literally surrounded by stuff to hide behind. It's perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. Alright, so that puts put you right here, I'd say. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow, that was nice. Next up, Norion. Alrighty, we are going you up, saw up another you heard a What's horrific up? scream from this uh, creature all of a sudden. You're not sure why. You Remember. Are, but you're not sure. But it was your turn. <laughs> but you're not sure. <laughs> um, trying to look and see where the dots are. Is Fran in my way at all, or is she okay? Fran's right here, and she can't move. 
Okay, I see. I gotta, I gotta wait a few seconds to see it. You are on the other side, right here, still. Brent's on the other side of the pillar of you, as you. Okay, so I can throw things and she's not in line, of, not in the uh, cone for it. Got right. it. Well, uh, well, depending on how wide you're coming. Okay, I'm just looking at the kind of holes at the moment, so. Um, I'm going to look up the eye. What's that? The notification is appropriate. Oh. All right, what are we doing? Oh, I see it now. <laughs> um, all right, I'm going to uh, pick up the iron ore again, and I'm going to catapult it at the skeleton close to Fran. Okay. It's another dex 15. Let's make a dex 15. That doesn't do it. What's he taking? He is taking 11, 11 blunt damage. All right. So iron ore, it's him at the base of his head, it spins his skull around. Face him backwards. <laughs> you hear his teeth teeth clatter. <laughs> and his eyes swirl around in his head, except they don't because they're not there. Gilder mm. was vaguely reminded of the rattler. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna use meta magic again to quicken uh, so I can cast a second spell. Okay. And we are going to You didn't you didn't say. You're oh, what's that? The, oh, the spell. Okay. To, uh, min. Like, All's fine. Um, so I'm going to use that this thing went through him again, hit him right, so he's hopefully looking in the opposite direction yet again. And we're going to repeat what we did last time, but this time with a <laughs> level three catapult. Oh, God. Okay. You want advantage again? Ideally, yeah. All right. That's fine. <laughs> I did that for flavor, but I'll give it to you. Boop, 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 do, 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 Wow. You, you just miss. You, you whiffed it. I'm sorry. Oh, Nothing no. but air. So what did so what did you do? Well, I picked it up and chucked it back at it, and apparently it just barely goes wide. Maybe it like nudges a rib, but not much. You tickle him and he goes, hee hee. <laughs> 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 Alright. Uh no hang on, it's at your turn. Amriani, you're up. Hmm. Where am I again? You are this green smudge over here. Okay, so there's one, like, right next to me? Yep, sure is. Everyone's beating up on this one over here on the right that's very low on health. Gotcha. I guess I can go around again, so... Yep, you're I'm... super fast. Don't worry about it. Just go. Yeah, so I'll do that, and I'll do a running... Uh front handspring onto the weak one's shoulders and stab it in the chest with my dagger. Alright. You guys see her wall run the length of this room and spring off the wall onto the sucker and do a stab attack. Let's have the attack roll. Okay. Oh no. It's a one. Alright. No. So you don't have to add anything to this because you automatically fail. Wow. Uh, so you so, do. I'm sorry. I was gonna say. So maybe it just goes between the bones. Oh uh, <laughs> well, that'd be nice. But here we're gonna do something fun. Oh yeah. So you do this wall run, and because you you called this out, you do a a spring jump onto him, and you go for the stab, and he just grabs you and pushes you off to the side, and you smack against the ground and take one damage. Oof. Ouch. <laughs> I'm at 18 now. You hear him say, no touchy! 
<laughs> I tried. You do have a bonus action. You're still engaged with them. Mm. You also get a punch because you're a monk. Do you want to use it? You don't have to. Yeah, I'll use the punch. All Why right, not? Let's do the punch. Let's do the hit. Don't forget it's plus okay. four. Uh, oh, sorry. Wait. So the hit is with the D4. No. D4. No. And D4. then you add four. Yep. Okay. It's a 18, so plus four is 22. Oh, yeah. That's a hit. Okay. Now I roll the D4. Yep. Damage. Now you roll the damage. One D4 plus two. Okay. Because you're good at it. Uh, It's three. All right. So... He pushes you off of him, you smack against the ground, you stand up, what do you do? I punch him right in the kneecap. <laughs> His knee buckles a little. He goes, ow. Cool. Alright, you, uh, you have a bonus action if you want to use it, you don't have to. Um, the bonus action... Oh, let me look and see what they are. Should I disengage, maybe? I'm gonna get you out of combat range. Yeah, I think I'm going to use that and disengage. Okay, let's do it. But that's my last little key point. So you'll disengage and you'll where you want to move. Um, I'll move towards the door, I would say. Let's put you about right there. Okay. You should move, use most of your movement speed to get over here. All right. Y'all are all lined up on the right-hand side now. That's, that could be dangerous. Mm. Cool. Alright, is that your turn? That's my turn. Okay. Uh, Beavery. It's you. I am going to cast Cure Wounds on myself. Okay. At third level. Do the thing. So I'm going to deal with 14. Bringing me back to 22. Cool. And then I'm going to use my bonus action to pop my starry form. Okay. And I don't think I can attack in the same time that I form into it, or can I? I'm not sure. What's it say? Just read me. Um, as an action, you can magically assume the shape. Um, as an action or as, as a, a bonus, bonus action? As a bonus action. Okay. Earlier. Yeah, so you can do it. Okay. So then I'll pop into my, my starry form and then I roll to attack? Yep. Well I mean if that's what the spell says. If there's a if there's no DC and it says you have to if you have a hit roll for it. I yeah. have to hit roll for it. Yeah, so yeah, roll an attack. Okay. So to roll to attack I got nineteen that's a hit. to hit. Yep. And that's six for the one that's bloodied. Okay. Six radiant. Yes, thank you for clarifying. All right. All right, is that your turn? Yes. Cool. Next up on the list is Fran, who can't move until this guy goes again. So she's just going to stand there like a statue. And next up is that guy again. Coincidentally, hey, how about that? And since he's still engaged with Fran, he's going to take another couple swings. Watch out, Fran. Yeah, this, his attack hit is disgusting. Oh, that's not going to do it. Oh, that will do it. All right, so he makes connection. He starts swinging at Fran again. Maybe he's a little dazed from the absolute baller critical that he received earlier. And uh, gets nothing but air. The second one, he swings and connects. And does... 2d6 plus 4. Alright, 
That's what, 15? Yep. 15 damage to Fran. Um, that's not good. Fran's hurt. <coughs> Fran, while paralyzed, coughs up blood. Ooh. As he uh, strikes her in the stomach. And Fran is no longer paralyzed. But she is terrified of him. And next up on the list is uh, oh, yeah, the other bad guy. I forgot to go back to back. Who's going to approach Norion, who's on the other side of the pillar? And he's gonna just start swinging at you. And critically misses. Wow. And then gets 21 to hit. Oof. Oof. Oh. <laughs> oh, gee. So, here's what happens. Uh, let's see, that's 2d6 for the damage. Plus 4. That's. Oh, I forgot to read it. 5, 7, 4, 12, 11. Yes. Don't they have disadvantage, too, still? Uh, well, once you guys acted, and you have acted, you're not in stealth anymore. Oh, okay. I see. Right. Yeah. You did I great, see. though. You caused them all to have a stuttering effect in which they could not see or attack anyone. Okay. Uh, so what was the damage? Uh, he hit you for 11. Then he whiffs and catches the floor as he tries to bring his fist down. I'm gonna make him take two damage for that. And he's also now gonna make a 15 strength save. Okay. For uh, Gift of the Gem Dragon Telekinetic Reprisal. He rolled a 17. Alrighty. Uh, um, um, it, um, on a successful, all right, he's still gonna take half as much damage, which is force damage. Okay. So he'll take 10 force. Okay. He does it. He goes, ow. <laughs> Why would you do that, man? Thought we were friends. Thought we were cool. <laughs> uh, next up, uh, Kildar. Yeah. It is time to do another Hildar, sneak attack. We gotta Finger. save Fran. Yep, that's the plan. Ha, get it for Ryan. Oh, I'm not good. Um, let's see, where are we at? Uh, where's Fran? What's happened? Fran is the dark red dot. You're the yellow one. You are one pillar away from her. Going to? Is the creature still in front of her? Yes. I'm gonna kill it. Alright, let's go. <laughs> uh, again. Sneak <laughs> a charge again. Let's do it. Um, uh, hit DC. Here we go. And with advantage, right? Yes, yeah, it doesn't know you're there. Because you're hidden. Yeah. So, with hit DC, it's just one roll, right? No two rolls? Correct. I mean, you'll do two rolls to see if you crit. Yeah. Okay. Oh, natural 20! Oh, ah! God, another Ooh. crit! Let's have it! I got 25 <laughs> in total. <laughs> Nothing right. but net, baby! Oh, rare, yeah. rare. How do I do this again? So. You're gonna roll your damage. Free. So, free D6. 3D6 for sneak attack. Mm hmm. Yep. And then. And then you're 1D8 plus 2. Just gonna roll that together and see if that works. Oh, that really. Sure, I don't know if I should have done that. I should have done it separately. <laughs> que quiero sentir tus labios besándome otra vez. Oh, no. No, no, that sure, works. Because that's all the damage and plus the two. Pes so, 11. Que quiero damage. sentir tus labios besándome oh, otra vez. Six. And then, and then eight plus two, and you got 11? Hold up. 1D8. If you... You have 3D6. Mm -hmm. And then 1, 1D8 plus two, right? Yeah. 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 You got eleven? I mean, it's possible. I'm just saying it's it's low. 
It's um, I got uh three plus one plus one. Oh my plus god. Four. Okay. Yeah, you yeah. got some snake eyes in there. All right. So eleven. Yeah. Uh. So yeah, eleven total with the bonus two. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So then critical is double damage. That's twenty-two damage. Oh yeah. Still kill him. <laughs> yep. What's that look like? Yeah, that's what I've been pressing all the way down. Those are the buttons I've been touching. Okay. <laughs> uh, Fuck his couch! It? What does it look like? <clears throat> Cross, what does this right. actually look like? Because you just put this thing down. I'm going to be run up behind, and out of just the vision of it is I literally spike my sword, my rapier, through his pelvis, all the way up his spine, to the top of his skull, and pierce through. Kebabbing it. Yep. <laughs> he just splits into two and falls into to halves. <laughs> and the bones clatter as they hit the, the floor, the stone floor. Murder. Does that mean thingy's okay now? <laughs> well, that means uh, she's not being attacked by that guy. She doesn't have the, the glaring eyes anymore? <laughs> yeah, she doesn't have fixate, right? Right. Well, I mean, he's not going to be able to fixate on her. He's dead. Yeah, he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, that's correct. Um, you have a bonus action still. Tied again. Great. <laughs> Ten. <laughs> What's advantage? Don't forget. Oh, yeah. Shoot, 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 shoot. Fifteen. All right. You are uh, become as one with the stone floor. <laughs> I just crouched down and now I'm stone. <laughs> no, <laughs> you're up. Alright, uh, I'm going to do another third level catapult, but this time I'm going to take the fist of the, uh, the skelly that was just murdered, and I'm going to have it go to try to punch the, uh, the face of this guy that's in front of me. <laughs> I like it, okay. <laughs> See this this hand crunch up into a fist. Yeah, and then just go flying right at its skull. Alright. It's a uh, 15 dex. Yep, that doesn't do it. Aw, <laughs> uh, yeah. That is 19 on the damage. Okay. He gets punched by his own know. friend. Yes. <laughs> and he's like, The betrayal! He's like, bro, what? Mm -hmm. He's still cocked right in the jaw. His jaw breaks off and starts to flop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this effectively has bloodied him. Is that your turn? Wait, right. Yeah, it is, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, next up. Amriani. It's me. It's you. How far away am I from the other dude? There, you'll be able to get anywhere you want in this room. It's time to if I roll to throw a initiative! Uh, you're probably about 15 feet away. Okay. So I can throw one. Yep. Okay, I take my dart. Which is fashioned like um, a gemstone, but sharp, sharpened. It glitters blue. Oh, she's throwing lawn darts in here. <laughs> oh, snap! <laughs> Take out someone's eye with that. Yep. Next, we'll be playing pickleball. <laughs> <laughs> and I throw it at the. Uh, at the skull. Right. Yeah, right at the skeleton, uh, aiming for his bones. The mouth, okay. his bones. <laughs> Go ahead, give me the hit roll. Should be the same thing, plus four. Hey, come here. Uh, eighteen plus four, twenty-two. Oh yeah, that's a hit. Let's have that damage. One d four plus two. Oh no, uh, dart. Yeah, it's one d four plus two. two. Uh, that would be a four plus two, a six. Cool. You had him for six Dang. damage, and he's like, Burr. Swear. <laughs> Burr. Let's see, so. Burr. Okay. <laughs> right, 
Do you have a bonus action if you want to use it? Uh, I don't... I do? Uh, oh no, well, no. I thought I used them all. Yeah, and you're not in melee range, so... She's a monk, yep, she's a punchy girl. Right. Mm -hmm. I right, am so a I... monk. <laughs> so that's your turn, right? You're done? Yes, I am done. You want to shout anything cool? You just like, uh... catch! And he hits him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, can I yep. reach? Can I reach with my movement, Fran? Um. Yeah. Yeah, you can. Okay, so I'm gonna move to Fran, okay. and then once I'm in touch range, I'm gonna cast Cure Wounds on her. All right. How much health are you restoring? Nine. Okay, that's good. Ran a patch on the shoulder and says, thank you. <laughs> now I'm going to use my bonus action. My starry form. I got a 16. Um, yep, that's it. <laughs> For three damage. I mean, yep. damage is damage. What kind of damage? Very, damage, important. Damage. Very important. Radiant. Radiant. All right. Hazel's doing this thing where she's drooping her entire body over the length of my arm. <laughs> it's like a coat hanger. Like, I'm hanging up a pair of pants. I'm like, what are you doing? Cutie pie. Cool. And uh, once you pick Fran up like that, it's actually Fran's turn. Fran's going to stand up with her new lease on life and cast Witch Bolt. It says, a beam of crackling blue energy lances out towards a creature within range, forming a sustained arc of lightning between you and your target. It's a range spell attack against the creature. So let me make a range spell attack. Mmm, not gonna do it for him. Oh, come on, Hazel. What you doing, baby? Uh, on a hit, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Yep, nope, she just misses. Oh, whiff. Too bad, friend. Y'all see this huge lightning bolt of energy come out of her in an arc, and the Revenant kind of just sidesteps it, like, really? That's all you got? Don't lay on my keyboard, honey. You need that. Uh, it's Fran's turn. She's going to back around the corner here because, uh, ay ay ay, gross, gross, gross. She's gonna hide over here with you, Amiyani. Next on the list is uh, the dead big bad. He doesn't count anymore. Yay! Then after him goes the other big bad, who the only person in range of him. Norion. Oh, good. It's not me. He's going to <laughs> do a multi attack. You only oh, have no. two abilities, guys. Mm -hmm. First swing is a 21. Does a 21 hit your your sorcerer self? Yeah, that's uh, about my AC. What about 25? Does 25 hit? 25 hit? Yeah, that also hits. Right. But uh, he's going to get hit back twice because of this. So for each time, he's going to get hit with uh, reprisal. He's got 2d6 plus 4. I'm going to roll 4d6 to save me some math. Um, I actually need them incrementally because if I go down halfway through, Okay. Like, if I go down on the first hit, then I don't have any reprisal. But if I go down on the second, I get at least one reprisal. First one's which 13. might. 13? Yep. So, this actually gets complicated because if my if he fails the strength saving throw, he won't be in melee range anymore. So, these, these both uh, count as one action? It doesn't matter. My reaction counts when I take damage. So, each time he hits me, it triggers immediately the uh, telekinetic reprisal. 
So he's got a strength DC 15, is what it says. All right, so send me this this uh, reaction. I know you sent it to me before. Let me have a look here. Taryn has complicated magic. <laughs> yeah, I'm confused. Norheon has to be extra in everything he does. It's part of being a duke. He's min max, <laughs> and that's cool. Uh, this is actually my way of trying to tank since we lack a tank. Oh, did you put it in? Okay, I got you. Why does it keep doing that? When you take damage from a creature within mm -hmm. feet of you, you use your reaction plus creature to make strength. So you get to use your reaction one time on your on not your turn. On a failure, the target takes two d eight, which way from success target. Okay, so you can use your reaction one time. That's what this is. Does it? Then it okay, how do I know that it only can be triggered one? Way. That's what that means. Because you, you, in the action turn order, you get an action, a bonus action, a reaction. Um, there's a free action. That's what talking is. Using an item as an action. A reaction, you get one per turn order. And since you didn't use it on your last turn, like or you know whenever you did last, you can use it this time. It's just one. Like for the same reason, you wouldn't be able to attack twice. You can't react twice. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, so that does it trigger partway through or does it trigger after he's done all of his damage? Because his attack is his multi attack is one attack. I saw it but you know I guess it doesn't matter. Because he's gonna take he's gonna take the reaction either way. We can take it after the first one, that's fine. Okay. Who's, uh, so he needs a... Uh, 15 strength check. Okay. Uh, well, that's a pass. And then he'll take, uh, 4 damage still. Okay. So, um... Did you knock my pen before? You sure did. So, this is a reaction, right? So, in this um, instance, yeah. now, since it's not your turn... And not until the end of your next turn, if he were to run away from you, you would not get an opportunity attack because that counts as a reaction also. Okay. Just for clarification's purposes. Alright, so you said five. Right? Uh yes. Okay. Alright. I'm just doing some dirty math. <clears throat> Okay, and his other hit was... can't read that. Can read that? No. I, I only see hair. <laughs> Just roll again. I got this. Three and three is six. Okay. Let me do this. That's not too bad. Uh, plus four. Is 10. 10 damage. So it was 13 and then 10? It was 11 and then 10. 11 and then 10, okay. Oh, I'm down. Okay. Norion goes down. You see, you see this Revenant punch Norion in the face, which has him yeah. rear back, and then the Revenant also rears back from some sort of unseen force. And then he comes back around with the left hook, hits him again, and Norion just kind of like sidesteps, falls over. Plop into the ground. <laughs> it, it gets downed again. <laughs> <laughs> I got two down this time. I don't see you tanking this cross. Ooh, I am shit. still. I'm still. I am not a tank. <laughs> got more health than any of us. Uh, <laughs> I'll just put that on me. It's probably not so bad. I can <laughs> Alright, uh, turn order. That was um, Big Bad's turn. Next turn, Kill Bar. I'm going to explode. <laughs> you might. No, uh, I'm going to rush over to Norheon instead. Okay. Um, and do a health potion again. <laughs> oh my god, how many of those have you got? I had three. Uh, this, this is my last one. This is it. You used him up. 1d8. Let him have it. What's he got? 1d8. Let's see. 1d8. Roll. Four. You get four hit points going on, you are not dying, you sit up. Like the Undertaker. 
<laughs> I like the Undertaker, I love that. <laughs> I, suggest, I suggest using your turn to come to me. Zildar, you have a uh, well, I'll, he'll get an opportunity attack, unless someone can get him off me. Uh, bonus action, I'm going to... Probably stealth again. <laughs> Alright, let's have a roll. Now you're getting the hang of it. Now you're thinking of portals. Natural 20! Alright. <laughs> Shildar, you know what? Give me another roll, see if you had another 20. If you had another 20, I'm gonna put you out of combat completely. Nope. No dice? I didn't get it. Nope. I didn't shot. get it. <laughs> yep, what see. was gonna happen if I got another one? <laughs> I don't know. We would have talked about it. That would have been interesting. <laughs> <laughs> just somehow stealth into a pocket dimension. Yeah, he, he <laughs> teleports out of the room, back up top, and starts talking to Jeff again. <laughs> yeah, alright, so all right. Uh, that was you, Hildar. Next up's three is Norheon. You sit up like the Undertaker, and you're staring at this guy. <laughs> you feel like you absolutely for sure just blacked out for a second. Your mouth tastes like piss. <laughs> Oh no. And blood. Oh god. Because you got punched in the face. Yes. <laughs> what are you doing now, If it, if it's any consolation, it's just you and him. Like real close to each other. What does he look like? <laughs> the skeleton? He's got a jaw that's flapping loose and he's kinda shaky. He's definitely bloodied. You coming through, Taryn, or are you just... He's thinking? deciding what to do. I figured he was deliberating. Specifically, he was trying to decide if it's worth it to try a health potion, or if it would just down him again anyway. Yeah, and it probably will just murder anyway. So, given that, we're going to try... Our go -to. Burning hands? Nope, because that's not... I don't have a high enough spell slot to use that effectively. And the alternative to burning hands here would set the entire tomb on fire and murder everybody. <laughs> that's all stone. <laughs> so, There's some cloth and some skeletons, but it's mostly stone. And some... And your underground. Okay, yeah, good. I have gunpowder in my pocket. Oh, God. Yeah. Right. Oh, God. Wait. Yeah. Please yeah. do not forget. So I'm, I'm not going to use fireball, because that would also... That can catch people's, like, actual yeah. clothes on fire, too. Uh, but I do have Wall of Fire, and we are going to go with the Wall of Fire Tornado right over this oh. forker. <laughs> and uh, so he's going to have to make a dex 15 if he wants to avoid some damage here. And if he does, he's going to have to like actually move, is my understanding, to do that. Yeah, he passed. I don't know. Like That's You have to figure that one out. Outside of it. If you're gonna put it in such a way that he can't move, I'm gonna have him move with the deck save so that he's not inside of it anymore. Okay, yeah, he'll um, have to to move because it's around him. He saved. He rolled uh, cool. 16. Alrighty, well, there's a so cut. Well, that would take up his full five feet. So does that get him out of melee range of Terran? Uh, it depends on where he moved, and he moved closer. Oh, oh. He's not in front well, of you that, anymore, still, but he's next to you. Uh, well, he still takes half damage, assuming he takes sure damage does. from fire, which is, uh, 24. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So, um, you, like, set his clothes on fire, and they, like, incinerate almost instantly until he's basically just a bone man. So he's terminated. He's naked. He's still yeah, standing he's there. His penis is hanging out. Yeah, Can he die in <laughs> embarrassment? His penis bone is just drooping there. Oh, Lord. <laughs> A boner in the truest sense. Lickety clack. Lickety um. <laughs> <Flippity> flack. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Next up is you, Amriani. Yeah. Is he still on fire at all? No. No. It's out. It's out. No oh, more no. fire the, anywhere the near fire, him. The fire tornado is definitely still there. There's a tornado there, there so don't step but in the that. Way, but the way that it works when it's a tornado, one side of the wall is cool, and the other side of the wall is hot. So unless you enter the square where it's hot, that's the only way you're going to get fire damage. Yep. Yeah, it's like it's literally like a, a wall that's like just a cylinder, pretty much. So as long as you stay on the outside of the cylinder, you're all good. 
Okay. I just want to make sure to avoid that so I don't blow us all up. Um, I'll go around it okay. and do an uppercut to the skeleton dude. Okay. So as he steps out of this fire, you can hear pitter-patter over your right shoulder as your monk Janazi friend just like runs up to this guy and swings for an uppercut. Let's have an attack roll. Oh no. Uh, it's a seven. It's a seven? Okay. With the modifier, yeah. Plus so that's, not, that's not a hit, but you can swing again because you're a monk. Let's try again. Oh, 17 plus 4, 21. That's definitely a hit. The 1d4 plus 2. Uh, that would be 3 plus 2, 5. Alright, 5 damage. Take that. Uppercut him in the jaw. His head kind of spins around again. Only he grabs it and spins it back around. And staggers. In or out of the fire? He staggers in place. Okay. Well, oh. you gotta be clear. I, okay, you're right. <laughs> that is true. He staggers in place on his the palm of his feet as he <laughs> holds himself standing with his remaining 137 bones. That is reminiscent so I, I should have tried to knock dance. him into the fire. You, you should. Well, you can't. Some classes have the ability to physically move their enemies, but unless mm -hmm. you do have that ability, you can't. Uh, okay, good to know. Yeah. So I'm I'm going to cast Guiding Bolt. Okay. And I got 21 to hit. That's definitely a hit. Now I'm going to do 4d6 radiant damage for a total of nine. Yep. That's enough. And now, oh, he's down. Oh yeah, that's enough. All right, so I'm gonna, it. I'm going to pull out because I'm in starry form archer. I'm gonna pull out what looks like a constellation of a bow, and as I draw back and I fire it, it's gonna look like a streaking shooting star heading straight for this uh, skeleton. And once it hits him, he's going to get enveloped in what looks like a burst of like starlight like almost as if like a star or a rocket just kind of exploded and then it'll okay. fade away he glitter dust falls down throughout the tomb and you put the revenant down you've solved my revenant puzzle congratulations quick somebody cue da 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 did Everyone one do it once. Death. It'll sound he amazing. Died. Nice. Oh, Terry, you got it. Da 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 da. Are we? We did it. You did it, friend. We all right. almost died, but but we did it. Three of us got KO'd and then picked back up. Francis, yeah. I only took one damage. And. <laughs> And rocks in their knees back and forth, <laughs> hyperventilating. Mm. Beaver just collapses onto the ground, still illuminating the room in glitter. I look over at them and I say, that wasn't too bad, was it? Oh my god. I'm just standing there leaning on my staff. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call Taryn over. Who's Taryn? Nor Norian, come come <laughs> over here. I'm I'm coming. Hang on, I'm gonna like use the staff to make it easier to walk. Mm -hmm. Gandalf style. Gandalf style. Opa Gandalf style. Well, I'm I'm very tired. I don't have much left, but uh. You know, I'm going to reach up from the ground and slap my hand on his wrist, and I'm going to cast Cure Wounds at the first level and give him back four hit points. There you go. There you go. Thank you, Beavery. I can now stand without the staff. Four more revenants rise out of the... I'm just kidding. 
I would have just said, screw it, and grab the... Explosive. I would have picked I it. so would have just cast Pass Without a Trace, and then we all just would have left. <laughs> I was I was just going to grab the gunpowder bag with my mage hand and light it. <laughs> <laughs> End it all. <laughs> Truly, you explode. Yes. <laughs> it's a wizard. I go everywhere. <laughs> I use my druid craft to see what time it is. Uh, it's a little bit afternoon. We we've only been down here for like two hours. Only. Oh, Feels like a doing... lifetime. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter how many hours it's been. I need a long rest already. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm good. I'm good to go. <laughs> 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 Good, uh, y'all there. You can explore, and I will sit here for four hours just chilling. I like yeah, I, 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 I like that things. idea. I, I like I like his idea. I, I think I want to take a nap. Mm. You guys want to take a short rest? Uh, I, I'd like to take a what it counts as a long rest for a half elf. Uh, yeah. Uh... Right in the tomb. In the middle of a tomb? Yeah. No, we're not going to do that. You can do short rest. Uh, that. We should at least do a short rest. Yeah. I mean, we'll at least do that. Do you want to explain what a short rest is? Short rest is between one to four hours, and you can use your hit dice that is given to you per level of your class, and you can use them to restore hit points. Uh, some okay. classes have specific features that allow you to do things on short rest that others don't. Um, if you have any of that, you can do that as well. Long rest is when you pretty much restart back over from uh, the top of your game. They're asking for a long rest in the middle of a tomb, and I'm like, eh, not so much. It didn't, it didn't give me, even though I used the hit points. It, yeah, Sam, I'm going to have to manually it. roll it. That's, yeah, that's fine. Just manually do it. You should do it for Fran, too. Uh, okay. So I get to roll two? Yep, yeah, roll your uh, hit dice if you want to restore hit points. You said you have minus one. What? How, how, how much health did you lose? Yeah, just one, but I'll roll. So when you say hit points, what oh, dice? Oh, I see why you have to click the... Uh, oh, was it the thing again? Okay. confirm thing or whatever no no so you have you when you click in what hit dice you want to use mm -hmm. um they they put a little box with the dice underneath it up right above the confirm and you have to click that dice roll for it to roll the dice and then apply it and then you have to hit confirm okay your monk uh level is two you get one d8 per monk level, so you have 2d8 you can spend on health restoration. Okay. Yes, we are. We are using D&D Beyond. I also have a handy dandy book that I have here in my hands. You hear the paper? <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> so I roll, roll one, one d8. I... Huh? A d8? Yes, d8. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did you lose it? And I, I told you about heal a bowl. for one. I heal for one. Perfect. That's oh. exactly what you needed. That's all I needed. Yeah. All right. I'm I'm healed up. <laughs> cool. So you all spend about. Wait. An does hour. she level? Uh, you know what? That That's was a hard fight question. for her. It's an excellent question. If she survives this, yeah, look at her level. If I survive, I did survive. You sure did. If you continue to, <laughs> we'll level you up. Dang. But isn't she like a level one? What did She's bear? level two. Okay. I tried, Mint. She will definitely I tried to level. Argue. I appreciate it. I, I promise you'll definitely level if your character <laughs> survives. What's about Just to happen? Just a quick question. How much longer are we going? Um, well, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to end it. But I don't want to end it in the middle of the quiero sentir tus labios okay. besándome otra vez. Trust me, Trog has, Trog has been up for, and in 10 minutes we'll be up for 24 hours. Otra vez. So. Oh my god. Yep. <laughs> Let's get out of the cave. <laughs> um, so, uh, yes, you guys stand up. Uh,
boy, here we go. I love this song. I love that. That was so much fun. No, it's great. <laughs> uh, you guys stand up, and uh, Curiosity gets the better of Fran, and she peers into the tombs. Uh, out of which the revenants clambered, and and the bottom of each tomb is a stone tablet. And on each of these stone tablets, she realizes are corresponding runes. Are you sharing with the class, friend? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Um, check us out. And she lays them out on the floor. There's six of them. I'm going to pull out my uh, rune sheet and compare. Pretty similar. Okay. They aren't exact matches, but you can definitely tell that whatever's on these tablets has something very similar to do with what's on your sheet. Nope. We, should, uh, we should probably take these and... Uh look them over when we can look at more books imagine if you yes. will you have purchased three jigsaw puzzles mix all the pieces together and then just kind of put them together with what you had that's sort of what you're looking at does anybody want to do an investigation or a history or an arcana check i can do an arcana okay sure let's have an arcana i should have done an arcana we got a seven. Um, they're runes, and they look kind of like what you have. You feel like they're definitely connected in some way, more meaningful than what you can currently see. Uh, these runes definitely seem like they're connected, but I can't currently tell how. Uh, here, and I take out my bag of holding. I I'll put them in here, and, and we can look at the books later when we're back at camp and see if we can make sense of this. I'm going right. to place them in my bag. I'm going to fold the rune I have up and put it back where it came from. Okay. Armiani has seen all of this and watches with curiosity. I like it. I love how they're just like, hey, do the thing. And then it's like a stranger here. Just forgetting. <laughs> no, not forgetting. Uh, Vivri is very trusting. My yeah. end, since we already like, since Fran already splayed the runes out, it's just like not not a big deal. This I haven't provided any context that's beyond what Fran already kind of provided. And I fought with y'all. Doesn't that make us family? No, <laughs> <laughs> family that fights oh. together. It fights together. I don't think you understand uh, how untrusting both Yildar and Norheon. Are in our first encounter, Norion was willing to let the entire town die. Yeah, I also almost burned down an elven village and apparently had someone I really needed to meet in it because you know did not trust what was going on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Basically, yeah. That's that's Norion in a nutshell. Fran holding her ribs starts making her way back towards the uh, giant hole in the ceiling. I, I think that uh, I think I have enough that I can I can get this up with the earth. Is there a way to get? I can help you her like with that. Earth. Great. So I'm gonna get to there and I'm gonna start our mold earth elevator spinning all the way around. <laughs> Whee! And together, you guys uh, get everyone up towards the tunnels that you. Uh, came out of that Hildar that literally Hildar just knew. walked into. Yep, yep. And Have we seen thing, Sir Nanners yet? Uh, the monkey's AWOL still. It's, it's the darndest thing. <laughs> <laughs> you feel like it's possible he'll turn up in a moment in which it is most comedically appropriate. <laughs> Darn. I love this. It's All of that and not a single jewel to be found. Yeah. I don't know. You have the jewel of being alive. Mm -hmm. I concur. Fran That's takes not off worth ring much money, though. You. Here's your, your expletive jewel. What was it? 
Fran like, said, here's your fucking jewel. <laughs> Throw a ring. <laughs> Damn, Fran. You pick it up and immediately realize it's glass. Ow. <laughs> Cut my hand. <laughs> Not actual glass. It's a faux ring. A faux gem. Oh. No, I mean, she could have cut her hand on it. You might have. You don't know. Yeah. She did get her, her face walloped. You've been I nothing didn't. but stiff to this entire group. Let's save Fran's life three times. Yeah. <laughs> She's had enough of your spit. Hey, I feel like I've warmed up a bit. You take maximum damage, <laughs> minus 999. Oh, no. <laughs> and I'm dead. Okay. You're not just, just down. You're obliterated. So in D&D, &D, if you take damage equal to twice your current hit points, you die instantly. Did that happen to Solo or Nohion at all? No, they they'd down? be gone. No. Like, unrecoverable. Like, instant death. It, for mine, it was just a little bit over my total hit points. Yeah. I was only two over, so yeah. Listen, I didn't want to be mean to y'all, but my character is not very trusting either. No, I think it's great. <laughs> I, I, play it here. I think it's great that we have a bunch of people who hate everyone <laughs> in the group. Yeah. Yeah. Avery doesn't hate anyone. I said a bunch. I didn't say all. <laughs> all right. Um, yeah. So you guys get out. Uh, there are people who are waiting there with bated breath because they know about the log that sank and they could hear and feel the rumblings that were going on down below. <laughs> and uh, Arabella um, rushes to you, Hildar, as you appear from out of the uh, dirt hole that you guys climbed down into. And uh, she's like, oh my god, what happened down there? Are you all right? I just say, long story. Long story? <laughs> Tell Nothing me about in my bath story. here. <laughs> oh, I didn't realize well, you people took baths. That explains mud the smell. Mud baths. Oh, yeah, that <laughs> doubly explains the smell. All right. Uh, Ellison, Ellisend? Gosh, what the heck is her name? <laughs> Ellison? That was, I was Ellison? right. I just put a D in it for some reason. Ellison uh, is uh, leaning up against the entrance to her <clears throat> tent, and Hildar just fell on the floor. Leaning up the entrance yep. of her tent, uh, kind of just watching haphazardly. Uh Jeff is standing there imposingly, not realizing he's really big and just can't stand that close. And he's like, uh, Query, are you all right? Do you require assistance? Wait, wait, Jeff, you, you could have been down here the whole time? Yeah, can we bring Jeff with us next time? Jeff is here <laughs> to assist. Do you require assistance? We've required assistance two hours ago, Jeff. Why was Jeff not informed as he throws his arms up in the air? No one ever talks to Jeff as he walks away. I have a feeling oh, that Jeff is going to have a, a mental breakdown and turn on us. <laughs> yep. Just a feeling. The fire in his, his Mix belly. Mix these, uh, these creatures. Don Quixote, where is Don Quixote? Adam's asking. He's eating apples. He's uh, no, he's um, he's helping transport the carts of people fleeing for um, D D D D D D. Pulling my bed chambers. Yes, exactly. Bedchambers. But let's be real. The only way Don Quixote is going to walk is by eating apples. Yep. yep. Yes, you have an apple on the string. Yeah, tied to his head, so he's just. Chasing we love it. him too. He's he's the best donkey. <laughs> and now that y'all are out of the hole, um, you are free to rest, relax. You've earned it. You tell, you regale the story, and we can we can call that session here. Oh yeah. As as we go to walk back towards our our tent, I look at Norhian. I say, "Ime mare an kieti vantil." And Elvis, I respond, "Yes, we shall." Explosion. <laughs> Explosions occur. Everyone dies. We can't <laughs> Alright. So that was uh, a bit of a lengthy introduction for you, uh, men. What'd you think? It was fun. Yeah? Yes, I had a lot of fun. I'm I glad. liked the combat. The combat's really I can't fun. wait to 
I can't wait to learn more stuff to do though. Well, I'm gonna put you at level three now because that uh, those were those were two monsters that were intended for much higher level people, and you walked up to him and said, "You know what? I'm gonna punch you right in the shins," and you did the thing. <laughs> Yay. You should probably give her the sheet or somehow make a sheet for her. She's got so... one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Trog made it. I made it. We oh, should... Okay. Uh... Um, you can you can make an account on D&D &D Beyond, by the way. If anybody wants to start playing D&D, &D, it is free for you to make an account on D&D &D Beyond. Yep. It's a really great tool um, to use. Um, it gives you a lot of good information. It doesn't give you all the information unless you purchase the books, but that's you know that's fine. It's yeah. your discretion. Well, by joining the campaign, Taryn and I own several books, and he has a special subscription where he can share whatever books that he owns with everybody in the campaign. Um, nice. So you can buy basically borrow his books. Essentially. Okay. Good yeah. to know. So we definitely took long rests. Oh yeah, you guys definitely oh, yeah. deserve that downtime. I mm -hmm. I used almost all my spell slots. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's that's what I was intending. I wanted you guys to try really hard to <laughs> not die. <laughs> we didn't die. I gave you and some people got down. I could crowd control you and uh, put you in some really bad positions, and it worked out. Yeah, I <laughs> I was literally the medic. On the field, you I was were, rushing was around. Yep. <laughs> Every time well, someone went down, I just shoved through the glass of healing potion and ran. <laughs> I have to be within touch range to, to heal you guys. Mm -hmm. And once you're down, even if I give you a good berry before the battle, like, you can't take it after you're already unconscious, so. You don't have healing we need, word? We need a road to... Huh? You don't have healing word? No. Okay, that's a ranged <laughs> one. Maybe you'll consider that. At one. least, not, maybe maybe I can pick it up now. I got a few new spells the last time I left. Okay. All right, guys, I'm going to bow out. because I'm Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you're you, dying. So. Absolutely. Thanks for coming. It was great having you. Thank you for having me. This yeah. is super fun. Thank you, man. Anytime you want to play, let us know, okay? Yeah, yeah, and we all have to spend time to, to do your level up so you can pick your new spells. And, uh -huh. and I believe... By three, you get to pick your sub subclass. Yep. You get a specialization oh. now and you get to pick what kind of monk you are. Awesome. Well, I will look forward to that. I'm ready. Hi, y'all. Thanks, Thanks again. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Well, that was really fun. I liked it. Mm -hmm. It got a little away yeah. from me for a minute there, but I pulled it back in. <laughs> uh, only because you forgot to tell us there was a door. Well, that yeah. You were like, sort of... "What are we supposed to find oh, down yeah. here?" Yeah, I was like, like, "Oh yeah, they need to." Um, because I'm like, "Why aren't y'all going for the door?" Oh, they don't know it's there. <laughs> oh, I mean. found it. I found healing word. Mm. Is that one you can pick up soon? Yes, it is. Uh, it's a level one spell. Yeah. So I'm gonna have that to one's range. Which. I mean, I had jump on, which is a good thing that I had jump on. Oh, that was great. Oh, hey, thanks, Adam. I appreciate that. I, I just I do my best to make sure everyone has some sort of thing that pertains to them occurring at any given time. Um, my. I gotta get used to Min and her character and, and, you know, what drives her so I can start putting things in her way, too. Yeah. Applause. And in case anybody was wondering, when Taryn and I speak in Elvish, we do send what we said to Trog, so he is aware of what we're discussing. She's lying. <laughs> they're, they're talking in secret. I have no idea what they're saying. Yeah. <laughs> She's not lying. <laughs> they they translate for me. It's great. <laughs> I'm go eventually thing. I'm going to do it where I speak German to them and just say it's another language, and they're gonna be like, what? What? <laughs> it's a what? Um, yes, we're passing. We're passing notes. Um, in a in a way, but like, uh, Norheon can send message directly into anybody's brain, which Shieldar and I are both used to at this point. Yep. We can respond yep. as long as he initiated it. Yeah. Um, but we don't have that talent. 
So uh, we have to instead uh, rely on other things. And um, we try to speak a common, a common language to each other that we feel relatively sure that other people are not going to be able to say. Time to I'm still elders. waiting to find somebody. <laughs> you could. Well, you can. It's going to take 365 days for you to become proficient. <laughs> so, uh, like, along the way, I'd let you pick up words and hints and, like, connotations about what's happening. Yeah. Like, I feel like you would know Potato pretty well by now. <laughs> <laughs> like, Hilda, you um, heard them say something about riding a toilet into a cheese waterfall? So what kind of waterfall. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> um, yeah, so, you know. Um, we Did definitely need to go shopping. Okay. Yeah, I, uh, okay. Definitely think we have to load Yalder up with all the healing potions. Oh my so, god. So, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, we have the, the stealth combat delivery. Yeah, I know. You have, you have a Janazi who almost has double your movement speed. I don't know if you guys realize that. If she were to dash, she would have 80 feet of movement in six seconds. That's oh, that. cool. The flash. <laughs> yeah, basically. Like, she's Tifa Lockhart up in here. She's running around with her, like, braces on, punching the crap out of stuff. It's really cool. I like it. You just see... And, like, she's been punching up stuff, and you see another one running around, just uh, kind of doing, like, a little waddle run. And uh -huh. that's me in stealth <laughs> running around. <laughs> in my head, Cannon, you just roll potion. yourself into a ball and, <laughs> and roll around. <laughs> I just turned into Sonic, just... <laughs> You've met your long-lost oh. sister. Well, actually, you're the long-lost mm -hmm. brother. How do you feel about yes. that? Interesting. I didn't know how I had a sister. <laughs> you got several brothers too, actually. But uh, you know, oh we'll cross that bridge when we get to it, maybe. <laughs> Both your parents are still alive, and you left the mountain home. That's what we learned about you. Mhm. Mm and also that and other thing she said. Yeah. Yeah, I heard that, but Norheon did not. Norheon was in the tent. Eh. This is true. It was in the tent with Fran. So, so you know, Beavery's heard some really interesting things today. <laughs> there will yeah. be a send message conversation at some point. Yep. <laughs> they yep. some of us set up previously. She heard some real interesting stuff. <laughs> um, I I don't know. Should we talk about what she's heard? Um, I mean, you don't know about what she's heard. Yeah, but we're doing this after, after, like, this is our... Yeah, yeah, like, I'm not, I, I mean, I, I was here physically from a human standpoint, <laughs> but, like, you know, Norian, like, Terra knows, Norian doesn't know. Sure, what do you want to talk about? So, uh, you know, apparently, you know, she's kind of figured out that the Elder and Norian we're having a conversation and judging by his demeanor, she's kind of picked up that this elder is not just an elf. There's something odd that either must have to do with Northumbria or like, you know, maybe, maybe something about him specifically, you know, she doesn't know what it is. She knows there's, there's something more there, especially when she was saying, um, you know, they must be keeping you on your toes. But she seemed surprised about the inclusion of Hildar. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, with Hildar, not only does she learn he has a sister and that he got stuck in a jar of peanut butter, um, <laughs> like but that apparently sucked. he's the heir. He's the heir mm -hmm. to the clan. Which makes him a uh, sort of royalty? Uh, kind a of. mountain prince? Hill prince? Sort of, after a fashion. <laughs> so, and then on top of that, she knows that, you know, their new friend, uh, their new Genasi friend, Amriani, uh, is not being fully honest with them because why would you be eager as a monk to go back to your temple if you're not religious? 
Yep. You know, Vivri comes from a school about the Druidic arts, which is deeply tied into the Druidic faith. Um, I, I feel like faith and Druidic Druidicness are as intertwined as cleric and uh, their gods. Because uh, it's a lot more than just the spells. It's a it's like a a lifestyle almost. So you know, it's not like she's unfamiliar with what a monk is. Right. I dropped a lot of plot today, and I'm hoping we can pick up some pieces. Wait, wait. Sounds good to me. Gilder, how do you feel about your uh, being outed as an heir? Uh, changing topics rapidly. But how do you <laughs> feel about it emotionally? Are you upset that she said it? Or are you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I just saw the drugs as <laughs> um yeah no like no like secretive like ouch. no don't talk about this change topics real quick <laughs> you uh you like, got a bit of so a nervous mm -hmm. would you say you feel nervous about it yes yes indeed i mean you knew that your sister was pursuing archaeological uh uh vocation but you had no idea that you'd meet her out here oh yeah after we crashed from a raft yeah after <laughs> you guys broke apart in this you held it together marvelously by the way i didn't intend for you to actually hit the camp but that's what happened <laughs> i mean so we were doing you. our damnedest you did great we, we did were well the catapult so many vines sadly mm -hmm. that was hilarious that was, that was actually a lot of fun. I was like, you you want to shoot a grappling hook from a moving car? Okay. okay. <laughs> Gotta make an anchor somehow. You went full on Batman. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> no, this was a lot of fun. I had a lot of uh, beats planned. I made up a bunch of cookie characters. We didn't get to talk to uh, freaking, what was the crow's name? Quakey? Yes, we didn't get to talk to Quakey a whole lot. But hopefully he'll come up. He's kind of a goofball, too. Jeff's my favorite. Oh, my God. That was hilarious. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by, Adam. Appreciate See you, man. Adam. Thank, you. Thank you, Adam. Good night. Have a good night, Adam. Mm -hmm. Sleep well. Likewise, Adam. But, uh, yeah, anyone who's still around, um, this is our Saturday weekly Dungeons & Dragons stream. We, uh, we come on here, we're playing 5th edition, a campaign of my own design, uh, where we uh, employ homebrew rules, uh, not generally, but I mean, sometimes they come up. And as you can see, we went, we had a new inductee tonight, one, one of our own, uh, Minuet, who also streams, and um, I don't know, we kind of muddled Shout through it a little again. bit. Sorry? Let me shout her out again. Yeah, go ahead. We kind of muddled through it a tiny bit, but we we made we bro we broke dirt. We made headway, and I think it was a lot of fun. She had a good time. Um, we will definitely be doing this. We'll try to do this every Saturday. But we'll definitely be doing it most Saturdays. Bro. Um, yeah, we missed one a little bit now. It's been like three or four straight at least. Uh, yeah, yep. it's, it's we've been doing this for almost four months. Like, it's wild. Dying We've officially named this arc. Yeah. This, yeah. this is the uh, Burn to Ashes arc. What? what? Everything. No yeah, repetition in there at all. And, you know, it's the one episode, though, where we had very minimal fire for once. Uh, yeah, a yeah. lot of lightning, yeah. though. Fran was up in there. Yeah, mm -hmm. she was. Fran and I were getting bad rolls today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. She hit two of them at once. That's pretty hot. And then me with the opposite thing, getting all the rolls. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. That's, that's how a rogue works, man. You got this. And we keep telling uh -huh. you, get up in there. And you're like, but but I'll take hurdy alleys. And we're like, get in there. <laughs> Swing your sword. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I could say. Yeah. 
You just need dense. You got the health for it, health. Yeah, I need dense of it. Who makes me <gasps> on stealth? <laughs> so I have to get up in there. You can just get <laughs> Jeff to self with you. Huh? You can get Jeff to stealth with you. Uh, <laughs> a giant I'm metal cold. Yeah, you get a but minus I'm thirty to every self roll. And the clap of my hands <laughs> keeps alerting the guards. So Norion had some really big character growth today. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, tell me about it because I wasn't here for it. Oh no! Oh well, dang. Uh, so uh, you know, we met uh, the elder finally, who um, Norion could have met in the village. Yeah. Uh, but you know, the Elven yeah. village that got burned down. You literally but, uh, Norian... just kept avoiding it. It was so cool. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, all right, was... well. Uh, Charles probably sitting there like, how does how does Norion just avoid everything I set up for him? It's fine. <laughs> it, it makes for interesting makes... storytelling because now it happened after the fact, and then it's more impactful. That is true. It was, honestly. That was part of, you know, the growth there was, uh, you know, recognizing, like, oh, uh, yeah, I probably should have met you earlier one way or another. Um, but, you know, we had some action. We had Norion drop to one knee and kind of recognizing that uh, regardless of feeling that uh, burning the entire forest and that also kind of contributing to the village getting burned to a crisp, though... I still blame Noel Artillery, but in any case, <laughs> <laughs> anyone but you, you know. He said, "Go ahead." He cut off. Uh, anyone but yeah. you, man. Anyone's fault but your own. <laughs> I mean, it was. It just wasn't clear if it would have actually, like, you know, succumb, you know, consumed the villager if her stuff would have held out if it wasn't for the. Uh, the fire getting launched in from the the trebuchets the or catapults. Have the village, to be sure, but they definitely wouldn't have burned the forest down. Yeah. I mean, they would have chapped it down, probably, or Most you know, wood yeah, or. I'll give you that. They would yeah, have so like burned a galleon for no reason. They probably they probably would have made their way out to the uh, the ruins. I was yeah, saying, I was right. I told them that that was what would happen if I didn't do the thing. They're like, "Oh, you burned a yeah. village." Well, saved all of you. So, with the death saves, by the way, yeah, what would have happened if, say, I got Solar up and she immediately got attacked again? <laughs> she would start over. Oh, okay. So the way so death saves work. Dead. Well, so here's how death works in D and D. Once your hit points hit zero, you're unconscious. You're not dead. You're not dead mm. until you fail three death saving throws in a roll. Not in a row, but th three total. So every time your turn comes up, if you're unconscious, you throw you roll a d20. And if you get 10 or lower, you, you fail. 11 or higher, meanwhile, you pass. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, I skip all that shit. I'm like, oh, yeah, screw that. Healing potion. Yeah. <laughs> if you heal someone or you take <laughs> healing, you are instantly okay. I mean, you have, you know, garbage hit points, but you're not dying anymore. Alternatively, somebody can stabilize you with a medicine check, but you're not conscious once you're stabilized, but you're also not bleeding out anymore. <laughs> I like that shopping list. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't imagine we'll be able to buy at the beginning of this session, though, with, will we? This coming uh, up session? Well, I mean, how, so Dapness is how far away from uh, where we are? Uh, uh, two days and three nights. By donkey? Yes, by donkey slash horse. Okay, I mean, I guess in theory we could choose to just be like, yeah, we're gonna ignore everything else until we go to Dapness and come back. Which, uh, actually, Norion might want to do anyway. For reasons. Uh, well, you know, there is something to be said. I believe that Men mentioned that she might not be able to do this coming Saturday, right? Aww. Am I correct? I don't know. I thought I, I thought that's what she said that she might have to do like every other or every couple. If that's the case, we could do a day where we go to Dobnos and come back, and the stuff that happens in the camp can be paused. I'm okay with that. Yeah, makes sense. As long as nothing like rises up in the camp and annihilates it while we're gone, but then I guess that is what it is. <laughs> that's what it is. What I it mean, is. A wildfire might threaten it, but we'll see. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, did, uh, that was unclear on that. Did did people ever do the mold earth thing to make the earth wall we talked about, or did that not get done? There is zero amount of mold earth that six people can do that will have any effect on this radial wildfire that has occurred. Oh, uh, well. You have, have to go find very that dragon. handily burned down this forest. I want to be, make that absolutely clear. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I tried to tell you guys. You did it to save a, a village, problem. and you succeeded. But who knows the ramifications that are going to be seen here for years to come. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's Dungeons and Dragons, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go ahead and yes. let's go. I am dying. Um... Please come and hang out with us. We're a bunch of cool people. Uh, right, right. You know, tip your waitress. Hildar, closing statement. Go. Uh, death to the gnolls. Death to the gnolls. Yeah. That's up to hear up for the louder modem. Woo. That was hilarious. <laughs> Be very closing statement. Go, go. Welcome in. Uh. Oh. You just caught us at the Call very end the of our tail stream. End. Oh no. But don't worry, the VOD will be published. You can rewatch it. We'll be back on Saturday for another session of Dungeons and Dragons. Uh I don't know how long you've been in here, but uh Yeah, we're doing this every Saturday. It's good times. Bye bye. Yeah. We fought a bunch of revenants today and, and almost died. It was good. Yeah. Death. <laughs> yep, thank you so much for stopping by. Um yeah, I'm I'm gonna go pass out you guys. This has been crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> bye bye. Everybody good get good sleep. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye bye.